Good morning. Welcome to Tuesday, April 12th, 2022. This is a regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County. It is a beautiful day here in Manatee County. And we're going to start the day the way we always start the day in Manatee County. We're going to start by honoring God and by honoring our great nation. And today, to give the invocation, we have Joel Henry Sr. of East Bradenton Church of Christ, after which we will have the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by James Coleth. Mr. Coleth is a United States Army veteran who served, who served two years combat duty in Vietnam. At this time, if you're able, please stand. Filling in for the minister today, for the prayer, for the prayer apparently, <laughs> will be, prayer prayer. you'll just do the prayer, prayer. Uh, will be Reg Reggie Bellamy. Let us bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, giving us life, health, and strength, and the opportunity to come down and do business for the government and to serve our community. We ask you to watch over each and every individual here keep our minds and our ideas in a professional manner so we can take and make the strides in Manatee County the best strides that we can make. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please salute the flag and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service to our nation. Okay, we have quite a start to our agenda today. Um, first, all, first of all, let's have Dr. Hopes read off any changes to today's agenda? Okay, Mr. Chair, uh, agenda updates for April 8th under public comments, as in comments uh, were added. Changes to the consent agenda, public works, item number 36, resolution R22045. A transit day flyer was attached to this agenda item under utilities, item 40. Uh, the 10 year water supply facilities work plan. The uh, item was moved from consent agenda to uh, to items removed from the consent agenda under uh, additions to the consent agenda under administrator. Item number 45, uh, 46 and 47 are resolutions for lighting the Skyway Bridge. And item number 48 is an authorization for the county attorney to prepare a resolution naming 33rd Avenue Drive West to Wilbur Boyd Boulevard and uh, uh, amendments to the agenda dated April 11th under public comments, citizen comments were added. And item number 11 uh, was a uh, authorization for county attorney and the county administrator to have staff work on a rezone of the downtown central library property. Those are all of the amendments to the agenda, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, sir. Um, we're going to start off with a couple of proclamations, and Commissioner Servia will start, and she has, let me find them on here because I have so many, adoption and presentation of proclamation designating April 30th as World Tai Chi and Qi Gong Day in Manatee County. Commissioner Thank Serbia you, Mr. Explain. Chairman. You know, it's always my honor to read this every year. I have three children, and all three were in martial arts, and so this is one of my favorites. So, whereas World Tai Chi and Qigong Day is celebrated hundreds in hundreds of cities in 80 nations every year on the last Saturday in April, and Manatee County has hosted a World Tai Chi Day event for the past six years. And whereas Tai Chi and Qigong are traditional Chinese exercises of mindful, relaxed movements found to benefit the health of people of all ages and many fitness levels. 
And whereas numerous studies have shown the benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong for relieving stress, improving balance and coordination, especially among the elderly and improving the behavior of adolescents with attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder. And whereas medical research has also shown Tai Chi and Qigong is beneficial in reducing stress and tension, increasing the immune system, improving cardiovascular function, increasing muscle tone and bone density, improving flexibility, and improving general health and well-being. And whereas Manatee County will be hosting a free event at GT Bray Park to celebrate World Tai Chi Day, bringing people together to learn more about Tai Chi and Qigong through this day of celebration and practice that will occur around the world on Saturday, April 30th, 2022. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 30th, 2022, shall be known, designated, and set aside as World Tai Chi and Qigong Day in Manatee County, Florida. Adopted with a quorum present and voting this 12th day of April, 2022, signed by our Chairman Kevin Van Austenbridge and attested by Angelina Coloniso, Clerk of the Court. Who's here to accept this? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Would you like to say a few yeah, words? Yes, please. Yes, please. Hello, Commissioners. Good morning. Melissa Nell with Cypress Pillar Healing Arts. And I just want to thank all of you, and especially the Parks and Natural Resources Department, Aiden and Charlie Hunsaker, for continuing this tradition, especially during the pandemic. Tai Chi and Qigong really helped a lot of people. And we're very excited to be part of this international event. Last year, Bradenton was featured alongside uh, Beijing, China, and Sydney, Australia as one of the feature cities. So it's one of the largest events in Florida. We're really happy to offer it, and it's a great example of how Manatee County brings some really beautiful free programs in. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, Aiden Stockdale, Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. Um, I just wanted everyone to know um, April 30th, we will be doing the event. We'll also be live streaming it. So if anybody's unable to make it in person, we wanted to make sure this event was accessible to anyone anywhere in the world. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Commissioner Whitmore is on the board. Sorry. I just wanted to let Melissa know, welcome back. It's nice to see your smiling face. You started this on Parks and Recreation in Manatee County. We miss you terribly, and thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we have Commissioner Serbia again, uh, designating April 10th as Gopher Tortoise Day in Manatee County. Yes, another uh, reason to celebrate. Um, whereas April 10th was officially adopted by the Gopher Tortoise Council as Gopher Tortoise Day in Florida. And whereas the Gopher Tortoise has been living on Earth for 500,000 to 2 million years. And whereas in the state of Florida, the Gopher Tortoise is listed as threatened and in parts of the United States is federally listed as threatened. And whereas the gopher tortoise is considered a keystone species. And whereas the gopher tortoise's burrow protects more than 360 other common sense species, which, some of which are listed as threatened. And whereas the gopher tortoise's habitat needs protection. And whereas having gopher tortoises and other species in our area helps to sustain the area's ecology and provide man with a source of joy and appreciation for nature. That now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 10th, 2022, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Gopher Tortoise Day in Manatee County, Florida. Oh, Adopted awesome. with the quorum <laughs> present. Priceless. And voting this 12th day of April 2022, signed by our chairman, Kevin Van Austin Bridge, the Board of County Commissioners, and attested by Angelina Coloniso, Clerk of the Circuit Court. And I got to hand it to you, Charlie. You always know how to take things over the top. Thank you very much for being here. Would you like to say a few words? Of course. Yeah. Commissioner Servia, when I, when I coached football, we worked very hard on and working on kids to focus and avoid dis and, you know, through distractions, yeah, right? And, and stay focused. You did an excellent job of staying focused <laughs> while you read that. I, I almost <laughs> lost it when the possum came out. <laughs> when the possum came out. Most people did. Right. Well, that's, that's my good friend, uh, Governor Childs. Uh, anyway, I wanted to uh, thank you for indulging us here with our puppets. But actually, each of these animals uh, share a burrow 
with a gopher tortoise here in Florida. Uh, in fact, there's up to like 30 different uh, species of animals, insects and plants, all important for the gopher tortoise here. And uh, we find the gopher tortoise throughout Florida and uh, we're trying our best to protect them. Uh, we have a place for, let's just say, unhoused uh, tortoises. Out at Perico, we've been able to take in about 25 uh, tor gopher tortoises there. We have a large population out east, and we're working every day to protect them because they're now what listed as, as threatened in Florida, and we don't want to see that habitat uh, completely lost, which is one of the uh, efforts behind our environmental lands program. Yes. Thank so you. thank you very much again. Remember, each of these animals depend in part upon our good gopher tortoise every day. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. I'd like to give you that. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Hang on to those. Okay. Next we'll go to Commissioner Bellamy. Whoa. Mr. Chairman, while Commissioner oh, Bellamy comes down, would you like for me to make a motion to accept the proclamation? Sure, I would love that. Motion Good use to of time. The proclamation. Second. So we have a mo Madam Clerk, we have a motion by Commissioner Servia and a second by Commissioner Bellamy to accept proclamations. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes unanimously six to zero today. And Commissioner Bellamy um, will be coming to us, of course, with designating April as Parliamentary Law Month in Manatee County. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Yes, all right, first one on. Good morning, everyone. Proclamation, Board of County Commissioners, the great Manatee County, Florida. Whereas, Robert Rules of Order is a proven guide for more effective meetings used by organizations for more than 146 years. Since 1876, when Brigadier General Henry M. Robert published his pocket manual of rules of order for deliberative assemblies, and whereas the Bradenton Unit of Parliamentarian Studies, the 12th edition Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, published in 2020, and readily available as an ebook on smartphones, as well as Robert Rules of Order in brief, third edition. And whereas greater understanding of how to use basic rules and guidelines will benefit individual leaders, their organizations, and their communities. Whereas trained parliamentarians are available through the Bradenton Unit of the Florida State Association of Parliamentarians and the National Association of Parliamentarians to assist groups and leaders in utilizing Robert Rules of Order in their meetings and organizations. And whereas parliamentarians provide expertise in managing effective and efficient business meetings, bylaws, and rules of order, the practical application of parliamentary procedure, professional presiding, and consultation of parliamentary issues. Now, Therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 2022 shall be known, designated, and set aside as Parliamentary Law Month in Manatee County, adopted with the quorum present and voting the 12th day of April 2022. Signed by our Chair, Kevin Van Ossipers. Accepting. Thank you, sir. That's why. April might be fourth on the calendar, but it's always number one in our hearts. Did you know, yeah. Did you know Jim Brown? Who's here to accept? Yes. Yes. I'm a follower. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. State your name, first and last name for the record. I'm please. Shirley Broadbeck of the Bradenton Unit of Parliamentarians. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner, for giving us this proclamation. And I would thank all of you for the hours of service that you give to keep Manatee County one of the best counties in the state of Florida and for its citizens and its zillions of snowbirds and tourists that just come to this beautiful sunshiny state. My kids are absolutely envious because I'm from Michigan. Yes, the Bradenton unit, the Florida State 
and National Association of Parliamentarians welcome this opportunity to tell you about Robert's Rules. More than 80% of deliberative assemblies in the United States use Robert's Rules of Order as their parliamentary authority. It's about rules of the game of democracy. You wouldn't play football, baseball, or tiddlywinks without rules, so why would you join an organization and not know their rules? As he said, Henry M. Robert was a U.S. Army general at the time that he published his book, and he did that because he was asked to chair a church meeting that became eight hours long and contentious, and he was so embarrassed he pledged never to do that again until he knew the rules and how to conduct himself in a meeting. So began his research that continues to this day in the authors of Robert's Rules. And then in 1876, he produced this little book of Robert's Rules. That's where it all began. And then today, the 12th edition, wow. Who's going to pick this up and learn about how to conduct their meeting? Probably not many of you, and I would really like to know if all these people have a copy of Robert's because I think you operate by Robert's, is that correct? Wonderful. Well, in their wisdom, finally, after years, the authors came up with this cheap little $8 Robert's Rules in brief. And you might find some of the words different and you don't know what it means, but keep on plowing through it, and I'm sure it will help you find the answer to your meetings. It will help you learn how, oh, I forgot to say that this big fat book at the last two years when it was updated has a large section on electronic meetings as well as how to discipline your members. <laughs> and please, please try and find a copy of this because it will help you figure out how to uh, conduct your meetings, how to be a responsible member, how to be a president or a secretary, and it will definitely move your meetings along and achieve the purpose for which you met and not a lot of chit chat. <laughs> so just as Bradenton struggles to move their traffic through the town, Robert's rules will help your business along and out the door. Mr. Chairman, I've already left a golden sheet, our basic rules that just gives you a hint of what's in that big book or the little one. And I hope that all of you will give it a look, and if not, pass it on to somebody else that's having struggles in their meetings and might need to know just exactly how you make a motion, how you vote, and how you achieve business for which you met. I would leave you with our motto, may all things be done decently and in order. Thank you. Very good. You've been a pleasant surprise today. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> I have the book, actually, and I've read more of it than probably most, uh, but I find YouTube, I, I'm better audio, so I've, I've found YouTube <laughs> is easier. I, I, I will say I painted my bathroom one day, crown molding and all, and I listened to a bunch of Robert's Rules on YouTube. Um, Commissioner Baugh, you are on the board. Yes, I want to say thank you for being with us this morning, and uh, Commissioner Bellamy, you almost sounded like a preacher. <laughs> I, I was wondering. Um, at any rate, it, you know, our board has its own mm. rules and regulations, and when in doubt, we turn to Robert's Rules. Um, I, I don't know that all the commissioners up here have a copy of it, but I know uh, four of us that do because we were given them as gifts, um, and it is a lot of reading, and you're right, the book is like that thick. Um, and, and I think that this board would probably be better off if we just went solely with Robert's Rules, uh, maybe one day down the road we'll do that. But thank you for being with us this morning. All right, thank you. No one else is on the board. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy, we're gonna move on to your next proclamation, which is designating April 29th through May 8th, Suncoast uh, Remake Learning Days in Manatee County. Proclamation, Board of County Commissioners, the great Manatee County, Florida, whereas the Patterson Foundation works with people, businesses, nonprofits, organizations, government, and the media to catalyze efforts toward shared aspirations. Remake Learning Days provides an opportunity for community participation to work toward strengthening our learning ecosystems and, whereas the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading <clears throat> is bringing 
Remake Learning Days, a 10-day festival to our community. This celebration highlights innovative experiences for youth and participants of all ages to develop their sense of creativity and curiosity. And whereas a variety of organizations, such as schools, museums, libraries, and more, welcome families to host free, hands-on, relevant, and engaging educational experiences for youth, pre-K through high school, their families, caregivers, and educators. And whereas Remake Learning Day events are organized by learning themes such as arts, maker, outdoor learning, science, technology, and youth voice. In addition, there are professional development sessions for school, out of school, child care, and non-traditional educators. And whereas Remake Learning Days provide families with ex experiential learning opportunities which contribute to positive childhood experiences by bringing families closer together. Whereas, no, no, now, therefore, be it proclaimed, I apologize, by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 29th through May 8th shall be known, designated, and set aside as <coughs> Suncoast Remake Learning Days in Manatee County, Florida, adopted with the quorum present and voting this 12th day of April 22nd, signed by our chair. Mr. KVO. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chairman, Commissioners, I wanted to say thank you on behalf of the Patterson Foundation and the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading for this proclamation. We are very excited to bring this. We are the 17th community across America um, to participate in the Suncoast in this um, wonderful Remake Learning Days. We are very excited because we have over 150 organizations, not profits, um, across four counties who will be working with us. We have 25, um, as of last count, um, activities in Manatee County. So we invite you and all of the community to come out and participate. You can start on April 29th, I believe, with uh, Robinson Preserve. Um, they're working with the uh, Bishop Museum to do a night under the stars for children and families, but there are so many activities. There was a guide that will be available. It's available on our website. It's interactive and it's really amazing. And I hope you would take a moment to um, invite all the children and families you know in your community to participate. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have one commissioner on the board, Commissioner Whitmore. I just wanted to thank Pierrette, uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. I don't know if you remember, Pierrette Kelly ran the community center for 20 or 30 years, and I'm glad that you've stayed active with the children of Manatee County, and Patterson Foundation is lucky to have you. Thank you. It's my honor. Thank you. I do remember her. I was working as a realtor with Duncan Real Estate out there, and she found out from Darcy that I had a CDL to drive a bus, and I would get roped into random oh, no, we don't have a driver field trips, and we have all these kids ready to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> some good volunteer hours there. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. I appreciate Thank it. you. Good man. Thank you. All right, next is Commissioner Satcher, and Commissioner Satcher has Water Conservation Month for Manatee County. All right. Come ahead if you're part of this. Uh, whereas water is a basic and essential need of every living creature, and whereas the state of Florida water management districts and Manatee County are working together to increase awareness about the importance of water conservation, and whereas the state of Florida has designated April, typically a dry month when water demands are most acute, Florida's Water Conservation Month to educate citizens about how they can help save Florida's precious water resources, and whereas Manatee County has always encouraged and supported water conservation through various educational programs and special events, and whereas every business, industry, school, and citizen can make a difference when it comes to conserving water by saving water and thus promoting a healthy economy and community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that April 2022 shall be known, designated, and set aside as Water Conservation Month in Manatee County, Florida. And the Board calls upon each and every citizen and business to help protect our precious resource by practicing water saving measures and becoming more aware of the need to save water. Adopted with a quorum, present and voting this 12th day of April, 2022, signed by our chair, Kevin Van Ostenbridge. 
Uh, thank you to the board. Um, we greatly appreciate all of the support and recognition of how important water conservation is and that it starts right here in our community. Um, thank you to everyone for supporting this proclamation for Water Conservation Month. We have a beautiful display set up in the lobby for water conservation with resources and we will probably be displaying this proclamation at the table. Um, we also have posters on display submitted from our local Manatee County students. Um, so those are all set up out there for everybody to see as well. And two of our students actually went on this year to win the state Drop Savers Water Conservation Poster Contest. Um, so please stop by and check out our water conservation resources and the artwork from our students. I'm Kevin Morris with the Utilities Department. Tina Muto is one of our uh, water supply professionals in utilities, and they, they say we can live about three weeks without food, and some of us would probably be the better for, <laughs> for, for a little bit of that, but we can only live three days without water. Water is very, very important. So we appreciate uh, Mr. Commissioner and Mr. Chairman and, and board members. We appreciate the, re the recognition. We get five feet of rain in Florida, but we do have a dry season, and we're in it. So we appreciate the recognition of that. Um, would you mind getting a, a photograph with Ms. Muto um, with the proclamation? That'd be great. Thank you. No, I haven't. I did, but it's like that. Yeah, you're in charge. Thank you. We, we also, I didn't realize, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bruno Kapasinkas, who is our new uh, liaison with uh, the Water Management District, uh, recently of Manatee County, uh, is here. Uh, I've, I'll let him introduce himself to the board. It's very appropriate for this board item for him to come forward and say hello to you again. Hi, uh, Bruno Kapasinskis, uh, the uh, Government Affairs uh, Regional Manager for the South District uh, with the Southwest uh, Florida Water Management District. Uh, I'd like to meet all of you commissioners and you, Dr. Hopes, at a later time. Um, uh, water matters. It's pretty simple. And uh, as it's been noted, we're in the middle of our dry season, and we appreciate the efforts to conserve water. Thank you. Thanks, Bruno. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you sir. Thank you. Enjoy talking about you. Thank you, Commissioner Satcher. Okay, next, we'll have adoption and presentation of a proclamation recognizing the 60th anniversary of the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. And our representative on that council is Commissioner Baugh, and she will be presenting today. Commissioner Baugh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to see you, too. This is a day of celebration. <clears throat> 60 years is quite an accomplishment. We had a great time at the uh, Resiliency Summit celebrating the, the cele celebrating 60 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I'll go ahead and read the proclamation. Whereas over the past 60 years, the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council has served our citizens and member governments by providing a forum to foster communication, coordination, collaboration, in identifying and addressing issues and needs regionally. Notice I said regionally. And whereas the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council was the first regional planning council in the state of Florida and is recognized as Florida's only multi-purpose regional entry entity in a position, I'm reading better without him, good, in a position to plan for and coordinate intergovernmental solutions to growth related problems on greater than local issues, provide technical assistance to local governments, and meet the needs of the communities in each region. And whereas the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council represents 99% of the population in a six county region, which includes Citrus, Hernando, Hillsborough, Manatee, Pasco, Pinellas counties, as well as the following municipalities, Bradenton, Clearwater, Dade City, Dunedin, Gulfport, Largo, Madeira Beach, Newport Ritchie, Oldsmar, Palmetto, Pinellas Park, Plant City, Safety Harbor, St. Petersburg, St. Pete Beach, Seminole, South Pasadena, Tampa, 
Tarpon Springs, Temple Terrace, and Treasure Island. Wow, I didn't even realize it. And whereas the council is made up of elected officials appointed by the local boards of these governments, which comprises two thirds of the council's membership, Additionally, members appointed by the governor making up the, the remaining third of the council and three ex officio members representing the Florida Department of Transportation, the Environmental Protection Agency, and Southwest Florida Water Management. And whereas the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council is recognized both statewide and nationally as a leader in regional and resiliency planning, and follows the Strategic Regional Policy Plan, a guiding document providing regional goals and policies for the five subject areas required by Florida statutes. Whereas, or which, I'm sorry, includes economic development, emergency preparedness, natural resources, regional transportation, and affordable housing. I wish George was here today. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, recognizes the 60th anniversary of the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council and their significant and excellent contributions for six decades to the quality of life for the citizens of the Tampa Bay region, adopted with a quorum present and voting this 12th day of April, 2022, signed by our chairman, uh, Commissioner Kevin Von Austinbridge. With us is Wren, who is truly, she wouldn't tell you this, but she handles everything. It doesn't matter what it is, she's there. And we just had a great summit, which some of you were, uh, three of you attended besides myself, uh, on resiliency. A lot of people think they hear the word resiliency and think it's only climate change or sea level rise, and it's not. It's also things like how quick can you prepare uh, and, and move back forward again from, say, a hurricane. I mean, it's many things that are involved. I have the honor, thanks to this board, of serving on this. I've been on it uh, four or five years, and I am now serving as their vice chair. It's quite an honor to be around for the 60th anniversary. Wren, please say a few words. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Commissioner Baugh and Mr. Chair, and uh, Commissioner Bellamy for finding me a way into the building from the parking garage. So <laughs> that, was, that was most helpful because I was running late. And so, but we thank you so much for representing this county uh, so well on our board. And um, Manatee County is near and dear to my heart because part of my heart lives here, my granddaughter. And uh, I tried to get her to cut school today with me to come for a civic lessons, but she said, I've got a test, Mamie. And I said, okay. So we would like to thank you on behalf of all of the members of the Regional Planning Council and Mr. Sean Sullivan, who is our executive director. He is at the hurricane conference in uh, Orlando and couldn't be here today. So I'm proud to accept this on behalf of everyone. And thank you all very much. Thank you. Got to get a picture. Casey, we need a picture. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do for our area. Next, we're going to go to Commissioner Whitmore, and she is going to start us off with an adoption and presentation of a proclamation designating April 16th as National Voice Day in Manatee County. If there's anyone here to accept, please come stage behind Commissioner Whitmore. Okay, whereas World Voice Day is celebrated every April 16th to increase public awareness of the importance of the voice and the impact of voice problems such as spasmatic dysphoria, now I know why you asked me to do this, <laughs> which causes involuntary spasms in the muscles of the voice box or larynx and causes the voice to break and have tight, strained, and strangled sounds. And whereas there's currently no cure for SD, Research is focusing on treatments, including speech therapy, Botox, good, and vocal cords, um, into the vocal cords. And whereas SD is designated as a rare condition, the medical community and first responders are uninformed and consequently unable to treat it as it is neither a lung or anxiety issue. And whereas we strengthen our resolve to educate first responders and our community to change their 
C, communication, O, opinions, P, perceptions, and E, educate. Now, therefore, therefore be it be proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Mantee County that April 16th, 2022 shall be known, designated, and set aside for National Voices Day in Manatee County, Florida, to raise awareness and foster meaningful dialogue on ongoing opportunities to educate residents and the medical community about spasmodic dysphoria, adopted with a quorum present and voted this 12th day of April, 2022, signed by our chair, Commissioner Van Osterbridge. Hi there. Do you Hi. want to talk? Yes. Good morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you can hear, my vocal cords don't work like most people's. They have a tendency to spasm. There's no cure. They're, they really don't know what cause other than it's something neurological. There is one treatment which I will never, ever do again, and I will spare you the gory details. Do not do Botox. Um, I do speech therapy, which is helping with my breathing because you breathe first and foremost through your vocal cords. And when they spasm and close like mine do, you can't breathe. So I can't breathe and talk at the same time. So when EMTs and doctors and nurses want to give me oxygen, it's not a lung issue. It's a vocal cord issue. And I've also been told, oh, it's just an anxiety disorder. No, it has nothing to do with that as well. I don't have control over my voice. And people with aphasia, um, people who have had strokes and Parkinson's and um, traumatic brain injury as well do not have control over their voice. They can help fix it with therapy, but they cannot control it. So it doesn't mean I'm less educated. It doesn't mean that there's something mentally wrong with me. Neurologically, yes. Mentally, no. Please make that separation. So I'm going to start advocating because it is rare. It's like one in 50,000 people, but I'm that one. So I'm going to start knocking on doors. I have called the administration for EMTs for the county. Never got a call back. I've emailed, never got a response back. So I'm going to start knocking on doors, knocking on doors of hospitals and saying, you need to listen. You need to know how to treat us. So this means the world to me that you did this for us today. Thank you. Thank you for taking
today, and um, I think that our EMS chief, um, Jimmy Crutchfield, as well as Dr. Nonell, uh, I'm going to pass on this resolution and have them do some research on it because those are good points. My husband has Parkinson's, so I get it. Oh, yeah, so thank you. Thank Does you. you Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for showing the courage to come up here and speak to us today and, and bring awareness to this. I knew, literally knew nothing about it until you got up here and spoke. So thank you so much. Um, Commissioner Baugh is on the board and would like to speak as well. As soon as she figures Acres out her microphone. And, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for being with us this morning. It, it shows that, you know what, there's a reason, I think, Whenever things happen, there's always a reason, and, and I think you, you said it this morning. You know, you're going to start knocking on doors. You're going to advocate this so that others learn more about it, because most up here on the board are not familiar with it. And, you know, praise you, praise the Lord that you're there, and you're going to be advocating for those that need help. And, and it is a hard, hard thing, and, and I just really appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you for being with us. Yes, thank you again. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Okay, next we're going to do a proclamation regarding sexual assault awareness day. Does anybody here to pick up? <coughs> this has almost happened to me years ago, and I was able to uh, not let that happen. So uh, I appreciate everybody. I just can't imagine what you guys do in your jobs. and. Um, I appreciate you coming up here and representing those that, that aren't up here today. Okay, whereas April is designated nationally as Sexual Assault Awareness Month to raise public awareness about a sexual violence and to educate communities on how to prevent it. And whereas the theme of this year's Sexual Assault Awareness Day is when, it, when we work together, all communities thrive. The theme incorporates the National Victims' Rights Week priorities of enforcing, expanding, and ensuring inclusion and quality, equity for all. And whereas every 68 seconds an American is sexually abused and every nine minutes there is a claim of child sexual abuse, 34% of sexual abused children are under the age of 12 and on average there are 463,634 victims aged 12 or older of rape or sexual assault each year in the USA. The, whereas in Florida, 41.8% of women and 20.4% of men have been victimized by sexual violence at some point in their lives, approximately one in five Americans aged 60 and older have experienced sexual abuse. 6.2% of our activity are active duty women and 0.7% of active duty men experience sexual abuse. Whereas almost half, 4.9% of multiracial women were subjected to some form of sexual violence in their lifetime, and 17% of Latinos reported experiencing some form of unwanted sexual activity or coercion. Whereas sexual assault is the most underreported crime with only 37% of sex crimes reported to law enforcement. However, victims need to know that there are services available to them in our community whether or not they choose to report. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County that April 27, 2022, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Sexual Assault Awareness Day in Manatee County, adopted with a quorum present and voted this 12th day of, August, of April 2022, signed by our Chair Kevin Van Osterbridge. When I was in high school, I worked as a nursing aide in a um, nursing home, and this lady had a, had a stroke, and she was aphasic, which means she couldn't talk. And we would get her ready, and her husband lived in an apartment. She lived in the infirmary where I worked. And she would cry every time we'd go up. And then one time, the husband had to call us, um, and we found out what he was doing. And this lady was in her 80s. And I, to this day, will never forget that. And that kind of made me want to be a nurse, and I just couldn't believe it. So glad you're here. And if you'd like to say a few words, please feel free and introduce yourself. There's your proclamation. Thank you. I'm Terry Allen. I am the Trauma Services Manager at our Rape Crisis Center at Centerstone. Um, and this team behind me 
is the team of victim advocates that do um, all the work. They are crisis response. They are on our 24-7 helpline. Um, we have Denny, Linda, Chantuez, Leticia, and Yadira. Um, they carry the helpline. It's not often we can get the entire team here all at once because they are 24-7 on call. One of them is holding the helpline right now. <laughs> it is a cell phone. It, when they're on call, they take it home with them. They get um, awake, awoke out of their sleep. Um, it could A call could come at any time, and they respond to our ERs in the community all throughout Manatee County, to law enforcement, um, to anywhere that they're needed. In addition to that 24-7 um, response, they also are providing um, the advocacy, criminal justice advocacy in the courts and at depositions. So they meet the victims at the worst time um, in the moment of disclosing the crisis and follow them through the criminal justice process. We thank you so much for proclaiming this day um, as Sexual Assault Awareness Day, um, April 27th. It is an annual event that we have um, begun years ago. Uh, we are in our 42nd year serving sexual assault victims in Manatee County, and it is because of the support of Manatee County that we're able to continue to provide such great services. Um, our event is on April 27th at 4 p.m. We will be in Sutton Park. It is a family-friendly friendly event, um, but we also bring out artwork. We do an art project each year um, to allow survivors of sexual violence and those who care about them um, to communicate a message that maybe was never heard. Um, a lot of times, as, as you heard in the proclamation, a lot of times sexual assault is not reported. Um, sometimes it's kept secrets for many years before it's finally disclosed. And so this gives an opportunity for messages to be heard throughout the entire community. So thank you so much. I, I can't believe you're thanking us. Thank you, mm -hmm. the six of you, for what you do. Um, it's obviously a service that we hope that we never need, and we hope that no one we know ever need. No offense, but I hope no one I know ever <laughs> comes to your job. Um, and it's something that, as you said, is, is often unreported and is, as a result, often not spoken of. So, so few people even realize you all exist, uh, probably until they need you. Um, but in, in you're, you're one of those, you know, there, there's just like a small cluster of, of people in this county that do things that people have no clue they're doing. And it is just a tremendous benefit to the county itself and to the residents itself. And you all are in that very small group of people really, you know, have taken on a selfless career. Um, Commissioner Satcher is on the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to join in uh, with what they're saying as far as thanks um, and appreciation to you. Um, this issue goes, first of all, I'll just say that through the little bit of um, education that I've received about it, it is so much more pervasive uh, than anyone realizes. It's, you know, the, the horrible things that you see in a television show, of course, you know, they're acting, but that happens. But so much more often, um, you know, young people and family gatherings and older siblings or cousins, um, you know, children grow up living uh, with things happening that never get reported. Uh, that they never let anyone know because of intimidation or shame or, or um, you know, lack of knowledge by the parents. And so I just, if, you know, to anyone watching, I just want to say that this is so much more common than you realize, and I want to encourage parents to have those tough conversations with their kids. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's resources as far as how to have those conversations um, of course, it's never going to be absolutely comfortable, but in ways that um, where you can just find out, okay, is there something going on that I need to know? Um, and then you can also uh, teach children about what to say, what to do. Um, you know, when someone tells you to be quiet, that's the last thing you need to do. And, um, and, and then I'll just point out that unfortunately, um, we know that once you get to uh, the issue of human trafficking, it 
I, I want to say, I remember when I saw a high number, 95%, 97%, and I said it one time speaking, and someone that was even more experienced said, with, with us and women that we help that have been sexually trafficked, it's not 95%, you know, were uh, sexually assaulted. It's 100%. They had literally never talked to anyone that had not had that um, come up as usually as a child or, or a young teenager. And... Um, and then set them up, you know, trying to set them up for um, a, a sad life. But of course, we know that uh, uh, we serve a, we're, we're about to be celebrating Easter soon. And so we serve a, a, a God that can turn things uh, around, even when uh, someone's actions were uh, completely, someone else's actions were selfish and meant for harm. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that, that uh, we thank you, or I thank you for being here and uh, for your courage and helping the women and, and also uh, boys in uh, their just an absolute time of need. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you all so much. Commissioner Whitmore, we didn't exactly give you the light items on the agenda. We appreciate the job you did with what we gave you. Um, so I have a 9.30 time certain. Let's do the uh, Employee of the Month next. So our Employee of the Month is going to be Tracy Adams from Human Services. She's a program manager there, uh, which is under the Department of Community and Veteran uh, Services. And she'll be introduced by Elaine Maholtz. I was going to say, you can tell I'm not Lee Washington. Lee, sorry that he couldn't be here with us today. But yes, I'm Elaine Mayholtz, Human Services Program Manager. Um, I'm just glad, Tracy, that we didn't have to come after the tortoises. So, <laughs> um, Tracy has been with the county since 1996 and has worked as a case manager, contract manager, and in her current role of Human Services Program Manager for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, first, I'd like to introduce her husband, James. <laughs> um, James is a former Marine who served in Desert Storm. Uh, Tracy and James married before he was deployed to Iraq, and I always found it interesting that when he came back, they did it again. Oh, good. And they have raised two um, very fine adult children, Corey and Amber. Tracy's accomplishments are many, and I will try to highlight just a few. Uh, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons for this nomination is to recognize Tracy's work with emergency preparedness and COVID-19. For many years, Tracy has uh, served as lead staff for the human <coughs> needs function of the emergency management. She regularly participates with the EOC in planning responses before, during, and after emergencies. She manages the registry for special need clients, and she ensures that calls are made to the people who need to be evacuated, who need transportation. She also led the development of a more automated system that really helped to reduce the number of special needs calls that needed to be made. Some of the events that Tracy has worked um, includes Hurricane Irma, Elsa, Red Tide, Piney Point, and COVID-19. Even in difficult circumstances, there's always a sense of accomplishment and, and fun in working with Tracy. And during COVID-19, her work had a, a tremendous impact on our community. She chairs a feeding work group that began meeting in March 2020 still meets two years later, continues to meet at least every other week. Good. It's made up of county staff and numerous community agencies, and we work on resolving issues related to food insecurity. For example, the group developed and continues to update a listing of food pantries within Manatee County. During the early days of COVID, Tracy also coordinated with the food pantries to make sure that they got the PPE they needed to uh, stay open and serve the residents. She also arranged transportation with our transit division to assist pantries to obtain their food and to have food um, for storage. 
Tracy, you were also instrumental in bringing Feed Tam Feeding Tampa Bay organization to Manatee County. And she also coordinated a farm share event at the Manatee County Fairgrounds. This, I think, was um, a, a really outstanding event amongst all the events. She worked with the farm share representatives, the fairground staff, other partners. She planned and implemented, it was a one day distribution of over 500 boxes of food, uh, which included produce, dairy, and meat products. Mm -hmm. Also during COVID-19, Tracy and I coordinated a group of dep uh, department employees who over a six month time period, uh, we called over 1,200 residents who were on the special needs list, who were veterans, or who were aging services clients. The calls were weekly or at the client's request. We provided reassurance and assistance with their needs during these first few months of COVID-19. Tracy and her team then followed up with the residents. They provided PPE to the residents, helped to arrange transportation or shopping as needed. Homebound clients were also registered for the state-sponsored COVID vaccine program. These activities along with her regular assigned duties really demonstrate, Tracy, your compassion and dedication to serving the elderly and the at-risk in our community. Tracy and her team of five other staff comprise Manatee County's Aging and Eligibility Services section of our department. Their work includes grant funding through the Florida Department of Elder Affairs for many services for residents over age 60. And when I say many services, there, there are many services. There's direct case management, home energy assistance, homemaker meal delivery, emergency alert response, personal care, and our elder helpline. Tracy and her team also determine eligibility for county programs for low income residents of all ages. These programs include our indigent healthcare program, prescription assistance, and ambulance fee assistance. Recently, Tracy has also been instrumental in the development of a local task force for the Florida Department of Elder Affairs Dementia Care and Cure Initiative. And this task force seeks to educate businesses, first responders, and others who work with persons with dementia. It's our pleasure to work with you, Tracy. And as you can see, she, she has a very positive, meaningful, tremendous impact on our community. Her enthusiasm is contagious and her confident attitude and leadership allow all of us as her colleagues to excel in our work as well. So thank you very much for all you've done, Tracy, and congratulations. Thank you. I'll just leave that there. Yeah. Well, good morning. Oh, Tracy, Ms. yes. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Melissa would like to say a word. Oh, I apologize. That's what we do on the yeah. fly. Don't, well, I was going to say that is one thing that Tracy is good at is going with the flow. Good morning. I'm Melissa Dunlop. I came to work uh, for Tracy nearly eight years ago. I'm a social worker case manager in aging services. And um, as an older employee, I can tell you I've had many supervisors and bosses throughout my career. Um, the best thing about Tracy as a supervisor is she picks up on your strengths right away. And she allows you to run with your strengths in your job. Um, if you need help, she's always there. Um, I bug her a lot. She, she stops what she's doing. And you heard the list. Um, so I go in her office and she stops and answers my questions or directs me. So I'm grateful for her. Her laugh is contagious. She keeps our heads up in the midst of everything, and I wouldn't want to work for anybody else. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Well, good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, Dr. Hopes. Um, so I managed to fly under the radar since 1996. Um, <laughs> flying under the radar does not mean that I am quiet or unopinionated, because I'm very opinionated. Uh, it just means that I do what I do, and uh, a select few get to see some other sides of me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I've been here since 96. Um, I know in the beginning of uh, Elaine's talk about me uh, was the stuff that I do with emergency management. 
And I couldn't do that without the support of him back there. <laughs> when you get called to work a disaster, you have to be all in. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that since I worked here. When I started working here, I had a son who was one and a half. And then I had my daughter a little bit later. And when you get called into work an emergency, um, that means that my husband was responsible for the kids, making sure our home was safe and ready. And now that my kids are older, out of the home and adults living their own lives, um, he helps me with my mother, who lives in a mobile home, and her evacuation plan is to come to our house. And so he works with that too. I couldn't do all that and give it my all without that support from home. We also can't accomplish what we do when we're called to emergencies without these folks back here, because they all give up their time. Because for some reason, hurricanes don't want to show up Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. You know, they always want to show up on a weekend, a holiday, and they give up their weekends. They give up their evenings. They give up, you know, their holiday. Fourth of July was impacted this last time. And they come in and they make these calls. The more people we have making calls to people who are registered for sheltering, the faster we get done. And so none of that, I couldn't do any of that if I didn't have all of this support. And um, speaking of that, we are going, up, going to be upon hurricane season. So please, everyone, remember to register <laughs> if you need sheltering, <coughs> special needs sheltering, or transportation to a general shelter. Please register now, because it's a lot easier to get a call from us on the list rather than you trying to call in at the time in which it's an emergency. So and then with COVID, you know, they asked me if I wanted to participate in a feeding work group. I said yes because I wanted to make sure that the voice of seniors wasn't lost out there. Now people who, who already had trouble going to the grocery store, even more, it's dangerous now. They're, you know, they were a vulnerable population at the beginning of COVID. Um, I didn't know that meant I was going to run it. <laughs> but I did, with, again, with the help of staff taking minutes for me, co-chairing with me, giving me ideas. I had very little guidance, but we're still going strong two years later. Our focus has changed. We're not focusing on COVID issues anymore with feeding, just feeding in general, but um, it's a strong work group. And as far as what I do, since I've been here, I think I'm on my third department name. I'm on my fifth director. And no matter what they call us, no matter who's directing us, our work stays the same. My staff and I deal with people every day who need something. They need help of some sort. They have stories that although we don't need the story to determine if they qualify for help, they need to get their story out. And I would like to thank Jay, Janice, Naomi, Melissa, um, who am I forgetting? I apologize. And Sue is not here. Sue's not here. Um, because that's what they do every day. Every day they're talking to multiple people who were either in the midst of helping, who, who call fresh. And it's not always easy to hear all of these stories. Um, but they do it every single day. And I can't lead them if they're not doing that. And as for the rest of my department, they're just great. I love the people I work with. Since 1996, I have never thought about looking for another job. I've changed jobs within the county, always staying within the same department. But I've never thought, oh, I should look for another job. That's never occurred to me. Um, but I have staff who help me with deliveries of nutritional supplements that come in at the last minute and they help me coordinate getting them up and finding a place to store them so we can get them out to the seniors. I have staff who give me their pickles. I have, you know, staff who just make me laugh. I have staff, not staff, coworkers, I apologize. Yes, you all work for me now. <laughs> 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 um, you know, I have coworkers who I get a little passionate when I want to respond to an email, and it might not be the best to send out when I first want to, and so I read it to them, and they're like, yeah, no, let's delete that and start over again. Uh -oh. um, you know, and, and again, just people who make me laugh. And I'm really appreciative of this. I don't like the limelight, but here I am. Um, one thing I'm going to take advantage of, the last thing I promise I'm going to say um, while I have, have the moment, is 
One of the programs that we do is emergency home energy for the elderly. So we assist households with people, at least one person, 60 and over, with electric. Uh, they have to be in a crisis, meaning they have to be at least a day late, their electric shut off, final notice. They do have to qualify income-wise, but this is funding we get from the state and federal government. They have given us an abundance of funding since COVID. So I would like to get out there. Any households with seniors, 60 and over in there, who need help with electric, please call us, because if we don't spend this money, well, you know, it's going to go someplace else. And I really don't want to have to explain to the state why we didn't spend the money. So um, I wanted to take a moment to get that out there that, you know, we have assistance. So commissioners, anybody you know, get the word out there. We do have it. We serve a lot of people already, but we would like to impact some households we've never impacted before since we've got the money. Um, it's nice for once to have money and not say, sorry, we're shut down, call back next month. So anyway, thank you very much, and I appreciate it, and thanks to all of you. Um, I just, I just wanted to say when she says um, elderly, sixty and above, uh, no, sorry, <laughs> but just for the um, board to be aware, some of you may, but the um, grants that we receive through the Florida Department of Elder Affairs, even though the names have changed, also. We've been receiving those grants since at least 1980. It might have even been before then, but at least since 1980 for that. The homemaker, when I first started, I was, I was working on those grants. So um, it, it's really an accomplishment that we're still doing that and um, doing a great job. So thank you, thank you Tracy. Oh, OK. Tracy, yes. you're a trip. She is. Uh, <laughs> I, I really oh, enjoyed you that. have no, you have, you fans. have no idea. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, um, me too. So, and I also love that you, you know it, when you get the limelight here to be honored as Employee of the Month, you're still pitching your programs while you have the microphone. That's fantastic. I love the dedication. So, no surprise, Whitmore, Baugh, and Servia, you have a long list of commissioners that would like to speak. Commissioner Whitmore, the floor is yours. Elaine Mayholtz and Tracy Adams, you're about the only two that I really, really have. Uh, dealt with. And I forgot about this electric thing. I think a few, uh, maybe six months ago, I had a lady beside herself in Colony Cove that was flipping out because she was uh, couldn't, she was, uh, she was calling on her neighbor, neighbors crying because she couldn't pay her electric bill. So I'm assuming she's like two or three months behind. She couldn't pay that it was due. And I think she got the money from you guys because I, I, I always go to Elaine Mayholt, she's been the longest one there, and I don't know where to go to. D Tracy, we've been at meeting, a lot of meetings together. Um, God bless you for the indigent care. You know how, I, how passionate I am that in the food program. Uh, it's good to hear that we're still doing that and you guys are still meeting because we need continuity. The, thing, the models have changed, you're right. Uh, COVID, we all can handle that. Um, we're doing okay with that. But we have people that are losing their homes that are homeless. And we do need a place for them to pick up something to eat. Uh, I was at a grocery store this week getting my husband his meds and saw a girl just sitting there not bothering anybody, just charging her phone, but she was homeless. And so I said, if you come into the store with me, I'll buy you something to eat. But you, you gotta, you, we, we gotta figure out how to handle this. And I, and I know you're the person. And, and all the years that I've been in meetings with you, I've never heard you speak so much. So it was nice to, it was nice to, and I, and I remember we had to fight, um, we pushed when we were only funding a bath for the elderly once a week. And I had to push for twice a week. Is it twice now or three it, times? It, it just depends. But it was during a funding crisis with the state. Yeah. And we would have to stop uh, some services. And uh, so the county commission was thoughtful enough to uh, give us twice. some funds to be able to continue services at level. We need your services. We need your expertise. We need everybody in this group now more than ever. It's always one disaster after another. But thank Thank you for everybody for stepping up and hanging in there. And um, you make all of us, as Vanessa, Commissioner Ball always says, you make all of us look good. And nobody, and it's nice to talk to you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Ball. Well, dag, I was going to say that. But now i got to come up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Stacy, I actually wrote down um, when, when everyone was talking about you, work stays the same and has since 1996. I wrote that down because I thought to myself, you know what? It does, doesn't it? It's the same issues. 
they never go away, nor will they ever go away. But the good news is we have we have Tracy. So uh, you know what? You do make us proud. You make us look good, no doubt. I mean, Commissioner Whitmore stole it from me, but she's right. I agree with it. But you know, I'm looking at everyone behind you, and that says a lot. You got a great family, obviously. Um, you know, your coworkers are here supporting you. Um, that says a lot. And you know what? Manatee County, again, is very blessed. Thank you for everything and all the years and the success and, and the help that you've given to so many people, to all of you. All right, Tracy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Servia. Thank you. Congratulations, Tracy, and thank you for all of your work. You know, I believe in Manatee County, the most important things we do are public safety and addressing human needs. Thank you for addressing so many human needs. I'm uh, especially thankful for your help with the homebound elderly citizens. Um, I have had the pleasure of working with Melissa Dunlop, with my stepfather when he was homebound. We currently have a homebound family member, and if it weren't for my retired husband being able to give her the attention she needs, we would be asking for your help. So for people who don't have any help, I really appreciate all the work that you do in the community. Thank you. It's your day to celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and on behalf of the 80,000 residents of District 3, <laughs> thank all of you for everything yes. that you do for our district and for our residents. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Okay, we do have a 930 time certain, so it's 941. It seems appropriate to take it up now. Um, Dr. Hopes, would you want to introduce, would you like to introduce that item, please? Yes, Mr. Chair, this item is um, the authorization to install two speed humps on 49th Avenue West in a raised intersection on 9th Street West at 49th Avenue Drive West. Uh, I think uh, Commissioner Serbia has members of the community here, and she and I had, had met with uh, these folks in the Homeowners Association a number of months back, and we finally... Um, have it before you today. Chad? No, go ahead. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. For record, Vishal Kakkar, Traffic Engineering Division Manager, Public Works. The item that you have in front of uh, you have in front of you today, like Dr. Hobbs mentioned, it is to install two uh, speed humps uh, on 49th Avenue West. So the community that we are here as Fairland, Fairland, Fairland Acres. This is just north of State Road 70, uh, roughly between 5th Street West and 14th Street West. You have the aerial in your aerial exhibit in your package. Uh, it is a mobile home park, and therefore the locations to put some of these devices are very challenging because you have closely spaced driveways there. So we have, with the community's input, uh, and we have the adjacent homeowners or the property owners who have given us their letters, including Fairland Acres Association, uh, where they have their activity center, where you see that big orange box in the middle. That's where we are putting the raised intersection. We have letters of support from all of them. <clears throat> and so with your approval, we will be following the process of we will put speed humps for 90 days, the rubber ones, if the feedback continues to be positive, we will put them as asphalt. Uh, raised intersections, typically we would put a sim to simulate those in four corners with rubber ones, but there is no room, so we are gonna go with asphalt directly over there. Um, so that's the item here. Um, if any questions, we are here. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Servia is the only commissioner on the board. Commissioner Servia. Yeah, I just want to take a moment to thank the staff very much for your hard work in getting us to this point. You know, we've had a lot of challenges in reaching today where we are to get approval from the board to install these speed tables. Uh, it, COVID was a big challenge, um, uh, other challenges related to that, but I appreciate the persistence of the neighbors in the neighborhood. Um, this is a neighborhood that is tightly knit. This is a neighborhood that suffers with cut through traffic and speeding vehicles. And it's not the only one. I feel like every day now I'm hearing about cut through traffic and speeding vehicles. And we have got to do something uh, to change that. But Fairlane Acres is, has been desperate to receive this help. 
We have a lot of elderly people who live here in very close quarters, and there are public safety concerns every day because of this. So I'm confident that this is going to help that situation. There was a pet that was killed last week, um, and that is terrible and sad. Uh, but we also don't want to have a person killed. So thank you. I think this is going to save lives. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm next on the board, followed by Commissioner Bellamy. Um, Mr. Butso, where are we on the height of speed humps in Manatee County? Do you and I, sometimes I have a lot on my plate and I forget where you and I left off, but we had a discussion about the, the current standard, whether or not it's a set policy or if it's an industry standard or if it's just a county standard. And, um, you know, if you could fill us in, please. At the last meeting, we, uh, I believe it was the last meeting, we had a longer discussion about that. Ours is based on just the county standard, but it's within the regulation guidelines. We have a work, schedule, work session scheduled coming up. I do not remember the date, uh, Mr. Administrator. I think it's in May. If, uh, if it's not, it's by June. And also, uh, we are planning on installing uh, two modified versions on uh, one of the, uh, the loop road that goes behind the EOC uh, mm -hmm. so we can uh, examine how they might feel and verify that they still meet the effect. The desired intent is to control speeding, not necessarily make everybody go 10 miles an hour across the, uh, the device. So uh, we also plan to have that in place before that work session. So hopefully everybody has a chance to drive it. Okay, and that's right. I, I'd forgotten that you had planned to set those up back there. So what will the height of these speed tables, speed humps? Whatever? That height is three inches. Three inches? Okay. Thank you very much. Commissioner Bellamy, you're next on the yeah, board. Yeah, check. I um, obviously in, in support of this, but I think about a month, month and a half ago, I asked for some traffic calming studies in North Orange um, Estates. Um, we had a young lady um, that got hit and had to be bay flighted, and I brought, and I brought that up, and I just want to make sure that from the staff perspective, we... Um, identify that as an area so we can take and do the same type work. We have a lot of youth in that area um, in North Orange States that are out playing, and um, we still have a lot of speeding, and I've received countless amount of phone calls for some of the residents um, out there. So in support of this, I want to make sure I identify the steps or what's necessary so we can get that um, traffic calming um, study out there in that area so we can make sure, again, we lead with public safety first. So any, any, any guidance or any direction so I can support it or staff can make sure we get it done expeditiously because we do not want anyone injured, yet long, you know, we want to make sure we take care of our youth at all costs. So whatever is next that needs to take place for North Orange Estates for us to get that traffic study and get some um, speed tables in that area, I would really appreciate the support. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Serbia and then Commissioner Baugh. Commissioner Serbia. Yeah, I just wanted to take a moment and ask if uh, any of the residents from Fairlane Acres would like to come up and just offer a few comments. I have worked hand in hand with Dana, who I think is going to come up and just give well, us a few comments. We need a motion and then we'll go to public comment. Yes, I, I make oh, okay. the motion to approve the recommended motion. Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Serbia and a second by Commissioner Bellamy. Um, Commissioner Baugh is on the board. Uh, and then I do have a card for this particular item, which is from Patrice Young. So we'll go to her first after Commissioner Ball. Commissioner Ball, who is still mastering okay. the microphone. I, I hate this thing, just so you all know. It, it's only one button. Uh, it, you got to really. Mm. Um, I, I'm curious, Chad, or, or I'm not sure who wants to answer this question, but. My concern on this is not that I think it's a bad thing. I think it's probably a, a very good thing. I understand it. But my concern is, is that we're having a workshop next month. So why would we not wait until we have the workshop to make sure that we're consistent on what we're doing? I'm just curious about that. I, I, I understand the need, but why are we moving, uh, you know, when it's next month? This one has been in the... Right. process for quite a while uh, a year yeah, no. greater than 12 months so I mean it is that uh, it wouldn't reach at least the speed 
pumps themselves would would still be in temporary because it's a 90 day minimum 90 day trial period so if the uh, if the decided shape uh, from a work session was changed uh, by consensus uh, we wouldn't necessarily install the wrong ones gotcha. but also uh, anything that was put in with a shorter ramp if you will, can be modified in the field quickly to lengthen the ramp. It wouldn't have to be totally removed. Okay. Uh, and just so you know, I saw three commissioners gasp when I said that. It's not that I'm against it. I'm not. I was just curious as to why, you know, we were moving now instead of after the workshop. But I understand. Thank you. Dr. Hope, you're on the board. Yeah, and, uh, uh, Commissioner Baugh, and I, I can tell you, I spent a tremendous amount of time in that neighborhood. And it, it's truly, I, I don't think a car could go too slow on this particular street, <laughs> it's uh, it's a, a very high density community, and unfortunately, they have a road that appears to be an ideal uh, cut through to go from I think it's fifth to fourteenth, yeah. and 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 literally, there are you know elderly people that get around their neighborhood by walking on the street, <laughs> and so uh, this. This, this is a little bit long overdue, but I'm anxious to be able to test drive over the speed humps, uh, speed bumps, and speed tables myself at the EOC. Commissioner Bogg, the dialogue? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I didn't say I was against it. I was just asking that question. So everybody chill. I think it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm gonna open this up to public comment. I do have a card for Patrice Young. If she would come forward first, um, the way public comment works is you'll have three minutes to speak specifically on this agenda item. And when you get to the microphone, please state your first and your last name and your county of residence. Go I ahead, ma'am. Patricia Young, uh, and I'm a resident of Manatee County. Uh, and I'm not sure that I'm in the right place. <laughs> I'm here to talk uh, to address the issues of traffic on Lorraine Road, which I know will be also be discussed next month. This is my first time doing this, so please forgive me. And I also thank you for directing me to parking. <laughs> well, I'll, I'm going to have you hold on just a second because it has number one written. Oh. This, obviously, I have you up here for the wrong thing. So. Okay. Okay. Road. Yeah, give me so, just a moment. I'll give you some direction here. Okay. <laughs> and I have Lorraine is number 38, which is consent, Chad? Yes. Consent okay. So order. just hold off just a minute when we do comment on consent agenda. Okay. That's when you want to come forward, Thank you. I apologize for misleading you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming down. Absolutely. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this specific agenda item uh, on these speed humps? Ma'am, come forward. State your first, last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to speak. Good morning. My name is Dana Ritter, and I live in Manatee County. Um, I actually am on the board of directors for Fairlane Acres, so thank you very much for bringing this topic up today and approving it, hopefully. Um, I live on 49th Avenue West. I've lived in there since 2016, and we have done multiple traffic studies. Um, a couple had failed. I was diligent in not giving up because on a daily basis, I see this traffic um, it just is unbelievable. Uh, we have no sidewalks. We have low illumination. We have elderly community. We have disabled people there. We have young people there. And they are very excited for this. It's been a long time coming. And I can't wait to go back to the community and tell them that you passed this today. <laughs> and um, hopefully we can get them installed soon if it is approved. And we can see some progression throughout the rest of the neighborhood. Um, I know that when we originally put the paperwork together, we put five topics or five areas of concern, starting with 49th Avenue and worked our way through the park. Every road does have a concern of traffic. Um, it is the cut through from 5th to 14th. Um, it is busier in season, obviously, because of the, you know, the population growth, but it is all day, every day, um, just as recent as the 25th of March. My truck was involved in a hit and run accident in front of my home. Um, very rarely is it parked out front. <laughs> it will never be again, <laughs> but, um, you know, I had video cameras, it captured it, and hopefully they will be able to find the driver for that incident. But in the same token, 
Um, that's an everyday thing. Unfortunately, it happened to me. I wouldn't want it to happen to any of our residents, but um, very valuable lesson learned. <laughs> And I think that the traffic calming devices will help in many ways, not only for the speeding, but the erratic, reckless driving. It is unbelievable. And if you ever get a chance to come through our neighborhood, we would welcome you. Um, drive slowly, though, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else who'd like to come forward? First, last name, county of residence, three minutes, sir. Glenn Jibalina, for the record, Manatee County, speed bumps. Come down my street, 28th Street East. They are wonderful. It took me nine years to get them in. But once they're in, they make a difference. And my, my thought is, just like the previous speaker, 90% of those people don't live in our neighborhood. They could care less. They go to work, they come to work, they want the shortcuts. Let them take the primary roads. That's my thought. Like my street, no sidewalks, no lighting. And we're between two major manufacturers, State Built and McLeod. And those employees race through, used to race through, every morning, 5.30 to 9, bam, 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 and 3.30 to 5 in the afternoon when our kids are getting off school buses. So the speed bumps work. They work for the community they're intended to, and all the other folks that just want to use it as a shortcut, tell them to take a hike because they don't live there, they don't care about the residents there, they don't care about the kids that are trying to walk down the street, they don't care. They wanna go from A to B as fast as they can, and they can do that on a primary road. So congratulations, thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come? Would you like to speak on the speed bumps on 47th? Yes, ma'am, come forward. Do you want to wait till future agenda items, which is next? No, just to say that. Come on up here. Yes, come on up here. Come on up here. Okay. I like you. I, I, well, I love you. I'm going to, you know, you're getting a little favoritism right. here. That's the way it works sometimes. First and last name, county uh, residence. Since we're talking about speed bumps. First, first and last name, uh, first and last name oh, county I'm sorry. residence. My name is Betty Sales Rose, and since we're talking about speed bumps, the area you're going to put them in, we definitely do need them out in North Orange State. And just like Mr. Bellamy said, a young lady was ran over by a truck because of the speeding out there. But if you come, all you all come out and do a survey, please do not put the high yellow speed bump. You understand? Because that would tear up a car if we coming through there. So you need to have them kind of low, even in everything. And so we do need them, like he said, really out there because late at night they speed through like they're going crazy. So we do need them, so since you're talking about speed bump. And another thing I want you all to do a survey on, please come over by Lincoln Middle School, whoever did them speed bumps there. It need to be taken up and redone over. Because if, from my understanding, you all can look, that's what that car hit when them two guys got killed, because ain't no flasher there. If you don't know the road on, on 17th Street and 2nd, and you can't turn left anymore, you gotta go up and turn left. They got it too far. You got it going over in the city property, because one part is the county, the other part is the city. So you, every one of you all on this board should go out there and look at it. That's all, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And I totally agree with you about the height of the speed bumps. We're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to speak on this specific agenda item? Seeing no one will go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on this specific agenda item? Yes, we have one hand raised. Would caller ending in 408. Please press star six to unmute. All right, caller with the number, last three digits, 408. You'll have three minutes to speak on this agenda item. Please state your first and last name and your county of residence. Yes, Carol Feltz, Mayaka City. This is pertinent to the current issue on the agenda and following um, all items on the agenda to this point forward. I have repeatedly requested and brought to the attention 
of our county commissioners and our county administrators, the inadequacies in the current format of the agenda and the timeliness of its posting. Ma'am, I'm sorry, I that's not the agenda this. item we've brought up right now. I you can hold that to future agenda items. This. Thank you very much. In person, to Thank you very much. Item. Is there any, are there any other callers who are calling on this specific agenda item? That is all the calls at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, should we, no one, oh, I do have people on the board, I'm sorry. Commissioner Servia and then Commissioner Baugh. Yes, um, as we get ready to vote, I just want to thank the board and encourage you please to support this effort. And to staff, um, I ask that once these temporary speed tables go in, if we can please monitor the neighborhood, because what I don't want to do is solve a problem on one street and create a problem on another street. So I know that we will be watching that very closely, Dana. Thank you for being here, and you know how to reach us. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Baugh. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention the reason I brought it up and questioned the workshop was because of something that Betty, did she leave? I can't see her now. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> She's absolutely right. We don't have any signage up at most of them. There's no flashing sign, no nothing. So unless you're familiar with that neighborhood, you don't know that they're necessarily there. The, the main thing that I brought it up, however, was because of EMS and fire trucks going over them. Um, there's kind of a question as to what the right height is for emergency services. That was my main concern. Not putting the speed bumps in, or humps, whatever you want to call them, uh, in this neighborhood, but whether or not the height was correct. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You know you're in Florida when their commissioner is peeling an orange at the dais and the person next to her <laughs> bumming a piece from her. <laughs> you guys crack me up sometimes. Okay, Commissioner Satcher, you're, you're the last one on the board. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to express uh, a little bit of support uh, for Commissioner Bellamy. And uh, I know he has been very consistent on this issue as far as, um, and I do know that feeling of, okay, what is the procedure so I can get it every single time? And when someone asks me, I can tell them exactly what it is. And I know we've got uh, workshops coming and I know we're working on it, but I still just wanted to say that I support you, bro uh, brother, and, uh, and, your com and the community there in District 2. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, no one's on the board. It's after 10 o'clock. Let's, let's call the question on this one. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes by a vote of 6 to 0. Okay. Let's... Let's... Go, yeah, we'll, it's, it's 10, 10 2 now. We'll take a break at 10.30, but uh, in the meantime, let's do... We'll pull items from consent that we want to pull, then we'll go into future agenda items. Oh, 44? I thought we had we did both at the same time. We did not. Does 44 require its own yes. presentation? It's just a resolution. Okay. Who would like to read that resolution? I can, I can do it. So adopt resolution number R22049, appointing Daryl Weaver to the Housing Finance Authority of Manatee County, Florida, and to authorize the chairperson to sign the certificate of membership for the Housing Finance Authority appointment. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Servia and a second by Commissioner Baugh. Um, we'll open this up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on this specific item? Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on this specific item? No, not at this time. Okay. Commissioner Whitmore, you're on the board. No, it's for the next item. Okay, it's for the next item. We'll call the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously by a vote of six to zero. Okay. Um, shall we move then into items to pull from consent? Uh, right. Commissioner Whitmore is on the board. Yeah, I have um, two, I three items I'd like pulled. Three. Item number 11. And then the budget amendment, which is number 18, number 4, and number 2. Okay, hold on. 18, 4, and 2. That's item number 18, number 4, and number 2. The one about the, the, um, the funds that we're getting, you know, I just think that needs to be said to the public so they know where we're spending the money. I'm fine with it, but, you know, anyway, we'll talk about it when it's time. It's, it's, not, it's not to spend the money. Number 11. And then item 18, number four, and number two. 
Yeah, Dr. Hopes, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I've, and this this came up in uh, Commissioner Whitmore's uh, briefing, and the the particular item in the budget amendment is not to spend the money. It is merely to receive the grant. It, it is not spending the money, and that's why I, I, I didn't pull it when she requested it, because you the, the grant is there. You're not authorizing the spending, but you're receiving it so that it can be held in an account for the date with which it comes back to you to spend it. Do you still want to pull it, Commissioner Whitmore? Yeah, because okay. he, I wasn't communicated that, and I asked to have it pulled, and it wasn't pulled. Okay, we'll, we'll pull it. So 18 is pulled. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy just stepped away. Does anyone know what Commissioner Bellamy wanted to pull from the consent agenda? Which way did he go? Here he comes. Here he comes. We'll, we'll hold just a moment. I do that on purpose, Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, every chance you get, you get yeah. Don't go. forget the mic. <laughs> I actually asked the county administrator which items were pulled, and he told me that item 11 was pulled. Okay. So that's why I oh. thought I took myself off the board oh, before okay. I go I back there and talk to Okay, you. so 11 and 18 are what we are pulling All right. today. We're going to move then into public comment on future agenda items. So if there is anyone who would like to come forward at this time to speak on an item that is not on today's agenda but may appear on a future agenda, now is the time for you to come forward. Oh, then this would be the time you would want to speak. Okay. If it's not on today's, but it may appear at a future agenda as a future agenda item. So please state your first and last name, your county of residence, and you'll have three minutes. My name is Susan Curry. I live in Manatee County, and um, I live in the uh, fishing village of Cortez. And I'm here because of continuous code violations and building and permit violations that's affecting me. There are numerous code violations, one being that the person um, who owns this residential piece of property has erected a building in which they are doing major auto repairs. And according to 401.2 schedule of uses, major auto repairs are not allowed on a single family residentially zoned property. The large metal warehouse type building was put up in less than a day. Although it has a building permit, the property owner does not have a certificate of appropriateness, um, which is what you need if you do anything in historic Cortez Fishing Village. You go through the Historic Preservation Board to get a his, uh, certificate of appropriateness. Um, and she did not do that. Um, I was at a, a code hearing, gosh, last Monday, and, or not last Tuesday, and she has two other structures that are up that have no permits or certificates of appropriateness. And the code officer said that she seems to do things a little backwards, put the building up first, worry about the permits and codes later. Hmm. The noise I've been living with for a year, it's sanding, grinding, cutting steel, it's major automobile repairs. I haven't opened my windows all winter long. Um, I've been told to be patient and that this is a process, and um, I have tried to be patient, but it continues. And uh, the, the owner did not, wasn't patient when putting her buildings up because she didn't apply for permits or the certificate of appropriateness. She just put them up. And there was no patience there, and now I have to be patient to wait for this to be resolved. Um, I want to sell my house. This automobile repair shop has devalued my property. I've had buyers who love my house, and um, they wonder, they ask me about what's happening next to my backyard, and they don't feel protected by the rules that are in place uh, with code enforcement and building and permitting, that they would be protected. They just seem to be ignored in Cortez Fishing Village a lot of times. And it's really, really, as you probably know, some of you, if you have read my emails, that I'm really upset about it. Um, and my cat was run over the other day because people speed up that road. Thank okay, you. thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Next is Patrice Young. On the agenda. 
Patrice Young. Thank you, ma'am. For next time. So first and last name, even though I just said it twice, uh, your county of residence, and you have three minutes to speak on a future agenda item. I'm Patricia Young, by the way, and uh, I live in Montgomery, and excuse me, that's where I live for most of my life, in Manatee County. Uh, and I'm here to speak to the issue of traffic on Lorraine Road and uh, speed limits there. And uh, speed bumps, no. <laughs> that wouldn't, certainly would not be appropriate there. No. Uh, it's a wonderful road because we now can go from parts of Manatee County to uh, Sarasota County. And I live near the uh, border of Sarasota County and Manatee. So my issue is something that I'd like to bring to your attention that you should consider when you decide what you're going to do with the speed limits. Um, so I'm going to discuss the part of Lorraine Road from University to 70. And that's about uh, less than two miles stretch of road. And within that, um, to, and actually within a mi less than a mile and a half, there are six schools. But the situation is so lovely there with all the plantings and so on, you would not be aware of it. Uh, I've lived here for a little over a year right now, and I frequent Lorraine Road to go shopping and nursery, plant nurseries and so on on the road. And it took me a while to figure out that there were all these schools there. So I'm going to take you on a trip from Lorraine Road at University down to Route 70. Starting uh, at the corner of University, there is a shopping plaza with a, a Publix and so on. And right next to that are several buildings, and one is a church. Uh, it's the Harvard Methodist Church, and they have a school. Uh, the school is called Just Grow, and it's, for, it's a full day program for preschool children. So that's school number one. Go a little farther down the road to the Masters and turn right, and about a quarter mile off of the road is Robert Willis Elementary School. Um, then back onto Masters, and actually at the corner of Masters and Lorraine right now, there is a lot that is, uh, has been discussed as a uh, possible Catholic school. Uh, then farther down Lorraine Road, we have, um, Ro excuse me, I'm not familiar with these uh, school names yet. Oh, Nolan Middle School, which is just off of Lorraine Road. Then get back on the Ro Lorraine Road, keep on going down, and right next to Willis School, uh, and Nolan School, excuse me, uh, is the Pinnacle Academy, which is a K through 12 school. Uh, and it's mainly like an, an alternative type of school. Then go back on the road and just a few feet, turn right again. There's the Goddard School, which is early childhood preschool, and next is the daycare across the street. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, next, so three minutes for future agenda items, first and last name, and your county of residence. Certainly. Good morning, Commissioner. And, um, body assembled. My name is Roderick Woodson. Uh, I'm, a member, I'm a resident of Manatee County. I live in the development at the corner of Lorraine Road and University. It's called Miramar. Oh, yeah. I've lived in this community since uh, 2012. Indeed, when I moved into the community, the traffic patterns were really quite different. The roads were the same, but the uh, busyness of the activity has uh, increased dramatically. I'm here to remark about the proposed speed limits on the rain. Um, the posted speed limit is 35. The proposal that I've read about is to increase that speed limit uh, to 40. I want to make an observation that posted speed limits do not imply enforced speed limits. Um, I drive on the rain road regularly on a daily basis. And since I heard about this, I just took note on my own way that I would drive up the rain to 70 and drive at 35 miles an hour using um, the speed limit control on my car. There is not a moment on the rain road where that speed limit is adhered to, but for me. Mm -hmm. And it's worse between uh, in the rush hours 
in the mornings and in the evenings. But I must tell you that if you raise the speed limit to 40, the speed limit that's actually uh, enforced will be 50 to 60. Lorraine Road is an interesting road. It's beautiful, but it is not a 60 mile an hour road. It is not a 50 mile an hour road. It is a 35 mile an hour road. And the previous speaker today, or just this moment, made mention of the children in the area. That is a real issue. And um, so I would urge uh, the body to either not consider this matter um, at the next meeting, or if it does consider it, that um, it will accept public comment to oppose this. This is not the thing to do on the rain road at this time. By the way, I said one other thing. You know how I found out about this? Was in the County Observer. And one of the remarks, that, several of the remarks from people in the County Observer were, well, I don't live in the area, but I have to drive in from some other place in the county, and I don't want to slow down. Uh, give me a break. Those of us who live in the environment need to be treated better than that. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Meehan, your future agenda items as well, I believe. First and last name, your county of residence, and you have three minutes, sir. Uh, Mike Meehan, Manatee County resident. The surplus for fiscal year 2021 has come in at 209.2 million. I'll say that again. The surplus was 209.2 million. This is a startling figure even compared with the last several years of $100 million surpluses. The current budget process does not work. It consistently underestimates revenues and overestimates expense. Xing out the 65 million from the CARES Act, the 2021 surplus still comes in at 144.2 million. This begs the ongoing question, is Manatee County logistically capable of spending its way out of this flood of money in which last year's surplus equaled 75.7% of property taxes paid? Startling figure. The answer on past and current form is no. Manatee County is not logistically capable of spending all of these funds. Again, I refer you to a number of recommendations made of my Christmas 12 days of wishing for Manatee County, many of which are doable this year, including another and bigger millage cut, continue to fund environmental lands from reserves, that is no millage increase, sewer and water billing holiday, Double the budget for nonprofit human service agencies which are doing yeoman work, helping citizens cope with the persistent and rising cost of living. Reduce or eliminate the sales tax. And finally, implement an annual variable property tax credit to offset the property tax valuations, which will increase at a maximum rate this year due to very high consumer price and inflation. In closing, I'd like to read a short piece that was published in Barron's by someone I know. To the editor, since we now have food inflation and many other commodities in an inflationary spiral not seen since the 1970s, perhaps we should look at interest rates from that period to inform our decision about how, how high rates need to go in order to bring inflation under control. Under control. Starting with the Vietnam War era in 68 and continuing through 90, 1990, it took 22 years before inflation consistently fell below 3% and federal funds retreated from a high of 18% in 1980 to 4% in 1991. It's way past time for Fed Chairman Jerome Powell to take off the rose-colored glasses and get serious about and fighting the inflation quicksand beneath his feet that is rapidly eroding the purchasing power of the American people. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Meehan. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to speak on future agenda items? 
think you know the job. the routine, Mr. Jablina. For the record, uh, Glenn Jablina, <clears throat> thank you very much. I want to talk about uh, future agenda for. FPNL is not friends for residential homeowners. You know, we have a water rebate out there. Why don't we have a rebate for home ownership for the solar? They, FPL is brutal. They don't want to give anybody a break. This bill is a disaster. It's a job killing bill. And if they're going to, if it is going to pass, then we need to come up with an alternative for the dozen or so solar local solar co companies that will probably be laying off hundreds of their employees. So that's the first thing. The second thing I want to talk about is the jail. We had a workshop last week about the jail. Uh, Hello, I'm Manatee County Administrator Dr. Scott Hopes. Now hold that time. <laughs> He's everywhere, Glenn. He's everywhere. <laughs> okay. Practice in, a, <laughs> practice in a little bit. Okay, so... Um, so on the veteran housing on the jail, I think it's a great idea. I think you need to move forward. However, if there is a better possibility of some other property somewhere, then we should still move forward for workforce housing at the jail. Do not let that project stop. That needs to continue whether it is for veterans or workforce. Certainly if it was good enough for, for two and three hundred thousand dollar condos, it should be good enough for employees that actually Live in, uh, work in this building, could walk to work. I think it's a lost opportunity. If we don't do it for the vets, you need to move forward on that as well. Um, Mike Meehan, he's right. $144 million a surplus. Let's start using that for workforce housing. Do these bridge loans to some of these developers. I, I think there's an opportunity there. Uh, Betty, she left. You know why? Because we have to be at the school board meeting at 10 o'clock. So that's why we have to leave. We can't, we can't be both places at the same time. So I'll be cutting this short. So I do want to, I do want to point out that uh, on the surplus property that the county has, if, if, uh, if it becomes available, it needs to stay in for workforce housing. So I'm going to give you folks an opportunity. So I teach kids, and they'll be doing, I'm teaching them at this project. So stop by today or any day from 3.30 to 7.30 at this address. And uh, I have three kids from Bayshore, one from Southeast, and one homeschooler that will be actually learning the trades. We have Parish Plumbing coming in to show them how to do plumbing. We have Sun Close Electric coming in to show them how to do wiring. These kids will be having a job when I'm done with this home. Any, any construction company would be happy to have them. We need to continue in that direction. So if you want to uh, move forward on a surplus you, lobs. Now, wait a minute. I got screwed out of 30 seconds there. <laughs> you get the point. No, Thank we, you. we stopped the clock. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's all right. Okay. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward uh, to speak on future agenda items? Okay. Seeing no one, we'll go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on future agenda items? Yes, we have multiple callers. Would caller ending in 408, 408, please press star 6 to unmute. All right, caller 408, star 6 to unmute. You'll have three minutes to speak on future agenda items. Please state your first and last name and your county of residence. Carol Phelps, Mayaka City. Despite your previous attempts to cut me off, my comments are pertinent to every agenda item, and I fully intend on exercising my rights as a Manatee County taxpaying citizen to call in and express my concerns as repeatedly and as often as I am legally allowed for three full minutes on any topic that I wish. It has been repeatedly brought to the attention of the board and our county administrator that the current format of the agenda on the county's website is neither timely nor adequately accessible to the public. We have requested repeatedly that the agenda packet be returned to its former format in which a sidebar allowed us to access documents and details on a particular item without having to scroll through 2,000 pages of every document on every item following the agenda outline. If you can't relate or respond to an extremely simple function in your duties as our elected officials and taxpayer-paid staff, or continue to try and demean, besmirch, or ignore an easily executable request from your constituents to be more educated, informed, and involved citizens, 
What hopes do we have that there is any credibility or genuine concern to the public in its attempts to do so? Thank you. Thank you. Next caller. I apologize, but caller ending in 205, 205, please press star six to unmute. So caller, you'll have three minutes. Please state your first and last name and your county of residence. Hello, uh, Belinda Ritchie, uh, Women's Voices, Southwest Florida. I'm a Manatee County resident. I have uh, two simple asks today. Um, one, um, that perhaps the county could consider a sign-on bonus for new hires um, that pass the onboarding process. The commissioners have often stated that a new hire can sometimes wait up to five weeks to get paid. Um, you have 250 jobs posted and you're having a job fair soon, so that's an ask um, to take that into consideration. The second is an ask that we declare a um, uh, housing emergency in Manatee County and do a 180-day study similar to that in Miami-Dade County to see if rent control guidelines in Manatee County should be implemented and regulated. Thank you and have a great day. That is all the callers at this time. Okay. Thank you very much. We will close citizen comment on future agenda items. There are three commissioners on the board. It's 1026. Um, Might I'll just take a minute. Just take a minute. Okay. So we'll, we'll try to quickly go through the three commissioners, and then we'll recess uh, after that. So Commissioners Whitmore, Baugh, and Bellamy. Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, thank you. Mr. Meehan, your comments probably gave Tim Gruders a stroke in the audience here. He's our financial guy that uh, <laughs> is our auditor. So um, again, uh, during budget time or whatever, we will um, explain that that's just not money that we have. That's, uh, you know, and, and we get this every time. So, but we, we do have a reason um, that we hire an outside firm to make sure that we're on the right path. Susan Curry, thank you for coming. I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. I'm not used to seeing you in a formal setting, but uh, thank you for um, coming. The properties um, are in Cortez, Karen Bell's properties, and I, uh, and it's gone before it's gone before process now, and um, you know we as policymakers don't get involved with that because all we do is set policy. It is going through a judicial process um, that it needs to go through. So we'll wait as soon you know. There, and there's I think you had said you wanted to have this on an agenda in the future. We ca we have to wait till the outcome. We have to wait. That that's and our lawyers here would probably tell you the same. But it is gone before I think a board or a special magistrate and a, and there's a fine or whatever they have to comply. So we can't get involved in the middle of that. And I think our attorney would confirm that. That is correct. The board does not have jurisdiction over pending code enforcement proceedings. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Baugh. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to thank the two residents from Lakewood Ranch that uh, took their time to come into this meeting today, and they're absolutely correct. There are four or six schools uh, from University Parkway down to State Road 70 on Lorraine Road, or right off of Lorraine Road. Uh, the problem is, and the gentleman that spoke from Miramar, I lived in Miramar for two years. I'm very familiar with it, and it's right at the intersection of University and Lorraine. And I can tell you that he's absolutely correct. Uh, it doesn't matter what we put the speed limit at. People aren't going to abide by it. They go 60 and 70 miles an hour on Lorraine Road. Uh, I know the sheriff is out there quite often, but perhaps after we have the workshop, maybe that might be something that we can look at as far as uh, speeding. Uh, we do need to figure out a solution. Um, so I just wanted to thank them and... Uh, it's a tough, tough issue. Even just going up five miles an hour is a tough issue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Ball. Commissioner Bellamy. Yes, a couple of, a couple of things about the comments um, coming from some of the citizens as far as about the jail. <clears throat> this, this, the jail is moving forward. Um, I think all of us are on board <laughs> with the jail moving forward. Yeah, but we, we do need to call it something else. And I, what is it called? Unused building at the judicial center. The unused building at the judicial center. So we'll, we'll come up with something a little bit more cramped there. But um, I, I meet with the, um, the city of Bradenton in, I think, 45 uh, hour increments as far as um, the mayor and some of his councilmen and women on, on Thursday back to back so we can continue um, to, to move forward. 
with, with that. As far as the comments from Mr. Me from Mr. Meehan um, about that um, 140 some million uh, as far as the surplus or whatever the number was he got, I, I've been forced to look into that and learn, you know, some of the real concerns about that um, because prior to me becoming a county commissioner, um, Mr. Meehan and I, we, he was a soccer coach, and I was a basketball coach at Pelman High. We had you know, relations and communication. We went bike riding um, all the time. And, and, I, and I've looked into it, and the way I understand it, some of those, you know, dollars are already allocated. And I think the real question is, if they are allocated, um, can we maneuver them? And I think the reality of it is, no, we can't. And, and, and the ones that we can't, if we can maneuver, I, I would strongly suggest, like Glenn say, we look at the affordable housing issue or the workforce affordable is, issue and see can we get 10 or $20 million from somewhere so we can actually address this. The caller that called about the housing emergency study, the housing emergency study, I'm not necessarily sure that aligns with our affordable housing um, work session that we have, um, but, it, but, it, but it's close. Um, as far as we, we're we taking um, strides to make sure we identify, you know, action items that we can move that we can move forward on. And even at the resiliency conference, the, the county administrator and myself had a communication about some potential action items that's going to come up. So we, we're all concerned about how homeless and we're all concerned about the housing, the housing rates within the rental and things like that, you know, it, it, it may or may not directly or indirectly affect us, but because we're individuals that um, are just passionate about making sure that Manatee County is the best that it can be, we want to make sure that we you, it's clear to you all that we hear you and we're concerned about it, and we're going to go from there. If that's surplus and we can maneuver, I would want to make sure the maneuvering is where we identify property and we address some affordable housing needs. And he's already talked to me about it. I'm done, Madam, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Pretty well done, Commissioners. It's 1031. We're in recess for 10 minutes.
Okay, we're back. Um, so we're going to go to the consent agenda, then we'll hit items pulled from consent, then we'll move into the regular agenda. Uh, I do want to give everyone a heads up. Several of us up here have a, a midday commitment, so we will be adjourning at 11.45 today to ensure we can make it to our commitment on the, uh, across town there. So let's go with consent. I'll entertain motions to approve the consent agenda minus items 18 and 11. Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Baugh and a second by Commissioner Servia to approve the consent agenda minus items 18 and 11. Commissioner Whitmore, you have yeah, the floor. It, it's 18 number two and number four. four. The rest you can approve. Do that one. Do we, yeah. Isn't it easier? Would you prefer we Okay, just, as long because usually everybody in the back flips out when we do it that way. Okay. okay. Let's just do 18 okay. and 11. I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, though. There are like several parts Other to 18. Items. You're only concerned about part, a few of them. Okay, we'll go to public comment on the consent agenda. Is there anyone who would like to come forward to speak on the consent agenda? Seeing no one, we will go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on today's consent agenda items minus items 18 and 11? Nobody at this time. Okay. Uh, no one's on the board. We'll call the question. All in favor of approving consent, say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously. That is a 5-0 to zero vote uh, minus Satcher and Cruz. Should we go to 18, which yes, was Mr. Chair. Uh, pulled from consent with the, that as the more complicated one, there's only two parts that she. Right. Mr. Wants. Chair, I, I think the one to address would be uh, on item number 18, which is resolution B22-063 with the first item uh, that was pulled being item number two. Item number two is the uh, the initial allocation of part two, the second part of the ARP uh, funds that we expect to receive uh, from the federal government uh, sometime later this year. And we go to Jan Brewer. Sure, I'm not sure what the questions uh, yes, the trying, commissioner had. I'm on trying it. to pull up a thing. If someone in the audio visual can come. Uh, adjust this computer so we can actually use the D drive on it. Um, we came before you, I want to believe it's January, we gave you an overview of what we would spend in phase one and phase two. On February 8th, we brought the first budget amendment. This is the second budget amendment, just planning what we're going to do for those, the entire majority of the grant. Uh, the reason why I want it pulled was because, and I said this at the meeting, um, was because I just want the public to know I'm fine with the list. But stuff like this is very important not to put on consent to me um, because the Village of Parish can see what we're doing, Talavas, stormwater projects. And again, you say it's probably going to be this. But again, I just believe that the public should see where this money, where we've appropriated this money and a little bit of an explanation. That's what I said at our briefing. I mean, I support it. Thank After you, you yeah. Yes, they're trying to pull it up. It's, it's got a, an overall view, and I think it's important now that you brought it up that your viewers at home can see what we're talking about. Because we get complaints all the time. What are you doing with that money? And from what um, Mr. Hopes had told me, uh, we don't have to spend this money till the 20, uh, 2024 or something. This one we don't have to spend by September. Okay. Well, none so of them have to spend by September. This right, is a 70, it's a 39.2 million in yeah. two buckets. Right. This is what we presented in January. The top shows a summary, and then the green is breakdown of each of the sections. Um, so as we go through it, we went ahead and brought the first distribution to you because we've received that funding. We know the grant is, a ma is the maximum of the, of the entire amount, so we're just bringing in that second half. And I believe we told you in January that these projects have to come back before you before they move forward. Right. And is there any big, I mean, and so the public can see that probably from their screens at home where the money is potentially going to be allocated, correct? Yes, and then they can always look back on that meeting that occurred that time, and, and it's a presentation on it. And there is $4 million for broadband, and that, that was a big one that everybody was still asking. I told them from what I'd heard, the prices wasn't as bad as we thought it was, right. and so it's $4 million. And then the moccasin wallow, the parish uh, protective equipment that we use out of our funds. Mm -hmm. So we're reimbursing our taxpayers back, correct? 
at it all? is a reimbursement right. grant. We have to pay for it, and then we receive it back. But yes, it's for those items that are listed specifically right. there. That's all I wanted, and I'll, when um, I'll be prepared to make a motion to approve item number, is it two? Now is the time, Commissioner. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve item number two. 18. Item 18. Oh, well, we still got to talk about number four then. Let's just. Hey, you've got to pull the whole item. We did. We, we, we did. pulled we did. the whole item. No, we did. So, we so did. you have to vote the whole item. Okay. When you're ready to approve. All right. So, so then do you have further questions then about Not the, on that one. So we're ready to pass 18 as a whole? No, I got to do number four now. Okay. So you have further questions. Okay. So number, four, number four. Um, I asked to have this pulled and it wasn't pulled. And um, the reason why I wanted was because of the wordage. It said appropriates 4.5 million. I'm the one that sits on the Gulf Coast Consortium and voted for this 4.5 million and I support it 100%. But we, I know the chair and myself have asked to have a meeting on this and because a certain percent of this is already um, planned, uh, um, in, designed and stuff and we, I, I don't, the reason why I pulled it is says it appropriates 4.5. To me, that means we're going ahead and moving forward with it without having our work session that we had asked, okay. and we haven't had one yet. Am I wrong, Mr. Chair? Hey, may I speak? I want to talk. I, I think the administrators yeah. answer that. This, this, this item only brings the money in for the grant. It only brings the money in. It does not approve the project it doesn't approve the scope of the project it doesn't approve spending the money that will come back to you after we have the the workshop the the process is we receive the money it goes into an account then should you want to move forward with a project you have the funds should you not want to move forward with a project or should you want to change the scope of the project you can authorize us to either amend the scope or give the money back. But if we do not receive the money and put it into account, should you decide to move the project forward, we won't have the money to move the project forward. Hey. So this only, this is only receiving the money, accepting the money and putting it into account, holding it until this board is ready to move forward with a project, either approve it, modify the scope, or reject it. Would it be appropriate to, instead of saying appropriates this uh, grant revenue, da da da, to, to accept. say accept it? Because no. that's what's uh, bothering you. Gotta me. Get with no, that. we have to. The verbiage for the budget amendments you're appropriating into the budget, okay. and and actually this is truly a reimbursement grant, but it's giving you the authority right. to be able to quickly Otherwise, move the through clerk it. Will not allow us to move. Okay, forward. I just wanted to know about the wordage because to me I was afraid you were going to go further without a work session. I would not do that. To okay. You. Right. And, okay, and I'm okay. Would do that to myself. But before we before we do vote, I, I will say that Commissioner Ritmore and I, at least the two of us, maybe more um, do have issues with specific aspects of the design and so we're we don't want the design to continue knowing that there are aspects of that that we, we don't we, agree with because we don't want to spend that money we have every intention of bringing this item before the board in a special meeting to discuss perfect. what you want and what you don't want perfect I think that's our only concern okay. Commissioner Whitmore you want to make a motion I'll make a motion to approve item number 18 seconds so we have a motion by Whitmore and a uh, second by Serbia to approve item 18 from consent. Uh, we'll open this up to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on item number 18 on today's consent agenda? Seeing no one, we'll go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone? Nobody at, nobody at this time. All right, we'll close public comment. Question is called. All in favor of approving item 18 from consent, say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously 6 to 0. Our numbers are improving. We're back up to 6. Um, so item 11 from consent agenda uh, was an item that I placed on the agenda for today. Authorization for the county attorney and the county administrator to have staff work to uh, on a rezone of the downtown Central Library property. Um, the Central Library, the city of Bradenton is where it, it lies. So the, the, uh, the government that we would be requesting the rezone from would be the city of Bradenton. Um, and they have downtown they have these T zoning sections and so classifications and this is the county library is zoned as T5. Uh, the request would be to go to T6 which would be the maximum uh, and that would in 
maximum height, it allow for maximum height and a maximum density on that property. Um, to be clear, all I'm asking for is for us to get it rezoned to its maximum potential so that as we discuss later on, the potential sale of the property and relocation of the library, which I do intend to bring forward uh, at a later date, um, we can have an appraisal done and know at this, with this zoning, you know, with its maximum potential, what could we possibly get for the library? Uh, essentially, I, I don't like walking into meetings without all the, you know, as Commissioner Servius always says, without all the data, and without all the information. So if we do the rezone, then we can get a proper appraisal and know what we have and what we have to work with you know, if we sell it, that those funds from the sale obviously would go towards um, the relocation. Um, personally, if you're curious, I would like to see us relocate it into an underserved community. We don't have a library in Manatee County in an underserved community. Uh, we have a beautiful downtown library. We have one in downtown Palmetto, downtown Bradenton. We have one in downtown Holmes Beach. Uh, we just approved one in Lakewood Ranch, um, which, you know, I'm sure those communities love their libraries, but there's not a library in Samoset. And uh, I think that's something we should, you know, there's not one down 14th Street. I think that's something that we should think about. I hope that we'll think about, and I, I would like us to discuss it when we get to a discussion on relocation. Commissioner Whitmore. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Servi is on the uh, board. It's my item. It is your item. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay. I 100% support possibly in the future looking at relocating the library, especially after attending the resiliency conference. And in 30 years, it's going to be underwater anyway. <laughs> so it would be better to plan it. Again, here's my thing about, well, uh, uh, here's my thing about p process. First of all, it was under the administrator's agenda, which I think it should have been under commissioner's agenda because the administrator brings forward stuff that, uh, that we have set policy on. Now, we've talked about this with the city of Bradenton, Mr. Chair, but we've never had a meeting with it and invited public to have input. The public probably will agree. The only reason why I don't support this today is because I think it should go to a work session and talk about it. I, I agree with everything you're doing today, but I won't support it because it's, it hasn't gone through the public. I don't know about you, but I've gotten emails from librarians, um, uh, people on the Friends of the Libraries have been sending emails, and I said that I was going to ask to pull it so that at least we, we as a board can have a public comment. We did have one with the city of Brainton. Again, I support it. I want us to just put our brakes back a little and put it on the next work session so that the public has input, and then I think you'd get a better buy-in from the public, especially after the data that we've just learned at this conference. Sure, and I fully intend to work session this to death. Um, this is just a rezone. Well, that's so we know what we have. part of it. Yeah. Commissioner Serbia. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Commissioner Whitmore, for pulling this, because I also had requested it be pulled. Um, so uh, at, when I first saw this, I wondered why we are pursuing a rezone when it's on city property. So, But now I understand. It's a request to encourage the city to rezone their property. Um, there's lots of layers to this request, and the first one being zoning. I, I just feel like we have so much to manage within the unincorporated limits of the county. I really don't want to start strategizing on what the city should do. Um, so, so that's number one. Uh, number two, if we're going to relocate our library, it deserves a very big discussion. Okay, we have got to involve the public. Um, we have got to talk about if you want to relocate our library, when and where will it be re relocated to and what will that look like. Um, it's not something that we can do, uh, I think, without a major discussion. I will also say it's important to look at other successful cities, if we want to talk about cities, and most of them have very nice central libraries in them. So there's that. I'm not saying that we should or we shouldn't relocate it, but it is a major decision. And so I'm not willing to support any type of request for encouraging the city to rezone the property at this time. I don't think it's our place. Well, it's certainly our place, it's our property. You're implying in some way, shape, or form, both of you, that there isn't going to be a discussion or that I plan to try to relocate the library without an open discussion and an open process and a workshop. When I've sat here and said three times that I fully intend to workshop this, I said I intend to workshop it to death. I want lots of public comment. I want the public to be engaged in this. 
I don't appreciate you getting up here making statements that uh, imply in any way, shape, or form that I'm trying to do this without public input. It's a rezone from T5 to T6 of property that we own. It is a really simple thing that is being made into a much bigger deal than it is. The order of the board is Bellamy, Bob, Whitmore, Serbia. Commissioner Bellamy. So I, I understand. I, I understand all this, and um, I won't say what I said to the county administrator, but I will apologize to what I said to him when this first came um, out because I just honestly didn't like it um, because I was concerned about it, to be honest with you. And one of the reasons why I was concerned is because when, when you think about a library and then you think about, you know, two of the major issues here in, in Manatee County, and one is affordable housing and then the other one is grade level reading. And when you, when you have uh, one, two, three, maybe four um, elementary schools probably within close proximity of the um, central library and think about the youth agencies and think about how some of the underserved um, utilize the um, library, I, I really went on the defense. I'm just being honest with you. I'm saying what in the bloop is going on here. So listening, lis listening to it, I, I do think you should public um, um, work session it to death. Um, I do know that in our comments we have countless amount of people from the library world that, um, got qu that have questions, that have questions, and maybe we should answer those questions before we grant the, the rezone so we can make sure it's clear. Now, here's what I'm, I, I do think, um, because you said something that uh, kind of perked my ears up as far as you want or you think we should move and have a library in some of the underserved areas. And um, I hope you're listening, Keenan, because we may have some mo momentum here. <laughs> <laughs> we may have some momentum here. And we, we had identified an area you know, over in East Brayden, you know, close close to Wakeland that came up at one time or right off of 27th Street where there was a bunch of property over there. Um, so we can kind of identify, you know, where a library could fit so we can make sure that the underserved and the individuals don't have access to get to the <coughs> library could actually be in walking distance. However... Before I'm willing to move forward on this, I would want to be able to identify land, guarantee dollars, and have legal commitments so we can make sure, right? If we're going to move this library and we're going to say that it's going to, we are going to move it into a underserved area, um, before I would want to move forward, let's identify that, identify the dollars, and make sure that this is just not a public conversation, and then, and I'm not accusing you of that, that's not how you and I do business, it's not a public conversation, and then we're in a situation <coughs> where you have the movement of the library, but then we do not have the movement of the replacement or the relocation of the library. I think we need to um, not only begin with the end in mind, but I think it's more importantly for us to have identified land, identified dollars, and make sure that before we open this can of worm up, because the library world is listening, right? We all, all almost need to have a solution. We almost have, need to have a solution, but that's why you work session it. Right, and, and, and I get it, and I get it, but we know how these things go. <coughs> we know how these things go. So mine would be to pause, and, and if we're gonna go in this, in this direction. I understand the rezone is the first step. I talked with a guy for about an hour yesterday during my lunch period about it and respecting him and, and his position and what could potentially take place. And, and, and I think I am somewhat aware of where this may be going from the, from the, from the city of Bradenton's you know, standpoint and, and your personal. But I do think in order for me to be able to support it and say, hey, we're going to say we're going to move to a – um, underserved area. Let's identify that land. Let's with, within the work session. Let's do that, and then I'll be uh, I'll be a little bit favor of, of, of moving forward support. But I'm not there right now. Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, I think we're getting uh, a little bit further down the road than we need to today. Uh, no one's talked about selling it. No one's talking about yeah. moving it. No one's talking about doing any of that. Um, you know, I mean, I, I realize how. Three of our commissioners perhaps might uh, come up with that theory, but I think for me, and I, I asked this question in my briefing about it, um, 
You know, I, I like libraries. I mean, there, there's been no secret that the chair and I have not agreed on libraries. But that being said, I also think that, number one, the library that we have downtown, I, I've been there several times recently. And I feel like that, um, you know, a, a different, this just me, a different location might be better, more so um, over by 15th. Um, it needs to be a little bigger than what we have uh, at the one where we are now. Uh, and the other thing is, if you look at a downtown area, that's not really the place that a library or a city hall should be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but back in the day, that's where we put them. We, I guess we didn't think about uh, the water and, and how we could really use it more efficiently or the city of Bradenton at the time. And I mean, I get it. But at the same time, all we're talking about is rezoning. And I, I think for me, that just states that we'll be able to tell what it might be worth if we did want to make change. But I'll do whatever the board wants. It, it's, it's not that big of a deal. If, if, it's, if we change the rezoning today, it's not changing the world. It's not selling it. It's not saying we're, we'll even consider moving it down the road after we workshop it. Well, That's not what this it. is all about. But um, you know, I, I think sometimes we get into the weeds a little bit too much when we're talking. We would literally be committed to nothing with the uh, rezone. Commissioner Whitmore, Serbia, Satcher, Hopes. Commissioner Whitmore. And, and I agree. Uh, first of all, our current library is 50,000 square feet, and Lakewood Ranch is going to be 50,000, but 25,000 of its library, and then the upstairs, remember? So literally, our central library is very, very big. Uh, Sarasota has their central library downtown. Uh, Jean Aubrey, my good friend, was the architect that designed that. Uh, explain, okay, so um, Commissioner Van Austinbridge, is the current library T5? And what does T5 mean? That's kind of why I wanted yes. a work so session. T T5 uh, limits the height to nine stories, where T6 would allow it to go to 16 stories. Okay. With, with affordable housing, yeah. uh, if a 25% affordable housing occupancy, it could go to 19 stories. Okay. I understand this T issue now, which is fine. But again, if you, if, if you, if we request that the, the administrator put this on the next work session, talk about it. I do support this, but I don't support the process. I have a lot of people, I mean, you know, we tried to be transparent. Then when, I mean, this means nothing to us, because you're right now I understand what the difference is, but if we could put this on the next work session and then you can put on the next regular meeting, I would feel better. I don't care about the location at the time because I, I want, well, wait a minute, I want our <laughs> professional staff to look at locations. Uh, I never even thought of the Wakeland area. I don't think we should be determining where it should go, but, uh, it, and it needs to at least be what it is now, or may, I don't think it would be that big, truthfully. I think it'll be um, smaller, but it does need to be state of the art. And I know, I, I kept telling everybody they called, a new one is gonna be state of the art, so compared to what we have now. So if you would just do that, I promise you that I am on board, just not the process the way we're doing it. Sure, and I have spoken to Lee Washington, he's, he's aware. Um, and told him, you know, get ready. You may be tasked with a search for a new library location. Right. Um, and I agree with you about state of the art. I think it creates an, a great opportunity for us to build a state of the art media center. And I mean, just thinking of properties that are owned by government, not necessarily this one, but government, Wakeland is a great location. PAL is another great location. Um, but there are two libraries in my district. One is on the beautiful waterfront of downtown Bradenton, and the other is in Holmes Beach. And my district has changed and expanded, and there are a lot of underserved areas in my district now. It extends all the way to the Red Barn, down to the river there. First Street is the new boundary, and that area is, is not served. No one's coming from Rogers Gardens or Ballard all the way across Manatee Avenue to downtown to go to the library. Um, well, not kids, put it that way. Not kids. You know where Rogers is? Um, I know exactly where Rogers is. It's, it's, a, nice. straight, it's a straight walk. I, I know it's a straight walk, but let's be honest. None of those kids are walking all the way down here across you know, east and west, three, you know, six lanes of traffic on Manatee Avenue. Um, at any rate, I'm, I'm trying to put it in a neighborhood that needs it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, sorry, Commissioner Serbia Satcher, Baugh, uh, sorry, Serbia Satcher, Hopes, Baugh, Bellamy. Commissioner Serbia. Yes, thank you. And I appreciate, Mr. Chairman, the discussion. I do. And I just think that this is not the place or the time to move forward and ask the city to rezone property in their jurisdiction. 
I have too many issues that I'm focused on that I need your help with, this board's help with, in District 4. We need to focus on unincorporated Manatee County. If the city wants to initiate a rezone in the city, they can do so. But at this time, for the landowner, for the landowner to initiate a rezone when we don't know what the outcome is going to be, I, I like what Reggie always says, you know, begin with the end in mind. Um, it, I just don't want to waste energy, time, or resources. I don't think that this is appropriate at this time. I think we need to talk about it, so I'm not going to support it. Commissioner Satcher. Who breaks the tie? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just permission to dialogue first with the county attorney. If we were to have a tie vote, would the motion pass or fail? Yeah. It would fail. It's considered to be status quo. Okay. Um, I suspected as much. And... Um, then second question, um, maybe I'll hold off on that one. Um, you know, looking at the players involved, it's not like this is a, a mystery or, or rocket science. Um, you know, we have one commissioner uh, who's not present today. He's in D.C. Uh, a little bit in, I would be curious because he is uh, a big fan of process as well, but he also has made it very clear uh, I think that something like this would be something that he would support. Right. Um, and then you've also got the city of Bradenton. I've heard nothing except that they are um, maybe frustrated, might not be the best word, but um, concerned that they have what should be prime real estate, but that's limited by it being owned by uh, you know, entities that are not paying into their tax base. So they want to revitalize their downtown, make it an area that people want to come to, um, but they don't have the tax base here to do it. So I don't think there's any question where they'll come out. Um, and then you get to the public. That's the, the third player that I see in this. And of course, we want more input from the public, but we're not even the ones making the rezone. I just feel like this is just letting the city know that this is something that the Board of County Commissioners is okay with, and I feel like uh, delaying it is just delaying um, letting them make their final decision after they do hear from, from their voters uh, in the city of Bradenton. Um, and then I'll just say this, that can I just, I just say that I, th I think commissioners should consider, um, you know, we're not able to do any negotiating behind closed doors, right? And uh, so when the chair says he's thinking about where he wants to put something um, and other commissioners aren't objecting to that, and you're going to, I feel like there might be a couple of commissioners here that want to come into that conversation and be considered, um, you might want to throw, you might want to consider voting for what he's asking you to do, even if it wasn't your idea. This wasn't me that put this on the agenda. I didn't ask for it. But uh, that would be my only point. Point. Thank you. Okay, Doctor, Doctor Hopes, would you like to weigh in? Okay. Uh, yes, I, I really would, uh, because uh, Commissioner Survey made a good point. She talked about resources, and I would be hesitant to have a work session on this topic until you know whether or not you can even rezone it, and it even is an option. Uh, you're you're right. It's it's county owned property, but it's in the city of Bradenton. And I'm not yet convinced that it would be an easy rezoning process because you may have people in the city of Bradenton that may not want the library rezoned. And so my suggestion from a process perspective is to uh, at least I would like to see you move forward with a rezone first to see if you can even get it rezoned before you go down this road of, of having a lot of resources expended to identify property, to relocate the library, because quite frankly, if you're not able to get it rezoned, it, it, it may defeat the purpose. So from a process perspective, to limit the amount of resources that goes into what will be a long debate about what to do with the downtown library is know whether or not you even have something marketable 
which would generate enough revenue to even consider moving the library. And I don't think you're going to know that until you know whether or not you can rezone the property. In order to determine your ability to rezone the property, I do believe you have to go through the process. I think you have to go through the application, and then the city and the city council is going to do whatever they're going to do. And, and then it would make more sense to have a, a serious dialogue and a number of work sessions to discuss whether or not you want to surplus the property uh, and, and move it. Uh, with that being said, uh, Commissioner Cruz is on the line, uh, and he has his hand raised well, to I'll, make a I'll, comment, I'll Mr. Chair. The, I'll chair the meeting. Um, so <laughs> I was just telling you. Yeah. Say, Mr. Chair. So um, all commissioners have spoken, uh, and so we will go to Commissioner Cruz now, uh, who is attending the meeting via Zoom. Commissioner Cruz. Hello, hello. I don't have him identified on the line. Well, tell tell Commissioner Cruz to press star six to unmute himself, okay. and he'll unmute himself. Yeah, and if really. anyone chimes in that they're not Commissioner Cruz. I have a dark vo deep well, voice. Well, Forget it. All right, Commissioner Cruz, you are able to speak. I think. You think he's able to speak? Maybe, maybe not. He will. Try it again, call back in again. Commissioner Cruz? Does he have to press star six? Yes, I have two callers with their hands raised. And both callers are able to speak. Come on, Cruz. What's his last number? Well, we will move on down the line, and we'll come back to Commissioner Cruz in just a minute then. So the order of the board is Baugh, Bellamy, and Whitmore. Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, I, I almost took my name off the board. I, I think the main thing is, again, I think what we have here are differences in philosophy and, and trying to do business. Um, and, and I'm not surprised that we have a, a difference in philosophy. I, I would have called it had I um, thought about it. But, you know, I, I certainly would not be in favor of doing anything at this point where we are, um, you know, saying that we're definitely going to do this or we're definitely going to do that. I, I don't think that's what we were looking at here. Um, so, I, again, I think that it's just been blown out of proportion. Difference in philosophy. Some of us like to look at business from the standpoint that we look at options. You can't really know what your options are if you don't look into them. Uh, but that's a, a you know, I, obviously, I, I honor the fact that, uh, you know, that's just, a, uh, I guess, a Republican way of looking at things. But um, anyway, whatever the board wants is fine with me. At this point, okay. So, Thanks. Commissioner Cruz, we're going to unmute you now. He's, he's on now. He's on. Go ahead, Commissioner Cruz. Well, can you guys even hear me on this? We can hear you. We can now. Okay, I pressed star six like fourteen times, so now I understand what all the public's complaining about. Go uh, I kept saying I was unmuted. <laughs> it didn't do any good. Anyway, I just wanted to, to call in real quick on this, if you could all hear me, because as <laughs> Commissioner Satcher pointed out with the, the six people up here, and this is something I've been pretty uh, adamant about us pursuing. And what we need to understand is we're, we're kind of putting the the, heart, the the cart before the horse here. We're not discussing moving a library. That, that's an ancillary conversation that, that can be had another day. And based on how our rezoning goes, this may be a conversation we don't have for 12 months. The, you know, we have to go through the process with the city of Bradenton, just like everyone has to go through the process with us. We do not get any priority or special treatment from city of Bradenton, but it makes sense to determine what we can do. Like Dr. Hope said, because if it turns out that city of Bradenton board says we don't want to rezone that, then we have to assess the value of this property in relation to whether or not we move the library, because obviously we have to make sure it justifies using taxpayer dollars to build a new library and we need to make sure we can achieve those dollars by selling off this parcel. And, and the value of this parcel is going to have a lot to do with what the zoning is. Next Tuesday, we're going to be having a special meeting on affordable housing. One of my actionable items is about the county land banking property and rezoning it to create value for future development. That's exactly what we're doing here. That's what developers do when they come to us 
is determine what they can get their property rezoned for before they go through the effort of putting out their plans. We always talk about not having planned development because it's cost prohibitive. Well, going through work sessions and riling everybody up and starting to do site selection and figure out construction costs of a new library before we determine whether or not it makes sense to move a library is poor process. This is the proper process. All we're doing here is saying, City of Bradenton, can we get to a T6 rezone? That does not commit us to sell the library. It does not commit us to move the library. It simply rezones a piece of property. So we have that in our back pocket. Then we can have proper work sessions and pull real information about what the future of our central library is, which may be to leave it in place with different zoning. So this is the exact proper process. And I think we're trying to dig into this a little too far and create problems where problems don't exist at this stage. I would like to, to see us move forward, put in the application, attempt to get the rezone with City of Bradenton, and then we can start discussing what, if anything, we're going to do with the Central Library. Because that may be months and months down the road. So let's not let's not look too far forward at this stage. All we're asking is for staff to start a process of requesting a rezone from city of Bradenton. Let's see what that rezone results in and then have a discussion about what we plan to do with this library and our entire library system as a whole. That's all. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Cruz, will you be staying on the line to vote on this issue? <laughs> yeah. If, 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 I'm allowed, if I'm allowed to, I will. Uh, county attorney. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Chairman, the rules of procedure do allow you to grant a commissioner request to attend electronically so long as there's a physical quorum present. Are you requesting to attend electronically, Commissioner Cruz? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. So the order of the board then is Bellamy, Whitmore, and Servia will continue through the board, uh, and Mr. Commissioner Cruz will be voting at the appropriate time. Uh, teamwork. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah. One of the things that I, that I like that I heard, right, and um, and I don't really go, you know, party that much. Um, but the, the reality of this is, if it, well, I'm talking about party lines, you say that's oh, oh, maybe a Republican, and, and I don't comment. We all go down those where that doesn't help me win battles or anything like that. So, no need to go down that road. I, I like the comment of a state of the art facility in the underserved community. Okay, so if, if I park there, right? <laughs> if, if, if I park there. And, and I agree with G, what, what G is saying, and, and, and I understand that it's a process. It is kind of ironic that we're talking about process, but I'm not going to go there neither. Process. But the, the, the reality of it is when, <laughs> when things like this come forward and you want to make sure you support one of your colleagues, but you also want to make sure you understand you know, what the end game is, which is what I kind of researched yesterday. Um, with, with phone calls and communicating with people and understanding what the win end game is, is why I said, how can we get that state-of-the-art facility in an, underserved, um, in, in an underserved community? Now, what G's basically saying, part, well, Commissioner Cruz, part of the process is for us to understand value, right? If we can get it rezoned, how much money we can get, but there's nothing that we're talking about now that we're going to say, because we know it's going to be done. The, vo the, the votes are where it is, right? Let's be honest. The votes are where it is. We know it's going to be done. But what I am saying is how we can communicate to the library world, the underserved community, okay, this is something that we are in the process of doing, but our plan is to assure that we get that state-of-art facility in the underserved community. Now, if we're going to sell, are those dollars going to be guaranteed to make sure we get that um, state of our facility in the unserved community? That's the conversation that we probably need to talk about. And here's the reason. Well, I, I don't want to stop business. I don't want to stop moving. But I also want to make sure it's very clear that we have a grade level reading issue out there. And I want to make sure that if we're going to have a state of our facility um, to support Commissioner Van Osterbridge, we put that state of art facility so we can make sure we're impacting that grade level reading. I just want to make sure that conversation is out there and it doesn't slowly digress and we don't get back to it. That's, all, that's the only thing that I'm saying. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure I have people on board with that. 
I may, I may have you on board with that because it's, it's a conversation. But again, I, I am where I am, and, and I'm still going to want to make sure that if we talk it, we walk it. And what I mean by that, you know, everybody's shaking and nodding their head about a state-of-the-art facility in an unnecessary um, community. We know we're talking about East Brayden. We have already identified some of those potential spots. Um, why are we putting it on to say that we want to make sure that we just ask for a rezone? What are we going to do to make sure that we secure land for the next facility? That's just my position on it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, thanks, George, for calling in because uh, uh, I liked a few things you said. So what we're doing today is we're just we're asking to rezone it to T6 so we can see what the value of the land is. Because, I mean, again, the stuff we're getting doesn't explain anything. And I'm going to question it. Everybody, I'm sorry, but that's true. I mean, what you heard just now is not in the agenda. So um, what, we, what we want to do is move forward to see it, it does, we're not committing to anything, but then we would know the value of that property if we decide to move it, which I support moving it, and I support moving it as a central library somewhere else, and I'm not going to say underserved or wherever. I mean, you're talking about Wakeland. Well, Mr. Hopes worked for the school board, and uh, I'm not going to, you know, pay the, the money for that. I mean... You know, I'm sorry, unless we have property somewhere, hopefully we have some property somewhere else in the county that we own that we could build it on, and that would even be better. But, you know, um, so I'm okay with it. I know the citizens don't understand it because it wasn't explained in the agenda at all. And so, again, for those I know many people are watching right now, and who's paying for the rezone? Are we paying for it? Is the city going to uh, charge us for this? And what does it cost to rezone? I have no clue. So that would be kind of nice for budget. And I wouldn't take it out of anywhere except our reserves because that's the only money we can play with, the general commissioner's reserves. So, but anyway, so, so the public hears. All we're doing in it is we're, it's a T5 now. We're going to ask to rezone it to T6 so that we could see if we do that, if the city approves that, so we could see kind of what the value of that property would be for a future library, a future central library. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Servia, you're the last on the board. Okay, thank you. Um, and so as someone who has done land development for over 30 years, let me please offer you my knowledge on this and how transactions take place. So what normally happens is a landowner will decide to sell their land and they list it for sale. And that will initiate buyer's interest. And so when the buyers come out, and, and that's based on the market, which is constantly changing, the buyers, certain buyers will say, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. And somebody gets a contract, okay? So the owner enters into a contract with that person and then begins a phase of due diligence. We see this all the time. Think about Pat Neal, because we see him so often here. He comes before us, he has property zoned A1, he's interested in developing homes, and he says, I'm here today to get a rezone. This is after he's done hours and hours and hours of research on if, he can, if that property is really going to suit him and what zoning he needs. Oftentimes, the contract for purchase is contingent on the rezone, okay? Zoning, I, I would dare to say that probably everyone seated on this board does not know the difference between T5 and T6. It's not simple. How can we predict the market and say, just rezone to T6 because then we're going to get more, for our, more bang for our buck? I don't think that's an accurate statement. So what needs to happen is... You need to go in that order to be most efficient. And again, I come back to fiscal conservatism because it takes money, time, and energy, and resources to pursue something that we don't know is going to work. Okay? I just think that everyone's starting in the middle of a potential process here, and we need to start at the beginning of the process. Uh, so I'm sorry, I, I'm not in favor of rezoning property to predict the market because if anyone could do that, you would see people doing it all the time. It's just not the way business is done. Thank you. Commissioner Baugh. 
Yes, real quick. Uh, you know, I, again, a difference of philosophy. It's a difference in how you do business, how you go about doing business. Uh, for me, and perhaps I'm not the most educated person up here on the board, but I got enough sense to know that downtown doesn't necessarily mean one block from the water. If I was in the city of Bradenton, I think I would be wanting to look at uh, perhaps building um, more tax base for my city, uh, which obviously can be done on property that's close to the water. Second of all, I, you know, Commissioner Bellamy, I, I loved it. Talk it, we don't walk it. I'm sorry. Talk it, we walk it. Right. That is correct. But you've got to crawl before you walk. And that's what I think today is all about. Uh, it's crawling. It, it's, you know, T5, T6. Does it really matter? That's not what we're doing today. We're saying we're going to look at changing the zoning on it. Staff will take it and bring it back to us and make a decision. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate the lesson in land use, but I don't think we really need it today. Uh, but I'm sure that Pat Neal probably appreciated it. Um, so let's move on. I mean, let's, let's get over this. Let's vote. It's for the good of all, including our constituents. Um, Commissioner Bellamy, I totally agree with you. We need to look at a library where it helps the underserved. Right. So, but that's not even a decision to make today. Right. So, but I do agree with that statement. So thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. The order of the board is Bellamy and Cruz. Commissioner Bellamy? Yeah. Being transparent. I don't know the difference between T5 and T6. I didn't either until I started looking into this. Right. And, oh, okay. And and this is this is this is my this is my question. Where we are right now as far as asking staff to look into rezoning. Am I correct? I have it that they were asking them to rezone it to its maximum potential. Okay, but okay, and, Which and is that's T six, right? Kind of simple. But it would have to come back to us. I get it, but here's here's the thing. I mean, maybe two people up here understand the difference between T five and T six, right? I mean, at least we should understand what our potentials are before we we move forward on it. And that's just me. I mean, and if we don't understand it and we deal with it every day, how many people in our community that are concerned about libraries do or do not understand it? So I like what Commissioner Ball is saying as far as the crawl before we, before we walk. Um, and I always like to begin with the end in mind, but in order for me to begin, I have to understand. And, and, and I would want to understand that. And nothing... I'm not taking a shot at anybody. It was very vague, mm -hmm. right? So, okay, when I when we get here, so let's, I thought we were going to tell staff to go and move on it and come back and give us some understanding on all the options as far as rezoning. So you, are, are there are there T one, two, three, four, and fives? Yes, but that lowers your height and lowers your density. Okay, good. Right. They all, so does T stand for tower or, or something like that? I, I really don't know. I, I don't know what T stands for. We. I was on the Bradenton Planning Commission, and I don't know what <laughs> T stands for. <laughs> I was so, on the so, 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 so my, my point is, is to truly crawl before we walk. And as we crawl and we walk and, and we move on to get all of this accomplished, right, one thing I think we need to be, and all of us, you know, talk about, you know, clear understanding and being transparent, at least we should be able to say what T5 and T6. I think we know what the potential benefit is, mm -hmm. right? But I think not only for us to be able to see it, but the individuals that actually research what's going on and that's actually read our agenda items and see things like that, we shouldn't we at least be able to explain to them the differences of what T5 and T6 so they'll have an understanding also? Is, Yes, please. I would just say that I think that the average citizen is more concerned about where are we going to, you know, are we, are we just selling a library and shrinking the library system? No. Are we looking, what are we looking to build and where are we looking to build it? I think that's more of what, the, honestly, the average citizen is concerned about. Not so much, you know, 
what T5 and T6 are, that's more of a concern for like city of Bradenton residents, I would think, and okay. the city council. But but good dialogue because the, the, that terminology is out there, right? And, and individuals that are listening may want to have some understanding of that. And I, and I do think that, that I do. And, and I'm moving a little bit, right? And, and, and here's the reason why I'm moving a little bit. I understand what's going on, all right? I need to find a way, based on what's going on, we get this state of the art facility in the underserved community. That's what that's that's what my that's what my goal is because you can, I, I can guarantee you it's going to move. They have the votes, so now like Commissioner Satchel is basically saying, "Hey, my man, you might want to get on board." Okay, let's get on board and make sure we identify an area and things of that nature right there. I just feel like based on the way where, where I am right now, I want a little bit more understanding, and I didn't really catch the um, lesson that was just given out, to be honest with you. I didn't really understand what all that meant. But I'll research it. I will guarantee you that, sir. I'll, I'll research it. And be, but I know where we're going, and I'm okay with it. State of the art facility. In, in your district, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> got it, I got it. All right. More. Commissioner Cruz, Whitmore, and Satcher is the board. Commissioner Cruz, go ahead. Yeah. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, two, two quick things. One, I don't want to muddy the water about the, the library because this is about a rezone, but I, I will point out, you know, to, to Commissioner Bellamy and some of the other people concerned, you know, I'm fully in support of, of this rezone, and I think I've pretty consistently for the entire time I've been on this board shown that I love our library system. I was the first and one of the more outspoken votes for the full build of the Lakewood Ranch Library, yes, in spite of some people wanting it trimmed down. I always support our library system. I would never approve or vote for anything that sold the central library without a plan in place to rebuild it better someplace else within this community that will literally never happen. I'll say that right here on this call, because I do not think we should be shrinking our library system. And I've, I've been pretty consistent in our, my support of our library system. However, relative to this zoning, just because you rezone something and upzone it to T6, for instance, in this case, doesn't mean someone has to build to it. We're not trying to guess the market 12, 24, 36 months. Dollar. That's a maximum. If you rezone to R3, you could put two houses per acre. You could put one house per acre. It's the maximum allowable. It gives the most options for a future developer. It doesn't set the, the minimum. It sets the maximum. Okay. Every landowner in this county would go out tomorrow and literally just tie up all of our land use meetings, they will go out tomorrow and rezone to the maximum allowable because it's convenient to do so. It allows for more marketable property. We always talk about the cost of development, and that's why we can't get affordable housing. Because to, to Commissioner Servius' point, using a great example, Neal Communities goes out and buys A1, and then has to go through a 12 to 18 month process paying for attorneys and engineers and everyone else to create the zoning to eventually create the development they want. There's a time and a cost to that. And that's what hurts some of the affordability and the development and the rezone of Manatee County, because we stick it to a core group of three, five, seven developers who have the wherewithal and the connections and the capital to do that. Why do we keep making people do that? The reason people keep it A1 is because it keeps the taxes lower because you get taxed on the lower value based on the lower zoning. We do not have that issue here. So we, we're afforded an opportunity to upzoning property ahead of time, give someone an as of right development that they can then come in and bid with assurance of what they can build on this property. If that's the decision we ultimately make down the road. So we're not trying to guess the market. We're just trying to maximize the opportunity for somebody on this property. And in fact, when the time comes, and again, this is down the road, so it's not for discussion today, we can go and say, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to put a deed a deed restriction stipulation here that you go up to the 19 stories because we're going to put a 25% affordable on the deed. We have the ability to frame this parcel, a, a critical piece of the downtown redevelopment of Manatee County and the city of Bradenton ahead of time to help drive development to what the community needs and not just what a developer necessarily wants. So this is, is not doing anything detrimental to the community. This is not guaranteeing a sale of the library. This is just opening up maximum opportunities for utilization of this parcel down the road. And if someone elects to only build six stories or eight stories, I would hate them to do that. But that would be their right, even with a T6. 
So that's why I'm saying let's just move this forward, maximize the options on this parcel, and then down the road we'll determine what the market will bear on this parcel when that time comes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have Whitmore and Satcher on the board, and commissioners, it is 1136. Um, <laughs> okay. Commissioner Whitmore. Mine's real quick. First of all, I still want to know the cost of the rezone. Are we applying? Do we know if the city would um, sometimes, you know, we give others uh, uh, a break. I don't know if the city of Bradenton will. Uh, George, would you, I, I mean, I support this. Would you at least wait till the next regular meeting to vote for it so that the public has time to digest? Literally, our agenda said, authorize the county attorney and the county administrator to have staff work on a rezone of the downtown central library to T6. That's what we had to prepare for the meeting today, us. And so I was just wondering, I, I do support it, but I, uh, I want the public, again, I'm all about process, and I know you are too, to at least have it on the agenda. Now everybody knows the information and vote on it at the next regular meeting. Would you consider that? It's for George, because he's the number four vote. It, well, I, I'm hoping I'm not the number four vote. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded like I was playing all different. But it, it says exactly what we're asking them to do, though. And that's why it was consent, because this is not impacting, other than some potential nominal cost of a straight rezone with the city of Bradenton, this isn't impacting anyone. This isn't saying rezone the property and market it for sale. This is simply saying start a process. And as we know, this process is not quick. These processes of going through a rezone take time. So all we're doing is instructing staff to start working with the city of Bradenton to work toward a rezone. And other than the cost of the rezone, and since we're not doing plan development, we're not putting together you know, engineering work and so forth, we're just making a request from T5 to T6. I, I don't see any reason for delaying it because the conversation internally is going to be had. We we're already getting emails this morning about this. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be public dialogue on this. And the important part of it, again, is what ultimately gets built on that property and what ultimately happens to the library. And that is going to be a much, much bigger discussion. And that is going to be something that's fully open to the public. This just seems to me like a no brainer. That's why it was on consent. And I didn't think twice about being on consent because all we're doing is rezoning, which is something we're talking about on other par parcels of property in the county. Okay. So I, I don't necessarily agree with pushing it just because I don't see the reason to, I think we're just trying to create controversy and, and, and public input where it's not, at this stage necessary because it's not relevant at this stage because we're doing an, an administrative rezone before the bigger topic. And that's when the conversation can and should be had. Okay. I'm all about uh, the process of how we do stuff. So we need to find out from staff for the city of Bradenton, what it's going to cost. Please don't laugh, commissioner Baugh, please. Uh, what a cost of a rezone is. And that is very important. And we do have money in our reserves if, if it costs that. I, <clears throat> after listening to Commissioner Cruz, I am going to support it because just because it goes up to T6 doesn't mean we're going to sell it. And it doesn't mean, and, and you know, in all due respect, there was a comment up here that nobody has said we're going to sell it or no intention. And, and, Commissioner Van Ostenburg just said it about 20,000 times, and we all said that, but I guess the person said he didn't hear him say, yeah, I did. So we know that this is going to happen, but I, um, I will go ahead and approve it because it's going to win, and we need to work together on this. Now we just need to educate the public that this doesn't mean anything right now. I am concerned about the money. Somebody needs to talk to the mayor and the city commission about what the fees would be. I'll try to get us a discount. Um, Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, j I just wanted to, some of the things uh, Commissioner Cruz made this, uh, some of these points, but to put them in a different way, I think ca cash is normally the reason why people don't get their property rezoned before they sell it, and I don't think that's an issue here. Um, so we have, we can easily request it. Um, I think that this zoning, it's like, do you want a $20 bill or a $100 bill? Well, a $100 bill includes the 20 in it times five. And so uh, if someone didn't want to take full advantage of a higher uh, zoning, they wouldn't have to. It's included. Um, and then I just wanted to, maybe it's not my place, um, but people, you know, if it's a real issue that you really believe in, then vote the way you believe. And then if you're 
hey, we're working together and we're negotiating and we're trying to uh, get things moving and we want um, consideration in the future, That's then I don't think it, <laughs> well, let me just say, I don't think it's right to reserve all right to criticize every bit of the pro- of uh, the votes and the process. And uh, you can't criticize and want, or I don't think it's a good position to be in to want to fully criticize everyone and uh, get them to work with you later on when uh, the truth is, you know, do they have to or not? And with that, I'll call the question. Question has been called. All in favor of calling the question. Oh, we need a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of calling the question, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, so the question passes. We'll open this to public comment. Anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on this specific agenda item? Seeing no one, we'll go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on this specific agenda item? We have no callers. We have no callers. We'll close public comment. Uh, all in favor, uh, pass. Oh, sorry, we need a motion. Yeah, we need a motion and a second. I need a motion. We'll vote on closing it first, I think. I need a motion. You need a motion. You I need a motion. You need a motion. Um, I have a motion to approve. A second. Okay, good. <laughs> so we have a second as well. Uh, all in favor of uh, the motion, please say aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? No. Nay. Okay, Madam Chair, it passes by a vote of five to two. Cruz voted Aye. Yes, Cruz voted Aye. I voted Aye. He voted Aye, and it passes by a vote of five to two. This meeting is adjourned until 1.30 for lunch. We're in recess. Until 1.30 for lunch.
Hi, I'm Manatee County Commissioner Kevin Van Austin Bridge, and I represent District 3, which is located in West Bradenton. Welcome to GT Bray Park. As you may have noticed, GT Bray Park has been undergoing extensive renovations. We started at the Little League Complex, and we moved over to softball, and then the football stadium, lastly soccer, and now we're at the Walden Racquet Center. So how is Manatee County keeping up with the demands of the fastest growing sport in America? Let's find out on this episode of Manatee on the Move. Racket centers aren't what they used to be. They aren't just tennis anymore. Pickleball is one of the fastest growing sports in America, and here in Manatee County is no exception. That's why we're adding eight additional pickleball courts to GT Bray Park for a total of 20. Covered playing areas will also be added, allowing for play in inclement weather. When not in use, these covered areas can be utilized for additional activities, such as summer camp. And let's not forget about our tennis lovers. Manatee County is upgrading the clay tennis courts at GT Bray Park with a new underground sprinkler system. And since the new irrigation system will only require the courts to be raked, players will no longer have to wait for the courts to dry, meaning less downtime in between games. In addition to replacing the irrigation system, the county will upgrade four of the existing eight courts, making them USTA regulation, which means Manatee County can now host tournaments. Shaded seating between courts is also being added, and we're upgrading court lighting. New pickleball courts and a major upgrade to the tennis courts at GT Bray Park. These are just some of the ways that Manatee County government and the Board of County Commissioners are improving your quality of life. Hello, I'm County Commissioner Vanessa Ball, and I'm honored to represent District 5 in Manatee County. 
Welcome to the Premier Sports Campus, home to some of the best soccer fields in the state, and soon, way, way more. Because of easy access to I-75, the mall at UTC, our charming Main Street, and thriving neighborhood communities, Lakewood Ranch has quickly become the most populated area of Manatee County, and soon we'll be offering even more to our citizens through new developments taking place at Premier Sports Campus and the land just to the north. On the Premier Sports Campus side, we're in the design stage of a new air-conditioned, multi-purpose, permanent framed soccer tent offering shade for meetings, registration, dining, ceremonies, and gatherings during busy soccer tournament weekends. This project also includes climate-controlled restrooms, new stadium lights, locker rooms for the stadium, parking lot improvements, and a stadium scoreboard. Moving north, our East County General Development Plan calls for a new racket complex scheduled for completion in the spring of 2023. This project features 24 pickleball courts, a small administration office, restrooms, water fountains, lighting, and shade. The new 50,000 square foot East County Library Complex is set to break ground at the end of January, offering modernized access to a world of knowledge for our citizens, visitors, and families. Complete with a rooftop terrace, the East County Library will provide a picturesque view of the Premier Park campus as well as a serene pond. A 25-yard, 10-lane, competitive swimming pool will be the heart of our new aquatic center. Swim a few laps, take a fitness class, or catch some shade or sun while the kids take swimming lessons. And we're not stopping there. Future proposed projects on this site could include additional ponds, an amphitheater, gymnasium, a baseball and softball complex, dog park, a playground, BMX track, basketball and volleyball courts, clay tennis courts, a Manatee County Sheriff's District office and fleet facility, additional green space, and a skate park. By the way, our new East County General Development Plan calls for approximately 280 additional parking spaces in phase one, with up to 500 spaces included in future phases so everyone has a chance to realize what I've known for a long, long time, that District 5, Lakewood Ranch in Manatee County is a great place to live, work, and play. We have already impacted the North River community by adding sidewalks and safety lights to the underserved areas. We're in the process of transforming Washington Park into a community stomping ground. And now, we're reaching new heights at Lincoln Park. Let's dive into the deep end on this episode of Manatee on the Moon. Hello, I'm Commissioner Reggie Bellin, and I'm proud to represent District 2 in Manatee County. By now, you've probably driven by Seen the slide and had a few questions regarding improvements we're making at Lincoln Park. It all starts with the brand new competitive swimming pool, perfect for fitness, swimming meets, and cooling off during the heat of the summer. This project also features a separate zero depth entry kiddie pool with aquatic playground, slide and plunge pool, parking expansion, picnic pavilions, and a locker and a restroom entry plaza that will also house a lifeguard station small party prep area, and a pump house. And we're just scratching the surface. Right around the time we're wrapping up the pool project, we'll begin work on a two-story press box that will stand tall over our additional bleacher upgrades on the home and away side of the football field. In addition to a new scoreboard and fencing, we'll also be adding restrooms to accommodate our athletes and spectators. Friday night lights at Lincoln Park will never look better. To make way for the Aquatic Center, we'll be constructing two brand new basketball courts near the football field. These slip resistant surface courts will feature regulation lighting and fencing and will also include little touches like benches and a chilled water fountain. 
trash cans, and more. With all the enhancements, we're making at Lincoln Park. Accessibility is paramount. That's why we're building a pedestrian bridge to connect Sylvan Oaks with Lincoln Park. And that's what this project is about, building bridges so future generations can enjoy the safety, accessibility, and recreation that this facility will bring to all Manatee County. I'm ready to go. Are you? Make your mark by naming our park on this episode of Manatee on the Move. Hello, I'm Commissioner Misty Servia, and I'm proud to represent District 4 in Manatee County. I'm standing on the future side of Manatee County's newest park. The only problem is, it doesn't have a name. That's why we need your help. Now before we start throwing out names like Parky McParkface or Park Side of the Moon, I think it's important that you know what features and amenities this park will bring to our area. First, location. This new park will be located north of Canaan Elementary, just north of Talavast Road on the west side of Prospect Road. The first thing you'll notice as you pull into the ADA accessible parking lot is the effective use of space for Manatee County's first designated dog park in District 4. This dog park will have separate fenced in areas for both your large and small four-legged friends, offering a safe space for off-leash exercise and socialization while you build a dog-friendly network with your neighbors. Shade structures will give you a break from the Florida sun, and doggy water fountains will keep your pup well hydrated. And your dog won't be the only one blowing off some steam. 
Work on your put-away shot on one of two new pickleball courts that will feature slip-resistant surfaces. Pickleball is one of the fastest growing, easy to learn, and low impact sports in the nation, and we're excited to offer these new facilities to you. After pickleball, cool down by taking a self-guided trip on our new fitness trail. This trail is over half a mile long, and it will be an excellent way to build stamina and add variation to your workout, or offer a scenic and leisurely stroll. Preserving natural wetlands was an important part of the scope of this project as was the addition of public restrooms and the creation of an open amenity lawn area for a variety of activities. Now that we're all familiar with what this park will bring to District 4, it's time for the fun part. Manatee County will be accepting suggestions for the name of our new park. If you have a name in mind, please make your suggestion at mymanatee.org slash name that park. The top suggestions will be selected by District 4's own Citizens Coalition on Growth, and then I will bring them to an upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting to be voted on. The winner will be presented with a proclamation officially naming the new park and have their name written into the pages of Manatee County history. The newest park in Manatee County could have your name all over it. Visit mymanatee.org slash name that park for rules and to make your submission today. Manatee County Animal Services has always done a great job of promoting responsible pet ownership within our family of facilities. And now that family is growing on this paw-inspiring edition of Manatee on the Move. Hello, I'm Carol Whitmore, and I'm proud to represent all of Manatee County as one of your at-large county commissioners. On December 14th of last year, Manatee County Commissioners unanimously approved an agreement with the Bishop Parker Foundation to donate this $18 million Bishop Animal Shelter. This gift includes the old shelter building that was built in 1958, the new 25,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility that was built just two years ago, and nearly 15 acres of land. To say that we're excited is an understatement. Manatee County plans on honoring this gift by incorporating it into our current facilities, initially as an animal intake site. This will ensure that incoming pets are medically cleared before joining our adoptable companion animals. This change will see our surgical operations move to the Bishop's state-of-the-art treatment center that will serve as our primary location for things like x-rays, surgical procedures, and as a place for injured animals to be assessed, diagnosed, and healed. The addition of the Bishop gift will also give both facilities room to breathe for some upcoming and much needed improvements. For now, pet adoptions will take place at the Palmetto facility as we determine what areas of the Bishop can be utilized for that need in the future. The bishops have long recognized Manatee County Animal Services as a champion of animal welfare with a high save rate, and this gift is a testament to that. We welcome the Bishop Parker Foundation's donation of this facility and see it as a turning point in Manatee County's ability to continue to provide every healthy and treatable animal the chance to find a loving and deserving home.
Hello and welcome to Up Close. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. And it's my great pleasure to meet with Dr. Scott Hopes, the Manatee County Administrator. Dr. Hopes, thank you for taking the time to do this today. Thank you, Charles. I know how busy you are, uh, but take time out to discuss what the Manatee County is doing, the leadership that you're providing, and the many great things that are happening throughout the county is, is a great benefit to the citizens. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. So if I may, I'd like to start out and give you a little background about Dr. Hopes. He has a wide and varied history, and I want to read some of the highlights of his accomplishments. Dr. Hopes is an experienced international chief executive officer. He's an educator, extraordinary leader in government, education, and healthcare, experienced chief operating officer, public, private board chairman and board member, elected official and successful entrepreneur with a demonstrated history of leadership working in healthcare, higher education, K through 12 education, and local, state, national, and international governments, as well as Fortune 500 companies. Now, I can continue to go on with uh, Dr. Hopes and his many accomplishments, but uh, suffice to say that it's wide and very, and he brings all of this background to Manatee County government to help. So Dr. Hopes, one of the great things about your accomplishments is that the fact you've been here less than a year. Uh, I think April uh, 1st. April Fool's Day. And you, you hit the ground running because immediately as you began your position, um, Piney Point uh, developed into what could have been a catastrophe. But uh, you hit the ground running on that. You pulled state, federal uh, resources together to help solve the situation. Well, and I'll, and I'll tell you, <clears throat> because literally it was the, the first few hours of me taking over at that time as the, the interim or the acting uh, right. county administrator, uh, you, in hindsight, you could not have uh, strategized a better opportunity to get introduced to your new staff and leadership uh, than that uh, real life exercise in emergency preparedness and an activation of all the resources of local government to to mitigate which was a, a pending and probable uh, disaster north of the river. And, and, and it could have been. Um, but you're working with the state at, and at the federal level, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, uh, kind of mitigated the potential damage that was there. But one of the things that clearly um, your experience and background helped was the fact of working with the legislature um, for them to come up with funding to help solve the problem. Um, your cooperation, your insight into working with the state help raise that funding so this problem can be solved once and for all. Yeah, and what, what was interesting is, is obviously with, with my background with the legislature and, 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 and leadership uh, as, as well as uh, the governor's office and, and the staff is that we, we engaged the governor in, in, in the very beginning. Uh, that was one of the first calls uh, that I made uh, to get that assistance. <laughs> in anticipation of needing it. Uh, and, and obviously it, it proved to be the right call because as you know, within 24 hours, uh, it, Potty Point actually did breach. Uh, and the governor had already mobilized the assets of the state government. Uh, the uh, National Guard was activated to bring in equipment with Chinook head helicopters and, and things like that. And, and the governor himself on, on Easter Sunday morning uh, met with me and, and some of county leadership uh, at the EOC. And I, I believe it's because of that early engagement with uh, Congressman Vern Buchanan uh, and, and the Army Corps and the EPA and DEP and the governor's office and, and, and our local legislative delegation were right there with me. Uh, I, I, I have told many people since that, uh, that legislative session last year 
uh, in, in my more than 30 years working in Tallahassee, it was the easiest hundred million dollars <laughs> I ever got out of the legislature. <laughs> and uh, it was was one trip up there. And as you know, the Capitol was pretty, pretty, pretty much off bounds to the public right. because it was, you know, at the height of the COVID uh, pandemic. And so I remember, you know, being summoned to Tallahassee and and had to had to fly up there late in the afternoon and being escorted into a a ghost town of a capital to go before a a, a committee of the House uh, and and the DEP secretary at the time, Secretary uh, Valenstein, uh, kind of laid the foundation, and and then I came in and and the next thing you know before. You know the the legislative session was finalized. We we secured a hundred million dollars in amazing. the the initial funding to ensure that we were on a path to permanently close. And as the governor has stated, Governor DeSantis to write the final chapter uh, in the book of Piney Point. And and I want to talk a little bit more about Piney Point as we get through this discussion. Um, but your leadership and understanding of the process mm -hmm. during this whole thing really helped mitigate the situation and, and find out efforts to help solve it. And that was critical. But if that wasn't enough, sir, you know, there were other issues that kept popping up that as the county administrator you had to deal with. Because it wasn't too long after that that Manji County uh, started to experience the red tide effects again. again it was a situation that required not only understanding, leadership, but a purpose to help solve this. Uh, there were no shortage of, uh, of uh, events that were sort of thrown my way, but uh, we, did, we did have uh, red tide, and, and preceding red tide, we had the macroalgae bloom uh, that, that sort of uh, you know, may have been a precipitating factor. So, so we had these environmental effects uh, that that were 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 cropping up, and of course, many people still remember uh, a few years ago when red tide devastated. Sure. You know, our our tourist industry on the beaches and and our restaurants and and the like, and so that again was an opportunity to to mobilize resources and and I think we did a, an extremely effective job Thank at you. attacking uh, red tide from the land sea and air uh, some of the experiences of Piney Point led to me actually using the emergency authority to implement a college interns plan uh, for a drone fleet for Manatee County government. Uh, and when I was attending board meetings to assess whether or not I felt I personally could be successful as county administrator, when uh, Manatee County interns, that, that, that class uh, of college interns presented their projects, mm -hmm. one young man presented his project was mm -hmm. an entire business plan and operating plan for a drone service. <laughs> And, and after getting the first four days of invoices for the drone service for Piney Point, I, I asked my staff, I said, pull that, pull that, that student, so I may say kid, but pull, pull that student's uh, proposal for a drone fleet, reviewed it and implemented it. And, and, and it, that was one of those things that we learned quickly from the Piney Point experience, which proved invaluable when red tide was approaching because we were able to send out the drone fleet on a daily basis Jeez. to monitor, uh, in addition with the DEP data, to look at where where we were and what we needed to do to mitigate it. Uh, and I think by all accounts, uh, Manatee County government did an extremely effective job at, at really attacking uh, red tide uh, both before it reached our shores uh, and then once it, it yeah. reached our shores. In fact, we were so effective that we actually mobilized our resources on Longboat Key, right. not just the Manatee County portion of Longboat Key, but we received authorization to, to address 
long, uh, the effects of, of red tide on Sarasota County's portion of Longboat Key. And, and that's like just forward thinking. There's you know, cooperation between uh, different municipalities to make mm-hmm. sure that whatever the situation is, working together, you can help solve it. You know, it, it, it's really all about uh, preparation, uh, collaboration, coordination, and really communication. And, uh, and, and I think we developed a pretty effective approach. And, and very much so, and I think <clears throat> you've been recognized for that, sir. Um, but right after the red tide and during the process, uh, there were other things going on because you right, moved right into the budget session, yes. uh, the consideration. And, and, and I want to take some time to talk about the budget mm-hmm. because it's very significant um, this year and because there's, there's some significant changes in the budget right. uh, that we want to talk about. But coming out of the red tide situation and other things, meeting with your uh, uh Uh, staff uh, moving right into the budget and the county commission to see how best this budget can move forward. And if I may, sir, um, the total annual budget for coming up is $2.2 billion, is that correct? Yes. That's a significant amount of, of, of funding that's available. And almost $923 million in net spend. Yes. So nearly a billion dollars in net spending out of that billion budget. dollars. I mean that's yeah. that's significant, and we want to go into where some of that spending is going, mm-hmm. uh, because through your vision, there's significant things that are happening in a wide variety of aspects. And if I may, but before I get too far ahead, not only is the budget almost a billion dollars, you also, for the first time since for years have reduced the property tax. Yes. And that's that's significant. And and what was that, a 4.7% uh, uh, decrease? What was the budget? Uh, the, uh, the, the, the decrease in the, the millage was 0.2 mills. Which was which significant. Was significant. It was significant. And I think, I think, I think that was a, that may have been a test uh, of, of my stamina, so to speak. <laughs> Because that was after the budget had been developed, uh, and and it was somewhat of a curveball that the commissioners threw, uh, and I think many were probably surprised that that staff and I were able to figure out how, after fully funding their level one and level two priorities, that that we were able to deliver to them a budget which not only hit their their target but exceeded their expectations for a a tax cut to property owners in Manatee County. And anytime you're exceeding expectations, that's always a good thing. It is. I mean I I, I will tell you I went through a 24 hour period where I was not happy with my uh, collective bosses. Um, but uh, once I once I came down uh, from that uh, initial reaction and was able to actually think through it uh, and, and identify a, a pathway to deliver that ca- tax cut. Right. Uh, I, I, uh, I was somewhat pleased with myself, I have to say. <laughs> well, good for you because, it, I mean, it's a big step you know, to be able to reduce that and, ha- and still have that net but net spending still at, at such a high. Well, and, and, and as as we begin to talk about the budget, you know, keep in mind, you know, I I took the helm of Manti County government on April first. By April first of each year, a majority of the budget's already put into place. That's right. And, and so, in my early conversations, while I was assessing the likelihood of me to be successful in this job. I, I gained an understanding from a, a majority of the commissioners, you know, what their aspirations were for for delivering on their campaign commitments, uh, what their priorities were uh, with regards to capital improvements uh, to Manatee County. And so literally, to the credit of, of the staff, I, I engaged in really rewriting the budget that had already been written 
uh, up to that point uh, in order to incorporate the vision and priorities of, of the commissioners in the budget, which is the process I think is appropriate because the taxpayers and, and the electorate uh, elected the commissioners uh, to, 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 to create the Manatee County that the people would like to see. And unless you incorporate that into the budget, it's not going to happen. That's true. And, and you have a, a really uh, terrific uh, uh, finance manager with uh, uh, Deputy uh, uh, Jan Administrator Brewer. Jan Brewer. Yes, yes. Uh, and very thorough, detail-oriented, mm -hmm. and who pretty much can answer any question anybody throws and, at her. She has an exceptional, you know, financial mind and operational uh, insight, uh, and and she quickly, she quickly became, you know, my my really right hand resource, and and was the first person who I I elevated uh, to the level of deputy county administrator. Sir, if I may, I want to take a moment to talk about. Uh, the CIP, mm -hmm. which uh, in this budget is significant. Uh, for those people watching, the CIP is a capital improvement plan. Right. And uh, it, it, it's a long-term plan. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, detail. It requires a lot of uh, information as you're putting that together. Yeah. But this year alone, you're in investing $1.1 billion in infrastructure, public safety, parks, and the environment. And we'll get into the detail in each one of those categories in a moment. But that's significant. Yeah, the, 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 we write a five-year capital improvement plan, and it's a rolling five years. And so this capital improvement plan, which was implemented this fiscal year, is a, is a $1.1 billion capital improvement, the largest CIP in the history of Manatee County. Um, and and the the critical importance of it is that when you you look back at the past 10, 15 years and, and when you look at how Manatee County reacted to the recession, uh, there were about 300 layoffs uh, mm -hmm. or, or you know uh, uh, you know staff reduction. The, the departments were all consolidated uh, to, to save money and expenditures, and capital improvement plans and budgets shrunk. Uh, but, but what appeared to have occurred is when the economy started growing again and the population started growing, Manatee County didn't pivot. And, and so... Um, there was a different mindset, uh, right. and, and and so it was almost like a stagnation, and and so what what needed to occur through the budget is to play some catch up. Uh, you know, any you know, all of us e experience the 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 traffic and congestion uh, right. that is a result of 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 this population growth, and and so. The, the critical importance of a, a new strategy for the capital improvement plan to ensure that we adequately invest in infrastructure, in public safety, uh, in the environment, in parks, was critical. I'm a firm believer that if you don't have a plan, it's really hard to get to where you want to end up. Very, uh, very much so. And, and, and the CIP and the budget is the the initial pathway uh, to ensure that you're you're moving in the right direction. And if I may, sir, let me just share some of these figures with you, and, and, and for your comments, three hundred and fifty million dollar investment in transportation mm -hmm. projects, eighty million dollars in parks, thirty nine in public safety, significant. Significant investment uh, and uh, across you know the next few years as you go forward, mm -hmm. but one of the things that's clearly you know, and it's on everybody's mind is transportation. Yes, and you've looked at transportation very intently to see how best those dollars can be used, and you've looked at the countywide to see what roads need that. And if I may, you're going to widen Lorraine Road, Upper Manatee, which is really needed. 
uh, expand Erie and Moccasin Wallow, and then improvements to 59th, 75th Street, and upgrades to 63rd Avenue. That's a that's countywide. That's the beginning, <laughs> and that's just right, the beginning. Right. And we'll talk about you know your yeah. projected uh, mm -hmm. transportation thing, but that's a countywide investment uh, yes. throughout all of Manatee County, which is you know, really significant. Um, you've pointed out on many occasions that Manatee County is a place that you should feel great about living in, great about playing in, working in and having a home. There's a lot of features that you're bringing to the table, sir, that are adding to that uh, aura of living in Manatee County. Because you need it to be on people's minds. I want to live in Manatee County. Uh, w without a doubt. Uh, you know, as, as you know, I spent, uh, you know, four years, I think four years plus on the school board. Uh, and as chair, Manatee County, and as chairman of the school board, and and uh, uh, and, and and really begin to work hard at, at 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 helping to contribute, making it you know the number one school district in the state of Florida, uh, so that all these people have an opportunity to raise a family and educate their children. Right. Uh, and prior to that, as you know, I was on the board of trustees of the University of South Florida system for nearly Correct. five years. So if you take infrastructure and you, and you take transportation, uh, you know I got my first dose with the school school buses. Uh, That's true. You know because they got to they got to move around, uh, and and so like Moccasin Wallow and Erie Road, it was evident because as chairman, you know we were we were building two brand new schools, a high school on Erie and an elementary school on Moxon Wallow. And I remember going out there and looking around and it's like, you know, you had a, an orange grove uh, next to, to, to one construction site and, 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 and fields and agriculture around the others. But you also could tell that, that there were things that were getting ready to happen from, from a community growth perspective and right. neighborhoods, Moccasin Wallow is a hurricane evacuation route. And it was a little two-lane road. That's true. And, 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 and we were putting in an elementary school there, and, and, and it was evident, uh, without me being engaged in the, in the county planning process, that, that things were going to happen. I remember having a ca campaign sign uh, in an orange grove, which is now houses. And it wasn't that <laughs> long ago. I mean, I ran for, I ran for re-election in 2018. Um, and and so these these investments in transportation, you know, were were critical to get moving, uh, and 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 that's the other aspect of it. I I was surprised to find that there were road projects that were uh, budgeted, <laughs> funded, and approved, but had not been moving. Moccasin Wall was one. Uh, and, and a lot of that had to do with you had to acquire property to right. widen the road. Uh, and, and there had been a, a, an attitude, let's say, about giving people years of opportunity to decide whether or not they wanted to sell property to widen the road. I, there's a reason why government has eminent domain. Right. And uh, I quickly got with the general counsel and we came up with a different approach mm -hmm. to determining what was important for a community uh, and to sort of make it clear that uh, we were going to put community first while respecting individual rights and, and, and property and values of property. And, and, and I'm happy to say in this less than one year period of time, uh, we have acquired uh, tens, if not hundreds, of parcels of property okay. to be able to to Expand. begin and complete these road projects. And and Moccasin Wallow uh, was was a critical one where I personally got involved in the negotiations for the most critical piece. Um, on the uh, the corner of Moxon Wallow and 301, um, and and I I gained a new friendship with Mr. Stuart Chen, uh, and 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 he and I met, and I met with his lovely wife and sister, uh, and we came to terms, and we acquired that last critical parcel uh, a, a couple of months ago, and uh, Moxon Wallow is is now. 
you know, under construction for widening it. But um, it's, it's a, a fascinating process that one goes through to contribute to the infrastructure needs and demands of a community as growing as rapidly as is Manatee County. And a lot of that is just forward thinking, you know, thinking what's best for the community. It's a matter of building partnerships. It's a thing of cooperation with people and building a, and, and, and growing, nurturing, you know, that partnership. So it's the benefit goes to the count. Partnerships and relationships and, and also motivating, you know, a, a lot of people and personalities to, to kind of move in the same direction. So, Dr. Hopes, you know, transportation, a key element in, in you know, people's quality of life. But another big aspect and that you've been working on, and I want to hear all the details about it, is parks and recreation. Yes. Uh, parks and recreation is something that everybody wants to be involved in. They always want this new ball field or this light something put in it. Tell us a little bit about the parks and recreation growth, because I can tell you right now, you've got the premier sports complex, yeah. which is, you know, a highlight in any community. Yeah. But you know, here in Manatee County, it's truly a highlight. But it, that's not just it. You, you're working GT Bray. You've gotten more facilities that you're building. So give us that kind of overview, if you could. Uh, for parks and rec, yeah, and the you know, investment. you you've got you have the the eastern county that's rapidly growing, uh, and and Premier is an example of that. But Premier is very unique. That is it that is, is a, uh, a a a highlight really of the region and the southeast United States holding uh, uh, national and international events. And so, if you you know, uh, Premier out in Lakewood Ranch. Uh, we're we're well on our way to begin construction of an aquatic aquatics facility. Right. With, with a, uh, I think it's a ten lane competitive pool. Uh, we currently have I think twenty two soccer fields, uh, which we're we're adding lighting to on a regular basis, and there'll be locker rooms under construction. Mm. The library is already under construction. You know, nearly uh, fifty thousand square feet. Wow. Uh, and and so that's that's rapidly expanding. Uh, folks out in the western part of the county with GT Bray, uh, GT Bray, uh, you know, undercover pickleball courts that's and great. and clay tennis courts with with underground you know watering systems, uh, improvements to the pool, uh, you know, and and uh, John Marble Park. Uh, with a, a new gymnasium, which we have too few of, uh, but but uh, the uh, we're going to need to renovate the uh, uh, the 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 east uh, southeast pool uh, mm -hmm. in that area. So you know one of the things that I, I I remind people of the the cost of development is in the preservation and protection of the environment. And Perfect. that includes parks and Absolutely. green spaces. Uh, we uh, have one parcel. We're getting ready to receive a second parcel next to it in Parish for a Parish Central Park, uh, nice. which Parish does not have a county park. Not yet. Uh, uh, we have expanded soccer fields at Buffalo Creek in that area, uh, and and are looking to expand that even further. We're looking at additional soccer fields uh, out east in, in working with, uh, with families who are interested in, in, in contributing uh, to that. Uh, improvements uh, on the beach. If you look at what we're doing with Coquina Key right. and, and the, uh, the, the porous parking lot where it's a concrete parking lot, but the water flows through the concrete into collection so that you no longer have that flooding in the, in the parking. So massive improvements to Coquina Park, uh, the Coquina North and Coquina South boat ramps. Uh, and so, look, you know, we, we, we have to provide safe places for, for families to play right. uh, and, and, and for children. Our trail system, uh, where we've got federal funding requests in, to, to continue to expand our, our, our trail system. You, you look at what we've done uh, uh, in Robinson Preserve. Robin, and, and, a beautiful I mean, place. You know, we have, we have a, a beautiful collection 
of parks and, and environmental preserves uh, for, for families to enjoy the outdoors. Uh, we just yesterday, uh, or is it yesterday the day before, I think it was yesterday, we took back uh, full possession of the Rye Preserve. Huh. Uh, it had been uh, utilized by the Sheriff's Youth Ranch for uh, family foster care, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is, is no longer provided for in the legislature. So, so that had been somewhat dormant uh, for a couple of years, and I, I made the very difficult decision of, of terminating that license that agreement with the uh, uh, Sheriff's Youth Ranch, which is not even local, it's, it's you know, out of North Florida. Uh, and and uh, through a, a rigorous process. Right. So, so that will be turned into a very unique uh, a park for both families and other events, and we're working uh, to provide an opportunity for Foundation of Dreams Perfect. to have their Perfect. their 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 youth camps for special needs children year round, and and so uh, you know we're we're on the move in that area, uh, so people have a a number of places to go to kind of refresh and and enjoy. The, the beauty that this this part of Florida has to offer uh, right here in Manatee County. And, and one thing, sir, and I know you briefly mentioned it, the other thing that the Manatee County should be very proud of is the fact of the Lincoln Park Pool. Oh, that, I, and is, I'm glad you brought that up. Which because, is on <clears throat> the horizon. Right, when, 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 you know, because that, that was even a focal point for the school board uh, in, 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 in working through that. As you know, the school district has a, a middle school right across the street. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, 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 you know, I've been out there a number of times throughout that construction. But, but we've had a number of areas that, that really were underserved with, with, with investment in both the infrastructure and parks, um, you know, up in the the Palmetto area mm -hmm. and Memphis and, and the like, we're putting in sidewalks and, and road improvements, uh, things that, uh, you know, are, are sorely needed. So any of our residents in that area uh, are, 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 are aware of the investment the county's making, and they're part of our community. And, and right. I'm looking forward to the opening of that park. That's one heck of a water slide that, uh, that is <laughs> part of that aquatics facility. It is. I mean, <laughs> as you drive by it, it's pretty impressive. It is. It is. So, sir, we want to move on a little bit uh, and, and talk about things. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned, and, and this is something that the county should be very proud of, is the line of credits that uh, the county is going to apply for. Right. Not only are you, and I believe the the number is 130 million. Yeah, we did. We did. Uh, I think it was three separate tranches. So we did uh, two 40 million dollar uh, lines of credit, and then an additional 50 million line of credit for the utilities. And and the the reason for that is we in in order to expedite getting all these projects. Uh, moving, uh, I felt that the best strategy was to get get these projects into design and right. engineering uh, before we go out and do long term bond funding uh, to 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 get these projects completed, and and so you you look at the situation where we're all competing for resources, we're competing for talent, you know, uh, construction firms, uh, the like, and 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 the 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 bond markets are good right now, but the problem is when you go out and you bond for long term debt you have a spend requirement. And so if the projects aren't ready to go because you haven't designed them and engineered them, then you've got to spend all that time with designing and engineering. And, and because of the low cost of money, uh, we were able to, to basically get this you know, $130 million of a credit line, which we started drawing immediately, at 0.47% at interest. 
you know, and so anybody that's borrowed money for a home or, or a business or something like that knows y y y that's, that's really like free money. But what it did is it allowed us to accelerate getting projects moving. And, and, and so I'm really pleased with how well that strategy has worked. It also gave us the opportunity to go into it having a, a, a more reliable cost estimate for these projects. And so we've been watching the bar, bond markets, markets and, and our, our bond consultants, financial consultants, have been watching it you know, daily, but definitely weekly, so that we can identify the right time to move forward with those bonds. Because it takes about three months, mm -hmm. you know, if you're well organized, to move towards that, that permanent long-term debt. And so we're nearing that point because we want to get in there before those bond rates go up because right now it, 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 it's extremely affordable. And we've been very conservative with our debt capacity. The other thing that I might note is that the, the county had amassed substantial stabilization funds and reserves. Mm -hmm. And so we, we initially, with the budget, did a pretty good sweep of those funds to invest them in these projects to get them moving as well. Uh, and, and, so and you're so covering all bases. We are, and, 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 and I, I was comfortable with the feedback from, from Deputy County Administrator and CFO Jan Brewer and others that, that, that I felt, and I think people are going to be surprised, that from what I was seeing in the community with regards to construction, real estate values, right. that, that, that it was worth that moderate risk to spend down those reserves, still maintaining the state maximum, you right. know, of 20%. So we have solid reserves, hundreds of millions of dollars in reserves still, but we were able to take that money that was sitting there and, and, and not being translated into infrastructure in the community and right. parks and pools and things like that to, to get it to where it belongs, which is to the benefit of the taxpayers and the residents of Manatee County. And, and I would say, sir, that, you know, working with your county commission, you've done an extraordinary job of shifting that, to making sure that that funding is going to the specific things yep. that need the work. Now, sir, if I may, uh, I want to take a moment to talk about the workforce for Manatee County mm -hmm. Government. You have a very talented, and, and uh, it's about 2,000 people, uh, county employees, very talented. But you do have some openings. Sure. And I think in today's paper, uh, there's an article about so many people who have already put in applications. Uh, you're having another job fair. Um, you know, why is that important to continue to reach out and develop uh, your county employees? Well, you know, as, 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 as the, the county continues to grow, the demands for services grow. Uh, record number of building permits. It takes staff to issue those permits and, and process those applications. And as I said, we're competing for the workforce. And you, you've known me for a number of years. I'm a pretty competitive guy. Uh, the, the first job uh, fair that we had at the convention center, I think we made o over 80 offers uh, for employment on the spot. Uh, uh, I would say it was about a month ago. We were right around... 290, pushing 300 vacancies. Now, keep in mind, we, 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 we added over 140 new FTEs in order to be able to do all this work and meet the needs of, of, of a rapidly growing community. Uh, and I got a report, I get a report on Fridays, and I think we were down to about 240-something. Okay. So we filled we filled in a month or a little over a month. We 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 filled you know nearly fifty positions, and we we've been successful as as people go on to other opportunities. You know we've been successful you know in replacing them. But we're all competing for for talent, um, and uh, and I think the full complement. If we were fully staffed, we're pushing about twenty two hundred FTS. And I think that's terrific. Um, we're kind of winding down a little bit, but I have several other questions. I want to give you the opportunity to respond to those. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the, the most important things, and again, you've spoken on this many times, you have great people working with you, is economic development. Yes. Um, 
And if we could, let's combine that discussion along with the redevelopment mm -hmm. accomplishment as well. Because they kind of go hand in hand. You want new companies coming in, but there's a lot of companies that need to be redeveloped. As, as I've said, you know, in, in, in how I view my role with Manatee County and working with the commission is, is to make Manatee County the number one place in the southeast United States for people to move to, to start a business, right. grow a business, uh, and, 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 and raise a family, educate a family, and, and as we talked about, play. And so I, I smile because, you know, I've got a, a pretty strong international business background. I've, I've worked with some of the, the best government organizations on economic development. I've uh, spent a tremendous amount of time with Enterprise Ireland, huh? uh, around the world, actually. And, and th this is the funnest part. Look, I I'm having a ball. I mean, this is the hardest job I've had. You know, I, I have very little time to, to, to kind of like just sort of relax and enjoy this wonderful environment. But, but, but I'm having a lot of fun. But I will say I thoroughly enjoy the economic development, redevelopment aspects. I enjoy working with companies to, to make it easier right for them to do business in Manatee County, for them to grow their business, uh, and, and, and for the county to help invest in their businesses. Um, and so uh, you, you're probably aware of some of the, the hallmarks. I mean, the, 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 the sort of last mile Amazon facility on Talabast. Tremendous. Tremendous. Uh, I had commissioners that were upset with me you know, because they didn't know about it and it's built. Well, that's part of being competitive uh, in, 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 in that economic development environment right. because these national and international companies have options of where they want to go and do business. And, and, and many of these, these, these deals, so to speak, are, are, are sort of secret and, and the legislature allows that, you know, until they're being rolled out. And so, and, and I think that's important from, <clears throat> from a county perspective is to look countywide. Yep. I mean, it, this isn't just, you know, one company. These are companies with national and international impact. Yeah. And, and that's the sort of business that you want to bring to Manatee County. Yeah. And also, you know, uh, the county has been really involved in helping to develop light industrial yes. as, as well. Yes. Uh, and, and that's countywide uh, as well, which is important. It is. You know, we have we have the Southwest TIF right. uh, that 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 allocates uh, a share of already collected tax dollars uh, that are generated from all the new economic development in that area to be able to reinvest in in, in new businesses and existing businesses. Uh, you know, we've got a, a a both it's both a manufacturer of custom wheels, uh, as well as a large warehousing and distributorship uh, down in that, that Talavast uh, uh, area in the Southwest TIF that, that just dramatically expanded their operation uh, and had the opportunity to go to their, their, their ribbon cutting. Uh, their first watch, their their uh, corporate headquarters right. uh, here in Manatee County had that ribbon cutting. Uh, uh, Fifth Third Bank is expanding with with new branches in the county. Exactly of right. course, Amazon's uh, facility. We've got a couple of really massive, exciting projects that 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 we've been working on. For, for this past year, and I've actively been working on the past six months that are coming very close to, to being closed, which will, one of them is uh, around 2,000 new jobs. Wow. Uh, another one is, is about 2,200 uh, new high paying jobs. Excellent. Uh, along with uh, those two projects alone, are looking at about combined about four hundred and fifty million dollars <laughs> in capital investment in new buildings. That's fantastic, and, and that's that's that is just a small portion. It it, it I am amazed at how word is getting out uh, of the national and international companies that want to do business in Manatee County. That that I I I, I and the EDC are partnering right. with and meeting with these companies weekly. And clearly, sir, one of the key things is uh, uh, businesses continue to develop, more people are coming here to work, 
uh, jobs are going to become available. One of the key things, and you've been involved with this very closely, is workforce affordable housing. Yes. And um, just recently, within the last day or so, um, there was the opening of a of, of a affordable housing place right here in the Sandpiper. I think Sandpiper mm-hmm. uh, was the thing. yeah. And everybody there said, "Well, we need more of yes. these. We yes. need more of these because we have people who are working. We have people, teachers, police officers, nurses. These are all people that can that need that affordable housing. So that's a big effort on the county as well yes. uh, to kind of move forward on that." So it's a huge effort. Uh, you know, many people may not know, but I mean, the first company I ever started when I was 16 years old in Houston, Texas, was a construction company. <laughs> uh, literally built houses for U.S. homes um, back in the, uh, the 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 mid 70s, uh, and 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 so with all this growth, I mean, anybody knows. I mean, the supply's not there. Right. The supply's not there regardless of how much money you, you really have to spend on housing. But it's a problem that we experienced when I was on the school board, you yes. know, a, a affordable housing for the, the workforce, whether it's bus drivers, teachers, uh, cafeteria workers. Same thing with Manatee County government. You know, we're trying to recruit talent from around the country. They have to have a place to live. Yeah. And, and so one of the things that we're doing as, as Manatee County government, we're leveraging the, the dollars we get from the feds through HUD and other yes. programs. But more importantly, uh, we embarked uh, upon my arrival on a process of, of doing a comprehensive inventory of all county-owned property and, and real idea. estate. And, and rather than immediately surplusing it, we are identifying those properties to determine the best value and best contribution to the community. And much of that is, is for workforce housing. And so we are, we are going through our own rezoning process so those county-owned properties can then be surplused or we can use it to partner with entities who are committed to Perfect. build workforce housing, not just for rental workforce housing, but more importantly, for, for, for housing that people can get into, they can purchase and, and maintain it as, as affordable uh, you know, well into the future. And, and so there will be some very exciting projects that will be rolled out uh, very shortly. But we still continue to, to invest and deploy dollars so entrepreneurs uh, can build basically your one-off uh, affordable uh, entry homes. And, and you have tremendous support from your Board of County Commissioners mm-hmm. uh, that want to move forward and see the support uh, opportunities for affordable and workforce housing move forward. Just have a couple more questions for you, sir. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this one, if affordable housing is tough, how tough was redistricting? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you put together uh, a team. You hired a consultant <clears throat> um, that worked directly with you uh, to look at redistricting, uh, which was a tough process because everybody looks at different ends of the table yeah. and they see. That. Give us a little recap on the redistricting efforts. Well, I, th- I think the advantage was that 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 I had been an elected official and, and uh, had, had you know participated at the state level with redistricting. This was a different animal. This was this is a different situation. You, you we experienced exceptional growth. Um, out east, uh, and Absolutely. you had you had a pretty significant disparity in population, um, and and I was not sure how how it was going to go, um, but uh, it, the commission came together, and it helped to have a, a good consultant. Actually, the most experienced redistricting consultant in the state, uh, okay. we brought in from Tallahassee. Uh, and we had a number of, of work sessions and education sessions. Workshops. Uh, yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and were successful in getting every single commissioner engaged in the process, even the at-large commissioners, which technically were not affected by it. Correct. Uh, and, and we actually completed it well before the deadline. Uh, and, and, and I think the commission did great work. Uh, so we, we, we ended up with what you would refer to, I guess, as a rural district, um, which, you know, includes some of these new semi-urban areas, um, a coastal district 
<clears throat> which incorporates probably at least 90 to 95 percent right. of coastal Manatee County, uh, or at least the the saltwater coast. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I believe we effectively redrew the lines for preserving the urban core, urban core, um, and and which is District Two, and and District Four. Uh, sort of compressed District 5, mm -hmm. while ironically expanding the geography for District 1. <laughs> and, and so you had what were the two largest by population. Um, you actually reduced the population in District 1 through expanding the geography, right. uh, which is very interesting. Uh, and I think we're the only ones that did it. Uh, the, the school district kind of did their own thing. Which and this went back and forth for a period of time. But the, the end did. result was is that all of the commissioners, for the most part, walked away with the benefit of mm -hmm. knowing that they are represented, their district is represented. And, and I think that's, that, that is an attribute uh, to how far this commission's come in the past, you know, 10, 11 months uh, since I joined the team, so to speak. Final question for you, sir. And I know this is something that you're very involved with and, and is close to uh, your heart. Water taxes. Yes. This is uh, uh, an idea that's been floated around mm -hmm. for many, many years. Uh, it's an exciting thing. We have great access in and around this area. Mm -hmm. Why is water taxi such an important aspect as you kind of want to move forward? Well, we have a lot of water. We yes, have a lot of coastline. I, 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 you know, I have my share of boats uh, and have spent time on the water for a number of years. And, and I wish it was my idea. But, uh, you know, when, when it came up, then it became a question of, this is a great idea. Why haven't we done it? We're going to do it. Right. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I spent nearly 20 years in South Florida. Uh, and was fully aware of the water taxi system right. in, in Broward County. Um, and, and we've pulled it together. Uh, I believe the ITN is out on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, a somewhat lofty goal, I was told this morning, of a water taxi being in operation by Memorial Weekend. Yeah. I do believe we were going to have a water taxi of some sort Memorial Weekend. Uh, but I, I, I think as we're, we're looking at multimodal transportation, uh, it it would be, uh, I think, inappropriate to not consider water transportation. Uh, and, 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 and most days of the year, we've got pretty calm waters, at least on the river right. and, and in the intracoastal. So, so we have a unique opportunity to offer families uh, and really the workforce a, a, an incredible way to get around a yes. beautiful community and, and, and enjoy the dolphins and the manatees Absolutely. along the way. Uh, and so I, I'm excited about it. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to the inaugural uh, launch uh, of it. And, uh, and what I remind people who weren't quite so sure about it, we got a lot of construction going on on some major roads and major bridges ahead of That's us. That's true. And there's a, uh, lot of work, there's a lot of work. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'm excited that the, the, the survey data shows that you've got 67 percent of the people would 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 enjoy and benefit from it. And, and just thinking of those families oh, absolutely. that that visit and families that live here that 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 will take on a, a benefit of the opportunity. And it just adds a great new asset to, to what's available in Manatee County. Yeah. Dr. Hopes, unfortunately, we're out of time. I want to t thank you very much for taking all of this time to talk to us. Uh, it's very Im important. It's very informative. Uh, you. you have such a grasp of information uh, that the community would certainly kind of absorb, and it's important. You know, it's important for the your citizens, your constituents that are out there to understand the wide variety of things that are happening every day in yeah. their community. And there, there's so much going on. And, and one of the things that came out of my first performance evaluation from the commission was that they wanted me to, to communicate more with the community, with the public. Right. Uh, and and there, 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 there are so many great things that the commission is sure. doing for Manatee County and Manatee County government is implementing. Uh, and, and, and it's important. It's important to, 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 to benefit from the good work that you do 
to really inform uh, both both our residents and and our visitors about what's going on in, the, in our community uh, and, and and how we're the best uh, community in in the Southeast United States to uh, to to move to and to enjoy all that we have to offer. And if I may say, uh, Dr. Hopes, Manji County is very fortunate to have a man with your leadership and vision as we move forward. A lot of exciting things happen as we've talked about today, but I think leadership coming from you is so important and uh, you've done a, a wonderful job. You are really a public servant. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And thank we you. hope to have you back for other programs. Absolutely. Or you I look can forward post to it. other programs with some, perhaps, you know, Jan Brewer or somebody else w w within your staff. Look forward to it. All right. And thank you thank for joining you. us on this special edition of Up Close on METV.
TV. Okay, thank you. Welcome back. Lunch is over. It was fantastic, and I didn't have to cook it, and I didn't have to do the dishes, so that's a positive lunch where I come from. Uh, we're going to move on to item number 40 on the regular agenda, which is utilities, the adoption of the 10-year water supply facilities work plan. And here to present, we have Kevin Morris, who is the deputy director of utilities. Mr. Morris, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, uh, and board members. Um, I'm, again, for the record, I'm Kevin Morris with the Utilities Department. Uh, with me is our Water Division Manager, uh, Katie Gilmore. Uh, the 10-year the facilities work plan is a really important uh, planning element in uh, how the county moves forward in a very deliberative fashion to make sure that we have the services available for the customers that uh, are here today and the ones that are coming. Uh, for example, uh, this morning as you, as you, as you uh, walked in the building, you likely smelled the Tropicana citrusy smell, the, the plant. They are our largest current customer. They use about 2 million gallons of water a day, and that smell that you smell is, uh, is the orange peels that are being dehydrated, mixed with molasses, and turned into cattle feed. So, um, so we have, uh, uh, they're our largest customer. Uh, Tropicana uses about as much water in that, in that industry as does uh, the town of Longboat Key, who is one of our wholesale customers, as well as Palmetto, to give you uh, an example. So there are many different uh, realms of planning. Uh, the Water Management District uh, uh, is planning for 16 counties. Every five years, they have a regional water supply plan. Um, the, the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority uh, is planning on a four-county uh, region, and that's, uh, that's part of um, uh, Manatee County is a part of that uh, element. And then each county within the, the uh, authority also is planning as well. And so, uh, so I'm going to um, hand the podium over to Ms. Gilmore uh, and let her tell you some of the details that are in our 10-year plan. Uh, what we're asking you to do today is to, is to accept and approve that, and we will forward that on to the Water Management District, as is, as is done every uh, five years. Um, Ms. Gilmore has been with the county for 17 years. She's, she's in, been in a number of management and supervisor positions for us. She, she ran our lab at the water plant. She's been the superintendent of the water plant, and she's now uh, currently our uh, water division manager. She's got a master's degree in analytical chemistry. Uh, we're very fortunate to have her. So if you have any, any questions about the treatment plant, um, Katie can probably uh, uh, answer them for you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kevin. As you mentioned, Katie Gilmore, Water Division Manager with Utilities. Uh, and so this five-year water supply facilities work plan is required by state statute. Um, every five years, Swift Mud puts out their regional water uh, plan, and we are required within 18 months to have our own plan and have that adopted and approved. Um, and this does go in by reference into our comprehensive plan. So that's part of the motion is to allow us to, to change the comp plan to reference this 2022 version. Um, so Swift Mud's most recent document came out in November of 2020, which gives us until May of 22 to have our plan done. So we started about a year ago um, with Coral Engineers, our engineer of record. And the purpose of this plan is just to look out to at least a 10-year planning period and see what our projected water demands are and then indicate how we plan to meet those. And so we can meet those by a combination of permitted supply, facilities to treat that water, and then, of course, by reducing the use of potable water through our reclaimed water system and also through water conservation. So that's what's touched on in the plan. Um, it was originally on consent, and it was pulled, so I don't know how much you're interested in hearing or what you want. So I was going to give you just a couple of very brief bullet points and then be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, Thank you. I, right now I have Commissioners Whitmore and Baugh on the board. Commissioner Whitmore? Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to um, hear about, I, I felt it important to pull this because mm -hmm. uh, we hear a lot of comments as commissioners about our water supply. Mm -hmm. I was very interested to hear about Tropicana. For some reason, I did not think Tropicana was our largest user. Mm -hmm. So in this plan, I actually did read it, and there was something in it re about recycled. Uh, the, the, the communities that are having recycled water or reclaim water mm -hmm. have a um, better outcome as far as with our water, and it's preserving some of it. So just if after your bullet points, if you could go into that, I'd appreciate reclaim it. System. Thank yep. you. Okay. And... I, you know, I'm stunned that Tropicana is our biggest user because they're in the city of Bradenton. Mm. So that's why we provide the water for them, though. Okay. Huh. Good money maker, Commissioner Baugh, you're next. 
Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to ask, before you start into a, a major presentation, I don't think we need that by any means. The two items I'm, I'm looking at here, my question is, is this the only changes to this uh, plan, um, this policy 9.5.3.1, dated July or January 2022, and then the next one, policy number 9.5.3.5, um, where it says the county will consider mm -hmm. instead of seek. Is that the only differences? That's in the only the difference, yeah. The comp plan references, we are required to do this every year and have it adopted into the plan, so the date needs to be changed. The other thing is just something as reading it through, we decided we should just change that language to make it a, a little bit different on the semantics. Okay. Um, but that's the only change. The plan itself, of course, is different than the plan five years ago, as it's looking into a farther time period into the future. It's very similar, but there are some differences. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Whitmore is back on the board. Yeah. I, I just want to say the only, the only reason why I wanted it pulled, again, is because it's our 10-year plan. It's about our water, one of our biggest resources. We heard today you can't live three days without it. And no matter what the changes are, I still think the public needs to, it needs to be brought to their attention. Not everybody's going to look at our and read our agendas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so the, the very brief overview is that, um, yes, we are planning for growth and we do have enough water to meet our demands into the future. So the plan itself goes into that. We do a population um, or demand projection. We go 15 years in this plan. Um, so it looks from 2020 actual water usage up to a 2035 time period. And it shows in the plan how those numbers increase. Um, and then it shows how we expect to meet that. So our internal policies are that once our demands hit 90% of our available supply, we need to have new supply come online. So there's graphs in the document that show that plus 10% line and then when our new supplies and permitted quantities come online. Um, so the key things are in 2022, this year, we're working to get 3.1 million gallons per day of additional water um, put through our groundwater treatment. We have that water now as a flexible quantity. We're working to redo our permit to make that permanent water that we can use. So that's 3.1 million gallons per day that's available. We have the treatment facilities to treat that today. Um, the next thing is that in 2025, our contract with Sarasota County ends. So that frees up an additional 5 million gallons a day right now that we're contracted to give them. That goes away, so that's 5 million gallons per day back from Manatee County. Um, then the next thing is in 2031, you'll see that our Buffalo Creek reverse osmosis um, plant will be coming online. It's 3 million gallons per day and then expanded to 5 million gallons per day. Um, and part of this effort was also to do a new cost estimate on that project. That's been in project of record. You'll see this summer we're putting into the CIP, requesting it this year to start this, this five-year planning period to start uh, design in 2027. So that um, new cost estimate is in here as well. And then after that, we have identified a potential um, use of adding more credit to our well field out in Duet that we can treat at our current plant um, or another local source. And so that's in the 20, 34, 35 timeframe in this plan. So essentially, it just details how we plan to meet that. It talks about our reclaimed water system that right now we uh, use, I think, 75% of our wastewater flow goes back out as reclaimed water. So that can be used, obviously, for irrigation, um, some for toilet flushing, other kind of recycled water uses. Um, and so, of course, that expands your potable water by using your wastewater. And it gives you a place to dispose of that wastewater instead of having to have a surface water discharge, which we don't have in Manatee County. Um, we also have an extensive water conservation program, as you saw us talk about a little bit this morning. But, of course, all the water that we can save gives more water for the essential uses, um, for drinking and for, for hygiene. Um, so that's really kind of it in a nutshell. I'm happy to talk about anything else you want to hear about, but otherwise we just need you to adopt it. It'll go into the comprehensive plan, and then we'll start this effort again. Of course, just, five just out of curiosity, because only because you brought it up, mm -hmm. you said that we have additional well credits available at, at a duet. Yes. What percentage of our well credits are being utilized now? So right now we have on our water use permit, we can pull up to 19 million gallons per day from the well field. 3.1 of those are flexible quantities, though. We have to, we can use them there, but they didn't add to our total permit with the lake. So we're trying to make those 3.1 an additional quantity, if that makes any sense. And then we, we got those by doing a groundwater replacement process. So in 2016, we um, had Schroeder Manatee. We gave them reclaimed water. In exchange, they retired a water use permit they had for 4 million gallons per day. Um, the district does a modeling effort where you have to leave a benefit to the aquifer, but then you can apply the rest to yourself. So they were taking $4 million, We got $3 million, So 3 in, in layman's terms, we ha we're using 19 now. 
we could go up to 21 and a half. We can go up to 19 permanently, but we have, the, the wells themselves can produce more. So we want to go through that process and look for other credits that are being um, retired through agricultural use, becoming residential, and other things like that, where we can give reclaimed water maybe to current ag users and get more well credits and then apply those. So that's a process we're evaluating still. The 3.1 we hope to have this year, that's just a, a permitting issue. We have to prove the, use, the need for it. Sure. Um, but then we want to look to see if there's other credits out there. Okay. So there's, there's plenty of additional water we could pull from Duet. Yes. Those, those wells can produce more water. Our plant right now can treat it. It's just having the, the rights to be able to take it. How deep are those wells? 1,200 feet. 1,200. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have Satcher and Whitmore uh, on the board. Commissioner Satcher. Hi. Just quickly, so uh, Sarasota, we don't expect them to want to renew their contract with us. Are we dependent on that, or it won't matter one way or the other? Um, it'll, we, may, we may have those conversations with them. They're working right now for some of the water needs they have in the future. Um, they are contracting with Peace River to, to meet some of those needs. They're also considering, I think, expanding some of their treatment facilities. Um, so as of now, the plan is that contract will expire. If they want to have a conversation of a slight extension, we may have that conversation. But as of now, it's set to expire in 2025. And they were using how much? Um, they're currently allowed to use up to five. They're using about 4.2. But there are a lot of to five. That changed in 2020. It was six before that. that million per gallons day. per day. They're using 4.2 per day. Million gallons, yeah. Million. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Thank you so All right. much. Good information. Commissioner Whitmore, you're the last one on the board. And SRQ, Sarasota, um, there, this, this started with Pat Glass and all years ago, but that's why the, we've got Peace River today. Mm -hmm. And they've been buying from us generally uh, whittling down to where they are today but we also have put in money to peace river and we also have the uh, we're on that authority mm -hmm. so we have access also if we ever needed to to buy that water correct we do we have the ability to go in and become a customer we're currently a member but we're not a customer we don't buy the water okay. um, and so you'll see this planning effort requires to do 10 years we did a 15 year we also every year do a letter to peace river where we look at all the all the members do you look out uh, 20 years and you project your needs in the next 20 year period. Um, so we don't go out that far in this plan, but you guys should have seen it back in January, I believe, when we approved that letter to Peace River. And that did show about 2038, we may need water from them. And I know this is, um, this is a weird question, but somebody mentioned flushing the toilets here and the reclaimed water. Okay, in my head, so you flush the toilet and it goes somewhere, and then do we use it again and reclaim it again and treat it so that it could be used again? When it flushes, it'll go to our wastewater collection system and our treatment plant. Right. Then it can become reclaimed water right. and be used Again. wherever we use reclaimed water. Yep. Again, that's what I was thinking. So it's a vicious cycle. It's a water grass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not coming out of the faucet again, to be no, clear. No, it's, no, it's no, going no, no. Water grass. Okay. No, yes. no, no. I can see the emails already. Yeah, it's no, no, your no, toilet no. and goes to our wastewater collection system. Um, yes. Thank you. Th this was good information. You know, when, when we first come on board as commissioners, we're brought around and we're given tours, and a lot of information is thrown at us pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, we were told this, and it comes back as, as you're explaining it. But I'm, I'm actually I'm glad Commissioner Ridmore pulled this because it's good for the public to hear, both of you. And, uh, but, you know, it, it's good for us to hear it again as well so that, you know, it's fresh in our minds. Uh, well, I'll entertain motions. I move to approve the... You um, could just move the recommended motion. Recommended motion. Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore and a second by Commissioner Satcher to approve the recommended motion. We'll open this to public comment. Is there anyone in the public who would like to come forward to speak on our 10-year water supply? Seeing no one, we'll go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on this issue? I'm awaiting response from METV. We have no callers. We have no callers. All right. So we'll close public comment, and we'll call the question. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously. Thank you. We'll move on to the administrators. Yeah. Um, our administrator got called away on uh, kind of an emergency thing. So we have Deputy Administrator and CFO Jan Brewer is here. Uh, if she can introduce item number 42 under the administrator's report, Madam Brewer. Yes, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, item 42 before you is the presentation of the county administrator's annual report. Mr. Reinschuttel, are you doing a presentation on that one? Uh, 
<laughs> He's legislative. Um, the, I'm doing Scots. Okay. Okay. Is there a video, Casey, that goes through with this? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. Uh, Bob Ryan Shuttle, Deputy County Administrator. Um, there is a preliminary video on this, and um, I can make any remarks you like on the annual report, but it's pretty straightforward. Turn up the METV, box. can you please turn on the sound for the, the side computer? He looks a little funny right now. <laughs> come running around. Hello, I'm Manatee County Administrator Dr. Scott Hopes. 2021 was a year full of challenges for Manatee County. Together, we confronted an ongoing pandemic. We led the response to Red Tide, coordinated a strategic solution at Piney Point, and weathered a busy storm season. Despite all that came our way, our dedication to doing work that matters enabled us to achieve incredible progress. Progress that had us breaking ground on new parks, creating affordable housing to meet an unprecedented demand, and enriching your quality of life. I encourage you to take a look at our annual report and find out how Manatee County staff continued to achieve ambitious goals that helped us emerge a stronger, more resilient county that remains leadership driven, community focused and growth minded. It was a great job though, Casey. You do really good work. Casey does good work. So the link is there. It's posted on the website. Yes. And we encourage everyone, um, all the commissioners and including the taxpayers, to go forth and read it. This is required per statute or per our rules, correct, Mr. Attorney? That's why it's here. Do we have to, don't we have to vote to accept it? Yeah, there is a recommended motion to accept and approve the administrator's annual report. I'll move to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Whitmore and a second by Commissioner Baugh to approve the recommended motion. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on this agenda item? Seeing no one, we'll go to the phone. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on item number 42? I'm waiting for METV uh, to We respond. have no calls. Okay. So with no callers, we will close public comment. We'll call the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it passes unanimously. By, these are votes of six to zero, Madam Clerk. Uh, now we'll move on to item number 43, which is uh, approval of the federal legislative agenda for 2022. And I believe we have Mr. Ryan Shuttle here to present. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Um, this has been before you once before, so I, um, I think you're very familiar with this, but um, our priorities as determined collectively has, has uh, been determined as uh, Fort Hamer Bridge and roadway widening. Um, this is the um, Fort Hamer Road from the Manatee River to US 301 and the construction of a second Fort Hamer road bridge parallel to the existing bridge, adding another two travel lanes across the river. Um, veteran services and housing. Um, commission has expressed an interest in um, remodeling the old building. building adjacent to the judicial center. Uh, how is that? Um, which abuts, yeah, it abuts the judicial complex to provide shelter for homeless veterans who don't have anywhere else to go. The center is expected to provide temporary housing, mental health services, job training, and other resources. Um, Palmetto Trails, connectivity and mobility project. It's another important priority um, that will create 
seven multimodal connections between local schools, parks, and community activity centers. Um, Pre-construction activities will be finished before June um, 20th in 2025 and the entire program for improvements hopefully will be completed prior to September of 2030 uh, affordable housing this is something that um, has been certainly one of your priorities um, and continues to be um, as we pursue federal monies for this and uh, um, you know, uh, we all know that we've been experiencing a problem with the availability of affordable housing in Manatee County and um, um, the Florida Congressional Delegation uh, is urged in this document to act in unity to support solu solutions to this crisis. It also cites a particular bill, H.R. 2573, that was introduced by Representative Buchanan, U.S. Representative. Um, we're hoping to make some progress on this on this legislation. Um, a final piece of legislation uh, involves protecting our manatees. Um, last year, we had um, nearly a thousand manatees die um, uh, off of Florida coasts and estuaries um, in 2021, and the number in the coming year is on pace to do the same. So. We are urging the support of the Manatee Protection Act, H.R. 4946, and um, this would um, move the, the status of the manatee from threatened to endangered, thus giving it more protection and um, thus pr protecting our, the namesake of our county. So um, that's, that's, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a quick question regarding the upper portion, upper floors of the judicial center. Yes. Um, what is this? Is there a specific hard money ask, and, and what is that number? Um, or is there a percentage match that we're looking for? Because uh, I know we've we've obviously uh, earmarked fifteen million. Are we looking for a, a percentage match? Are we looking for a dollar amount from them? Uh, is there a, a hard ask there? I'm I'm, a, I'm in sales. I like a hard. I like to ask. Yeah, no, we specific. are we are asking in the fifteen to twenty million dollar range for the build out, and um, that would be our federal ask. So our federal money. ask is to match the fifteen, essentially. Yes, correct. Okay, that's that's yes. that's fair. I think that's a that's a reasonable ask. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then on on the subject of affordable housing, we're supporting specific legislation. We're not making a financial ask. Is that correct? We're supporting legislation. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. It's not a financial ask. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Satcher is on the board. Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, comment on looking at this uh, document, and this is our, our federal ask and our legislative priorities. Um, we've got the road widening of Fort Hammer and then the bridge as number one, right. and between county money uh, and federal money that we'll be asking for, you're looking at, uh, I think you're at almost $120 million. And um, so I just want to, you know, I took a different route to work this morning, and it was a disaster. <laughs> it was a bad idea. And part of that actually, in a way, was good because it was construction, you know, on that road. And so, you know, uh, some of these commitments are starting to, um, uh, to get moving in the county. And so it, it is kind of painful to have the construction. But I just want to remind everyone um, that this, we are pot committed and all in when it comes to catching up our infrastructure. Um, we can't determine where someone decides to live. You know, uh, if they're in the entire United States of America. We can't say, sorry, Mantee County, too beautiful, and uh, you're not allowed. But we can do our part to, to uh, get the roads and, and the other infrastructure needs addressed. And so I want to thank uh, the commission and uh, for those decisions. And then uh, just the little bit of reassurance, and I do understand it takes a uh, time to get these things done, but some reassurance to the public that, um, you know, at, at least f for me, I've been here a year and a half, and um, and getting stuff on the move to get these things addressed is, is really encouraging for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Whitmore. And just to go along with that, previous boards had to pay 30 million this was going to be a federal project we were trying to get state and federal and 
commissioners just before me decided that we were going to pay for it on our own because it would take too long for the feds to get involved. And then Waterleaf came along and sued us and the Coast Guard came and we ended up taking just the same amount of time, eight years. So um, yeah, so we put 30 million in it and it needed always to be four lanes, but uh, we had to either wait another 100 years or do whatever. Widening, I know everybody is shocked about that, but remember we're gonna have to buy right away now to widen, so. That's all. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that that project is first on the list because we, you know, we've 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 tagged ourselves the road commission. Commissioner Satcher is right. We have, we've really tackled infrastructure in a big way. We're we have a lot of skin in the game when it comes to local infrastructure. This road is equally as important as 44th Avenue. It's just as important as Moccasin Wallow. Absolutely. And I mean, the CFO is here with us. She'll probably nod her head and I say, I, I don't think with all that we are committed to, I don't think we can do this without federal money. Right. I, I don't think it's even an option. So it, it has to be, I'm glad it's number one on our list uh, as it should be. The order of the board is Baugh and Clegg. Commissioner Baugh. Well, well, no, let Mr. Clegg go first. Well, Mr. Clegg. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, I just want to make the quick point that we do have a lot of the right of way for that road widening That's because the county did advanced acquisition years ago for both the physical right of way and the pond sites. Yeah. The construction cost alone will easily be soaked up by the amount of money we're talking about mm -hmm. in this market. Yeah, and I don't think I need to remind everyone of inflation. Commissioner Baugh. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a couple of, of items. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Commissioner Satcher. You know, the thing of it is, you know, I've heard how a lot of this stuff was already in the works. Well, it was and it wasn't because there wasn't financing available. There wasn't money made available to move forward. This board has done that, and, and you need to get credit for that because it, it did not get done before. Um, so, you know, congratulations on that. You've done a great job. Um, as far as, as um, talking about Fort Hamer and Waterleaf, and, and Commissioner Whitmore, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I did meet with them, and um, they realized that, you know, there was an, as Commissioner Whitmore and I know, there was an issue with Waterleaf before that kind of slowed things down a little bit. This time, um, I did have a meeting with uh, Waterleaf, with um, Chad Busto and um, others, and Charlie Bishop, and uh, they want to work with us this time. They don't. They know it needs to be built. They understand the need, and they're on board. And uh, I can tell you that um, a big thank you to Chad and to Charlie Bishop on this because they're already looking at some additional, not much, uh, right away that might be needed there at the entrance of Waterleaf to put in a roundabout to try to keep traffic flowing. Uh, so it's not having to stop and so forth. So anyway, good things happening on that. So I'm really excited about trying to move this forward and continue it because uh, it looks like right now we might be in a better position than we were when we tried to build the original bridge. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, no one is on the board. I'll entertain motions. I move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Satcher and a second by Commissioner Bellamy to approve um, the proposed motion. Um, we'll open this to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to come forward to speak on this item? Seeing no one, METV, we'll go to the phones. Is there anyone on the phone who would like to speak on the federal legislative priorities? No callers. All right, we'll close public comment and we'll call the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Madam Clerk, it carries unanimously by a vote of six to one, and Commissioner Bellamy would like to make a statement on the vote. Yeah, I'm not against it. I just want to make a comment about the, um, the, the manatees and the numbers um, that you brought forward. Mm -hmm. But also on the news this morning, I was listening to it and, and complimenting the strides that SeaWorld is actually making. But I look at that, the numbers as far as we're at 420 right now, and we're in the first you know, quarter, it looked like we're going to surpass a thousand based on the way everything is going. Mm -hmm. So this is a serious issue. Um, this was a concern when I was a young kid and um, we brought the, the education came forward and uh, with the planetarium and, and, and the late snooty was, you know, the, the highlight of our community at, at, at that time. And um, the boaters or everybody that's out there, you know, this is serious when we were talking about the concerns 
of, of the manatees and saving the manatees. And I would just, you know, kind of e echo what the news is saying. You know, we want to be a little bit more aware, you know, of our water friends as far as where they are right now. So I just wanted to piggyback on that and make sure we look at that with a serious um, focused lens. Thank you, sir. Um, well said. I want to clear the record to the clerk. Uh, I may have been reading something while I was speaking, and I said the vote was six to one. The vote was six to zero, just just to be clear. Um, okay, so we'll we will move on then. That is our final agenda item, I believe. Just let me know if I stand if I stand corrected. Uh, so we'll move it, Mr. Clay. Do you have any final thoughts? No, sir. Okay. Uh, the administrator had to step out, so he doesn't have any final thoughts. Uh, we'll open this up to future agenda items one more time, public comment. Does anyone who like to come forward to speak on any future agenda items? Seeing none, we'll go to the phone. Uh, METV, is anyone raising their hand to speak on future agenda items? No callers at this time. Okay, no callers at this time. We will move into commissioner comments then. Does anyone recall where we are? I think I started with you last time, commissioner, didn't I? Aren't you? Oh, no, you, I don't remember. I haven't started first yet, but I. We haven't done. You haven't started first yet. No, you've been going through this thing. Well, then you're first. That solves that. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay. okay. Commissioner comments. Just a few things. It is first. two o'clock. We're starting commissioner comments. <laughs> FYI. I know. I know where you're going there, <laughs> KVO. <laughs> okay. Thanks for letting me go first. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like. Uh, in the futures, in the mornings or whatever, so they can get back to their jobs, uh, Madam Deputy, that uh, we meet our new managers of departments or temporary managers, because I know, is it Matt Case and Jonathan are doing transit, but I forgot what Matt Case looks like. I mean, it would just be good if we could just meet them, and um, any anybody that's new that's coming. Uh, as you all know, probably Diane Ballmer is leaving us. She's given us two months' notice. Yeah, that was nice of her, but she's leaving us, and she was she had two more years in her drop. So, anyway, so she's leaving, and we owe her everything. I brought this up at the last meeting. I'm going to bring it up again. Narcan will be available at prescript at drugstores with no prescription after the season. So family members have others that have issues or they just feel like they need to have one in case, uh, you will be able to pick them up with no questions asked. I'll, I um, I saw Janine at the thing today and I had this under my comments. I have the letter that we received from um, the Foundation Florida Cultural Group regarding the uh, conveying over that the property behind us to, a, um, to an art facility and I asked Scott about, I told Scott I was going to bring this up, and I don't know, Madam Deputy, if you know the status of it, but when I talked to Janine, they don't want to do a lease. Their board does not want to do a long-term lease. Their board wants the land, and I said, well, I heard entirely opposite, so I didn't know if you wanted, Mr. Chair, wanted to hear from Janine, and then we need to talk about this because, like George said last time, this has been going on long enough. We need to do it, and the vote was four to three. Do you recall, since your, your item that you're bringing up, do you recall, I believe we voted to sell them the property at a specific yeah. price. Well. Then I don't, I don't think there's anything to discuss. The board has spoken. Thank you, because the <laughs> administrator told me that that wasn't going to happen. Well, perhaps you should um, go back and watch the meeting. I know. <laughs> you know, perhaps there should you, be a KBO. conversation with the county administrator. I have yeah. met, uh, I did have a, a discussion with the I county the administrator. Whole board. Why, don't, why don't we just have um, Jan have him sit down with us individually in the next yes. few days yeah. to brief us on that and, and make sure we're on the same Janine page. could Janine confirm that the board doesn't want a long-term lease? They I, I want think a buy, that's they a good them. idea. Miss um, Amick, if you'd like to come forward, state your first and last name and your county of residence. Go because County. until just at lunch with the judge, uh, the justice, did I even know that it was different. This is not our GTE building, is that yes. what it is? Yes. Okay. There are the, documents in my office right now to sell it. To convey Not it. to sell it, to convey it. No, convey to sell. It. Yeah, to sell. To purchase, purchase for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, I'm going to give Miss Amick the floor. Yeah, she let her. Janine Amick, residents of Manatee County, okay, uh, CEO Florida Cultural Group. Yes, um, fully still intended. Our organization board of directors would like to purchase, as the commission voted for in November, to purchase the GTE building for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. 
and we are satisfied with all the documents as we had received to date and are just awaiting a closing date and any final words from Clegg's office. Correct. Okay, that wonderful. So what is the status? So what's the problem? Uh, when are we looking at a time frame? Because we, you sent us a letter saying what's taken so long. Well, I, we hope to be able to bring something to the board within, if not the next April meeting, before the recess. Oh, the, board, the board has okay. to approve the transaction. Yeah, I know. We got red lines back from them maybe 10 days ago, and we still have a chilled water agreement that's under oh, review. Right. But once those two documents are done, and they're close, I mean, I is that building hooked, hooked, hooked to the week. chiller? Yeah, all it downtown is. does. Very good. Okay. But it's, it's going to be crazy to not take along. that deal. No, no, no. We definitely want the chiller. Yeah. Our, our, uh, just so you know, our initial building that we're in now, we were hoping to hook up to chiller, and because of the delay, we ended up having to purchase two chillers. No. We've already replaced one chiller. So we hope in the future that this commission will consider going down 7th Street and know that you will have somebody immediately hooking up to it for the future of the Community Performing Arts Center campus. Uh, so we are fully intending to sign that chiller agreement and we're looking forward to it. We don't want the maintenance on one and we don't want to have sure. to buy another one. What's the sure. Um, okay, so I mean, this, uh, from what I understand, just to sort of bring us full circle here, um, no. the board voted to sell this property to the players. The county attorney has, is working out the contract with them now. Looking and, at the final documents. And he intends to have this to us before recess to vote on executing the it's, agreement. It's, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. It's normally the staff that puts those on the agenda, but they are waiting for us to sign off on everything. And we've got a bit of a stack that came in over the last two weeks. Okay. We're going through it, but we expect, just like any other transaction, it'll, it'll move forward in the near future. Okay, so it sounds like all is good. Commissioner Ball, you're on the board. Um, Commissioner Ball? Yes, I just wanted to say, Janine, it's good to see you. Sorry I, I didn't see you at lunchtime. Uh, Titanic, can't wait. Um, and yeah, it's my understanding that, you know, it, it was moving as a sale. So I, I'm not sure where all this came from, but maybe I think I we're okay. Something. Thank you. I appreciate the, uh, my apologies, Commissioner. No, no, as long as the chair uh, uh, and he has given um, direction with what I thought we had, that nothing's any different. Okay. I don't that's get direction, why I, but I, that's, why I brought but it up. that's my understanding. It seems to be everyone's understanding. Commissioner Bellamy would like to speak. Yeah, I, I got to ask this question now. You don't think so? I don't Where is this question. coming from? What's the problem? I, is it something that's out there that we're not aware of? From what I understand, there's a contract. He's working on it. It will be brought to us before recess. But the administrator had told me in my briefing that they were looking at the board may be okay with leasing it for like 99 years. That's all I know. I, sounds like we have pretty good that's consensus That's not what we here. directed. I didn't get yeah. that in my briefing. I didn't either. All right. So, sounds okay. like we have pretty good consensus. George Cruz is not here. He was the strongest advocate yeah. for right, this. Right, I so, supported it. So. Yeah, right. so I, I think we have okay. a good consensus here. Okay, so we're here. good. Commissioner Satcher, before you move on. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. Commissioner Whitmore, back to your Real comments. quick, uh, conference. Thank yeah, thank you, Janine. I'm glad I saw you. A resiliency conference that I went to, um, I, I just wanted to bring up a few facts that uh, I pulled from it that I think the board needs to hear about. And that's why we need to look at what we do in the future, in the next 30 years. Uh, Pinellas, and uh, we pulled back. We don't have a resiliency team now. Jan and I and Charlie had talked about it. it it completely went away, unfortunately. So we are, this board hopefully still wants it to continue that we'll move forward on it. Uh, I would invite everybody to look at Pinellas and Hillsborough. Commissioner Bob will probably tell you that since she's on the board. They have some good things started. Why do we need to reinvent the wheel if we can take from somebody else? Um, CO2 is the highest that it's been in, in the globe in 2 million years. Uh, there's fewer sea life in the um, then in the past thousand years, the uh, fastest glacier retraction in 2000 years. Uh, it is a scientific fact that 90% of the global heat is absorbed by the oceans. And that's probably why we're seeing our oceans warm up and the hurricane stronger is what I'm assuming. That's just my opinion. Um, we expect 10 to 12 inches sea level rise in the next 30 years. And that's why when we're looking at landfills and libraries, what I said earlier today, we need to make sure they're not along their coastlines. The plan is the infrastructure for every $2.27 that um, will be returned for every dollar we spend on trying to strengthen our shorelines for what will be happening um, in the, the, the years to come. 
My next uh, issue is the licensing of daycares. Um, I met with the Early Learning um, Child Coalition CEO this week, and uh, I know we're gonna. We're all working on it. I think George Cruz is working on it. I recommended if they wanted commissioners, they were thinking about having commissioners involved. I, I suggest George or um, Mr. Um, Bellamy here because of the, dealing with kids. But um, it it's going to be a licensing that we're going to have to license the public, and in the past that hasn't happened. But I did hear that we had money, and I don't know where that came from. That came from Mr. Hopes to him. So I'd like to know where we are going to get monies to help fund this or give some kind of monies. And I'm not sure where it is, but I think if you let the board know individually, that would be great. And I've never seen you shake your head like that. I, I also, one last thing. I think that any commissioner that wants to put anything on the agenda, under commissioner's agenda, should not have to be approved or um, denied it by the administrator. I think well, it's, that it's we not should approved. be able to. It's not approved or denied. Uh, any commissioner can put anything on the agenda. I agree, but I just have leeway over you know when I call it. Oh, not but, you. I mean, I'm talking about any commissioner should be able to put a commissioner agenda item without it having to be approved by the administrator. You can. Uh, the, com the administrator puts the agenda together, and I approve it on Friday, and then everyone else's briefings start Sometimes on it isn't put on because the administrator hasn't put it on yet. You can email you know. me. I will. Or I'll Jorge. copy you and ask you not to respond. And I think it's happened to other board members as well. Whether I like whatever is going to be on, whether I love it or hate it, I still think we are elected by the people, and we should be able to put whatever we want on our agenda. We got elected. I wanted to tell the chair, doing a good job controlling the meetings, and I hope this lady that does the uh, Robert's Rules uh, paid attention. Yeah, that's it. Um, Madam CFO, do you want to respond to anything? Um, no, at this time I'll get with Dr. Hopes and come back <laughs> with, a, okay. a great idea. <laughs> with the next, with a memo. So uh, we would go to, to District 7 unless Commissioner Cruz is on the phone. Um, if he is, he'll let us know, and we'll come back to him. How's that? So we will go then to District 1, Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this past Saturday, um, I was at my house, which, of course, is always a peaceful place um, <laughs> with my uh, six, six children, um, 13 and below. Um, but uh, then started seeing that there was a, a fire uh, close to the port, um, and ended up being there at the scrap yard there. There's some video circulating, looks very exciting. Um, but I just bring it up for two reasons. One is to just uh, thank all the firefighters and Manatee County workers. The Manatee County workers were the ones bringing them uh, the fuel to keep their trucks running um, because they were just, you know, hour after hour pumping the foam, I think, and water, um, but especially the foam on the fire, trying to keep it. Uh, cool and from, uh, you know, continuing to spread. So I wanted to thank uh, North River was there, uh, Joe, um, Assistant Chief, I might get the names right, wrong, uh, Deputy Chief, and then, of course, Mike um, has done a great job getting their equipment uh, updated to where they were able to respond effectively. Parish Fire Department, Bradenton City, East Manatee, Southern Manatee, Duet Fire, I saw their uh, trucks there, um, Tampa City, uh, and Hillsborough County, and I'm probably missing, uh, you know, East three Manatee. or four, but that was, I think I said East Manatee, but yeah, regardless, they were there and doing a great job. Um, so these guys were, were working hard, and, you know, the good news was that I, there wasn't, um, you know, danger to life, except for the people working the fire itself. Um, and, uh, of course, if it had been able to continue, then uh, there are people nearby there. And then the second reason I bring it up is just um, just to put it out there that apparently this is relatively normal at this spot. They have a lot of fires. Like that's, I've, I've heard, I kept hearing the number five. Uh, you know, but that was over a period of years. Maybe it's two in a period of months and then five total, something like that. Um, you know, I, I'm not for needless regulation, but I am for common sense. So we might need to figure out uh, some way forward to, um, you know, get some more uh, responsibility there from the uh, the businesses that are the business that is uh, running there. Um, so, but main thing is just a, a huge uh, thank you to all, all those people for keeping us safe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Okay, thank you, sir. District 2, uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I just want to ask the county attorney as far as any jurisdiction that we have in that as far as the continuous um, issues that we have out there at that strap yard. Um, it, it, was, it was a lot going on out there. It was, it was a lot of concern, and because there has been continuous um, recurrence, um, is that something that we code enforcement gets involved in, or we have no jurisdiction at all? So, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Bellamy, it depends on the issue. The fire code is policed by fire marshals, and so the, the fire marshal for that fire district would be the individual that has regulatory authority over that issue. Code issues, it might be different. Um, we'd have to take a look at that property with staff and see what options there are. It, it just depends on the issue and what's going on on the site. And, it can and be complicated. It can be a complicated question depending upon what's happening on the property. And, and, and the reason why I asked, that's, there's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of first responders. And um, I think this is the second time it's happened. And some people say it more than that. I haven't confirmed any of that. Um, but the concern is I think all of us would want to be in front of this and be proactive instead of reactive. Um, there is an environmental concern when you have that amount of smoke going up. And um, we looked up yesterday um, from my office, it was more smoke. Oh, yeah. Um, but I did look into that and, and called Jake. Jake, thanks. And he gave me an understanding that it's a con it was a controlled burn um, from Hillsborough County. And, oh. and, and we can't really do anything about that. That's, from what I, that's what I was told. Not the scrap fire, but it was another fire that was out there that was creating smoke. And if you took a good look at it, it was two types of smoke. You know, it was a real darker um, smoke. And then the other one was actually um, not, not as dark. But I, I'm just concerned, and I think the reason why I'm saying that so we can let them know that, hey, we don't want to have that level of fire burning um, in the community like that. So we want you all to get in front of it and, and, and find out. But I did hear on the news this morning it was an accident. I guess it was a, some kid's hoverboard battery, allegedly, what? that started the fire. That was, that was what was on the news this morning, and I'm, I'm, I'll be the last one to try to vet that. But the reality of it is we want to be bright and we don't want that. That was a high concern. Set traffic down. It's, there's a lot of issues came out of that fire. So yeah. just want to make sure that you all know that we're concerned about it. And that's all that I have, Mr. Chair. I'm not going to go back and forth with that stuff. I yeah, just, just to, to speak that, sometimes uh, I do tend to be optimistic. So maybe didn't put some – there was some serious, uh, as far as when you're talking about the environmental and, and human – uh, impacts. There was some, uh, you know, there's stuff burning all different colors, um, and that's because it's different chemicals. Uh, you got sulfur burning. Uh, there were uh, CSX rail cards nearby. I mentioned, hey, uh, you know, is, can we move? Well, somebody said something about that. They said they called CSX last hour. I didn't investigate, but I heard that they, in, those, they ended up some fire on the uh, rail cars. And the direction the wind was taking things was a little bit fortuitous. I mean, um, it wasn't going towards the population centers, and I'll just say it. I didn't say it earlier, but it wasn't going towards the jail. Um, and uh, But what if, yeah, it wasn't like that was because of our great ability that it wasn't. That was just because uh, the way the winds were, were blowing at that time. So, uh, So I agree that it's, you know, maybe we don't have any authority in the situation to make any uh, future uh, changes and if so then okay but if we do have then I am I I agree with you that it might it's probably worth looking into thank you That's and uh, one more thing I apologize the county administrator was there and he expressed some of the same things and uh, Jake Sowers also thank you yeah we have something next to the jail that's regularly catching on fire, that, that's a problem. Commissioner Ball. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to add to this conversation that um, East Manatee Fire District that was out there, they had to decontaminate their equipment from the fire. So environmentally, it was an issue. Right. Just to add to what was said. And, and that was, if it's okay. And, and that was my concern because, you know, they had the hazmat equipment on and things like that. So that's an issue. And, and for citizens to see that, they're understanding that it's an issue, but do we want those type of contaminants in the air where we have to activate um, the hazmat? No, we do not. So how can we make sure we get in front of that so this doesn't happen again? What, what, what precautionary steps are they taking? Maybe we can ask them that 
and maybe they do at least give us that response back so we don't have to almost, you know, uh, dispatch. What, how many from different counties? I mean, Huge. yes, it, it, it was big. So I, I just want to be a little bit proactive in front of that. Yeah. Commissioner Whitmore, you're on the board. Yeah, uh, it's for somebody that's had to do little things, nothing at all like this. But, you know, we have, we've had sulfur burn fires at the port, that yellow pile you've seen. And while they were there, they had to mitigate by uh, spraying water at all times on it. So I would just ask, because I'm sure this has gone through some professionals, I would just ask that somebody ask the, maybe um, public safety, ask the fire department, what's their mitigation plan for the future? It could be, you, you see the cement plant on University in 301, how it's been blowing uh, water for years on the cement so things don't blow. And I know this was gas, but maybe there's something that they can mitigate so this doesn't happen again, because it has happened twice that I know of in last three or four months. To me, that's a health hazard because of the toxins in the air. Sure. And I would ask somebody at the health department to give us what their mitigation plan is. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Commissioner Baugh. I totally agree with Commissioner Whitmore on this. And I, I would say that it's really not public safety, our public safety. Yeah, it's there's. really more of the health department uh, and, and getting with the fire districts to go over this. Because uh, the fire districts has the hazmat. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, equipment. So I think probably the Department of Health would be a better source. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Done. Is finished. Uh, District 3. <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and the only thing that I would add is that uh, thank you to Sarasota and Hillsboro because uh, I, I, I have a scanner app on my phone and I was listening to that for most of the day. Yeah, Jake, Jake Sauer too. told me about a scanner app and oh. so I downloaded it and uh, I listened to that for a while. Um, but we had called Sarasota and Hillsboro to cover, so they had, they had fire engines staged in Manatee County to respond to calls oh, mm -hmm. because so many of you know, our, our firemen were working the, the scene. Uh, the thing that I, I have today is we did a, during spring break, um, and then for like the, a couple weekends after, um, we had our parks department um, out on the island pick up trash from the beach access points uh, at the ends of the streets in Holmes Beach where there's beach access. And just to, so if, if you haven't been out there, sort of lay it out for you. There are like four, maybe six, depends how popular the, the access point is, big green garbage cans that Waste Pro comes on the normal uh, garbage days and they empty. The trouble is the garbage days are Monday and Thursday, right? Or Tuesday and Friday. Um, and so by the end of the day on Saturday, hmm. the cans are overflowing into the street and they don't improve on Sunday. Uh, and then, you know, the garbage truck either doesn't come until Monday or Tuesday, and, and so, so there it sits. So um, they, it took four and a half hours, one person, four and a half hours to, to hit those main spots and went through and emptied. And they kind of figured it out. There's certain access points where they overflow and certain ones that they don't. So uh, four and a half hours is what it was taking them, uh, including, you know, the, the traffic time <coughs> and the wait time and, and traffic. But he doesn't have the, the ability to keep paying this person to do this, and it's, it's really down to a weekend thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, totally. we did it on spring break, but, but after spring break, it's really mm -hmm. just a weekend thing. Um, and so I'm wondering, can we, Madam CFO, can we tap TDC funds for this? No. If we can't, then can we use concession funds from... Um, from the public beach, you know, and, and can we hit all of the points, you know, and not say all of them. Let's let's sort of sort it out. Talk to Chappie and 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 Mayor um, yeah. Murphy out oh. there as well, and find out. Yeah, what are the? We, we kind of have Holmes Beach down. It sounds like, but if we talk to the other mayors and find out, is there specific access points where we can help with that? And it, I know how how difficult Holmes Beach government is being, but that's not. I just to my fellow colleagues, that's that's not necessarily all of the citizens on the island. Um, you know, not every citizen out there agrees with what their government is doing. Um, so, you know, I'm just asking you to not hold that against them. Uh, hopefully, come election time, things will change. Um, <laughs> but for now, they're, they're stuck with what they have. Um, but these are my constituents, you know, and, and the trash is overflowing down there. And while I am frustrated with what's going on with their, with their government, there are still ways that, that we can try to lessen the impact that tourism has on their lives. Tourism is always going to impact their lives. They purchased homes on streets with beach access points. Yep. People are always going to go to the beach. Uh, I get it. Uh, but if there are ways that we can help, because there are, I think even though Holmes Beach doesn't seem to be willing to work with us, 
I think in good faith, we should just move forward with some of the things that we can do and just do them anyway, um, just in good faith. Um, so if, if it's possible, if you could bring us something for a future agenda uh, to use TDC money to do that, I'd I would be, be happy to. greatly appreciated. Uh, other than that, you know. I got a oh. comment on that. Okay. I know personally that I've tried three or four times and Mr. Clegg has told me it can't be used for that. So Ed Hunsaker, uh, we talked to the cities and said, we'll be glad to at one point get out of our reserves to help. And um, the city said, no, our guys will do it. And what you see is what you have. I know we can't use TDC funds. If we do use concession funds, and Vanessa was on the board then too, all three cities have to agree because that kind of was making up for the stress. Like Holmes Beach had a 50% increase in tourist taxes last time, and they're not getting near the service that everybody else is because they don't qualify for the funds. So maybe this is a way that we, and again, I brought this up in the past that we could help. Trash is a public safety and a health issue. Sure. Diapers, E. coli, everything. Um, I mean, it is a mess there. So, Commissioner, if I know that this isn't probably, I won't speak for the attorney, he'll probably tell you, but there are two options, concession funds, but we'd have to have all three cities agree because it's kind of in our informal agreement that we try to help the cities, and also our reserves um, to pay somebody on Saturdays and Sundays to do it because it's a public health issue. And for those of you that don't go out there, it's literally the whole beach access has bags, trash, bottles, diapers, everything laying on every beach right. access. It's terrible. And it's Brainton Beach as well as Anna Maria. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess my, I'm just asking staff to bring us the best option, right, financially, um, How we whatever that might be. Commissioners Bellamy and Baugh are on the board. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah. This, and I was kind of had zoned out, but you kind of brought me in and I pulled up my notes that I had when I went on that um, tour out there. Uh, yeah, everybody else ride on the floor wheeler. Why oh. I can't ride? I, I was Never not did. given a ride on the four wheeler, nor was either. Commissioner Look at everybody. Whitmore. <laughs> Go ahead, Reggie Day. Well, All right. Register so, starting this week. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the 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 communication within the conversation I had um, out there, the trash is an issue, um, but also if you know if, if there's a lot of trash. Obviously, people want to use the restroom, the bathroom, and that came up as far as port portalettes. We, yeah. we call them porta potties in the military, but port portalettes, as far as you know, maybe maybe one in one or two of them in strategic areas. So, if you're looking for how we can address the trash issue, right? Um, I'm wondering, can we add? And this is something that came out of the meeting that I was in, so I'm just putting it out there on the table, um, add two porta potties, porta lets, um, and, they, and they, they say they initially asked for them, but the reason why they want two is like a male and a female, not just, you know, one for male, but then the location would be, that's not, you know. It doesn't matter at that point. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. I hope it'll happen so we can give them access to use the restroom for all the people that we're sending out there. We talking about just home speech? Is yeah, it's it's all it's all together. All right, and then you know what? I'm about. I see where this is going. You're okay, man. No, you're good. <laughs> I, I was trying. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I didn't quite understand. Are we talking about just home speech or all or all the cities on the island? I I'm confused. I was talking about home speech. Okay, home speech is the biggest. Right, and they, they need they, some support. Probably one of the need richest. some help with the trash. Sure, right? and so. If we're going to personally, if we're going to go there, it's, they're all three in my district. So I would, I would be advocating for all right. for the entire island. I think that's only fair. Right. Uh, the order of the board is Baugh and Whitmore, Commissioner Baugh. Actually, if you're done, all I was going to, all I was going to say was, oh, he's if not you finished. Do it for Hold one, on. Oh, he, he is finished. <laughs> okay. That. I'm sorry. He is finished. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, all I was going to say is, if you, that's why I was asking, are we talking about just home speech or all the cities? Because you can't do for one and not the others. Right. I mean, that would not be appropriate. Uh, and I, I will tell you that I, I did, ironically, I got an article sent to me this morning, and it was talking about in the state of Florida what cities have the highest um, taxes that, that come in. I mean, the, the, the real estate values, and Holmes Beach was one of the highest. Mm -hmm. So my point is the real estate is some of the highest in the county and in the state. Uh, and so, you know what, I think I'm going to try to move my business to Holmes Beach. I'd be willing to pay a little bit 
for some of those. Uh, dollars. Yeah, get me a portal it. You know, yeah, anything exactly. you want. But you know, the businesses are really um, they're blessed, man. They're in. Uh, I just the interpret that that you're going to move close to Carol. How did you know? <laughs> I thought I might run against I'm her sorry. next I'm time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll beat you up. Go ahead. <laughs> you won't. You'll be lucky on this one. I should have done that. Yeah. Okay, done that. okay, Commissioner Whitmore, you, yeah. you're next on the I'm board. I'm not going to say anything else about <laughs> that. I'm slap happy yeah. here. Um, Just a little fun. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. We're ugly, two competitive but. women. So that's anyway, right. Um, that's right. In '99, no when I was mayor, I put a portalette on White Avenue, and you've probably used it for years for the surfers for that very reason. It's the top surfing destination See? on the whole West Coast. When there's no sir, uh, because of the I hate to say this, because of the sandbars and the short fast waves, yeah. the world surfers actually come to White Avenue. Um, so that has a portalet since '99. I brought that up at our intergovernmental mail and uh, uh, meeting and uh, the mayor, and they said we don't. And I actually got written up in the newspaper saying Whitmore wants portalets at the beach ends. So you know how that went over. But I still think that we could have a couple, few beaches on the island, not just in Holmes Beach, other islands where we do offer it. Nobody even knows it's there, and it's been there since 98. So. Yeah, I just worry we'll get pushback from residents. I, I wouldn't want a portalette on my street, so I just... Wouldn't this portalette is next door to Trisha Yearwood and um, oh, Garth you put it Brooks on your house. Street. You put it on your street, I see. Oh, no, yeah. I, I didn't live there then. I'm just teasing. Yeah, when I, she's walking I lived on 77th and Kahiro Oil then. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Bellamy. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. One, one of the notes that connect to the trash that I that I that I I don't get you afterwards. <laughs> that I connect to trash is that they're asking for trash cans and cleaning on Sundays after after dusk, so schools would not have to start with everything being, you know, so trash. So that that was some of the notes. Yeah, I think that was for the school specifically, though, wasn't right. it? Right. Okay. Right. Right. Which I believe we are doing. We're doing when, when, when the school is open, but the school is only open for a few specific holidays. Well, we're preparing for the summer now. No, they won't allow it. Uh, they close. They have gates now, as of last week. Yeah. You can't get in only when we have a major holiday, and they get permission. Or spring now. break, right? They put gates up. We did Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, spring break. I think that might be it. That's and, what we and, agreed to. And in order for us to work together, because I know everyone's listening, we have to be able to know what's going on and be on the same page. I mean, for the gates to come up, and I don't know who did it, whether it's the Holmes Beach or the school district or Manatee County, but, I mean, let, let us know this is all our problem, and I think if we're all on the same page of what's going to, what steps are going to take place, we'll be a little bit more calmer, and we're trying to keep Kevin calm, and you all are giving reasons... <laughs> I, go, I am <laughs> cool right. as a cucumber over here. <laughs> okay, I, I believe that's it. It was an actually absolutely, I don't know where, about your areas, but it was an absolutely beautiful weekend in District 3. Uh, the weather was gorgeous and uh, lots of people outside having fun. So hopefully it was where you are as well. District 4, Commissioner Servio. Thank you. Um, I feel like I always start out the same thanking our staff, but I have to again because code enforcement, I work so closely with them and those guys are always there when I've got a problem, they're responsive, they're quick and uh, they're really doing just an exceptional job. So thank you code enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Shuttle for your oversight. And to Jake and Joel, you guys are just doing a wonderful job. Um, I've, I had the pleasure of being invited to Wildwood Springs for their spring fling on Saturday. I was there with over 200 people, and that is a, a new community in my district. So it used to be in District 3, and now it's in District 4. So uh, as Kevin said, it was a glorious day and uh, really nice to be outside. So thank you to Wildwood Springs. I appreciated that. Um, I would like to ask Jan to please coordinate with Dr. Hopes, and I, I don't know if he's planning an agenda for April 19th for our Homeless and Affordable Housing Day, but I think we need one. And so uh, I have people asking me, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm happy to organize the whole presentation if, if I'm supposed to, but that's usually a staff function. So... Please let me know how I can help. Thank you. I'll take that back to Dr. Hope. Okay. 
Um, traffic calming. Thank you so much for everyone supporting the traffic calming in Fairlane Acres. Um, and did I hear we have a workshop coming up on traffic calming and roadways and speeding? And did we have, Mr. Chairman, did we so have? So I, I had asked, I was concerned about some areas in my district where the, the speed bumps and speed tables are very high and, and destructive if you have a low vehicle. Um, EMS doesn't like them at all, nor does fire. So I was asking about what are the standard heights for these things? And you know, we didn't really have a straight answer. Clark had several options and I, was, I said, well, I feel like we should adopt a standard height, you know, and, and come up with something that's effective, but not destructive. Uh, and they agreed, so Clark was, to Clark, to Clark Davis, our traffic engineer, he was ordering three or four speed size speed tables, um, and he was going to place them uh, at the EOC, uh, and then we're, I guess I think we're all going to go out there and drive over them and see what we, th see what we think. Yeah. So that sounds like that's the plan. I think that's a great idea. Um, and I, I think that Manatee County is at a point right now where we need to talk about, this board needs to talk about what we're going to do to manage traffic and speeding vehicles because I hear about it almost every day. I'm getting a call from a neighborhood where there is a problem with speeding vehicles and public safety. And so I think that, you know, we have a couple of options. We can turn to our sheriff and say, what do you need to have more traffic enforcement on the streets? Um, we can look at traffic calming in different ways. You know, in the past, we have not allowed traffic calming on our major thoroughfare roadways. But I look at the city of Sarasota who does that successfully. And it may be that they have a different design for their speed tables. So I don't know what the answers are, but I know what the problem is. We've got too many speeding vehicles in our neighborhoods, and we have got to find a way to manage that. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm game to listen to any ideas, and I would like for this board to discuss it. Um, it it's become a real problem and a big time sucker for me. Um, next, I want to talk about uh, the resiliency team that Commissioner Whitmore touched on. I, we used to have one. We need one again. And so I, I hope that that's in process. Is that... Am I correct? I, I can speak a little bit to that. What happened as um, the individuals that were in charge of that transitioned out, they moved to different states or they moved on to another job. Okay. So Charlie, I know, is re-looking at that right now, and we'll bring it back to Dr. Hope. Okay, that's great. And maybe we can consider um, bringing our stormwater engineers or an engineer into that team because... I, we're going to be looking at stormwater master plans throughout the county. And, you know, I think of somebody like Tom Gersenberger. He might be a really good addition to that team. So just food for thought. Um, and then finally, I, you know, today when we heard uh, the library item, I thought Commissioner Whitmore made a very good point that I had not thought about. And, and that is, if things are on the administrator's agenda, they should be things that the board has already voted on and is a policy going forward. And if we have something that a commissioner would like to see, it should be on a commissioner's agenda. And that library item was not something that we had spoken about before. So I would have rather seen that on a commissioner agenda than the administrator's agenda. It was probably just an oversight. I didn't really notice it until Commissioner Whitmore brought it up, but I thought it was a good point. That's all I have. I placed that on the agenda that way. I wanted it on consent. Um, so it was not Dr. Hopes who put it on that way. It was me. And we had discussed the library, relocating the library a couple times in meetings, and it was all bobbing heads. No one spoke out against it. So I thought a simple rezone would be fine on consent. That was my thinking behind that. So, and I understand that. So in hindsight, probably you would agree that it should have been on your agenda, um, because uh, bobbing heads aren't setting policy, right? I mean, a lot of us have made, some have made the mistake before to say, well, I didn't hear anybody say no, so it must have been a yes. So let's just be very clear on, you know, the policy that the board sets, then the administrator carries out. But if there's any question and we haven't had a vote, um, then I would like to see it on commissioner agendas. 
Just my opinion. Sure. Taken. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore, you're on the board. Yeah, on that on the comment regarding um, having staff with the stormwater drainage, I I have a new house being built across the street from me that still has dirt and not even the pool built and they've had open houses. <laughs> I mean it's ridiculous out there, but I did notice all of a sudden they had to dig up a trench all the way around their house. And then I saw these gravel trucks show up. So when we went to that resiliency event, I asked Sajay, who used to work for us, what's going on? Is there some new rule? Because you made this new, brand new house dig these trenches. And it's called Standards for Lot Drainage now. And I'm going to pass it to our building department and everybody. But what it is, is they make them go down pretty deep, and then they put concrete and, sand and, and um, crushed shell for permeable drainage so that they have more um, uh, drainage on the lots. And that's, I've never seen that done before. So I'm going to, is it okay with the board? I'll send it to all the administrators and if they could disseminate it to, and I think our, our, our building industry should look at it too for when we're building along coastal areas. Uh, I'm really interested when the hurricanes come this year to see how that house works because it's right across the street from me. But I've never seen that before. So, because um, uh, the island does not really have much drainage at all. So I'm going to look at I'm going to look at it. But it's something new. And Sajay had engineers draw it up, and he sent me the whole, all the standards. So I'll send it to Courtney and everybody. You know when you're going on Holmes Boulevard, the gravel that's between the road and it's called a French drain. Something like and that. It's very similar to that. Correct. Except this goes deeper to almost um, the water line, they said. Yeah, and it's, yeah. in the city of Anna Maria, it's the same thing along the All three Drive. cities did it. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Anyway, Commissioner Baugh, your, dis your district five, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and, and mention the resiliency committee that the county used to have. Uh, it did include stormwater. Um, I did not know that it was no longer around, but it is good to know that it is being put back together again. I think it kind of fell apart um, because of Rob Brown. Uh, he was kind of like the lead on all of it. I, I, I knew about it. I've known about it for two or three years, maybe longer. But um, at any rate, yes, we do need that back. I would mention that, uh, you know, again, resiliency means a lot of different things. Um, the state, our governor, DeSantis, put together a resiliency committee up in Tallahassee. Um, and we had a representative, for those of you that were there the second day of the summit, uh, you would have heard her speaking. And there's grants that are available. In fact, I'm, I'm going to get the information to Commissioner Bellamy. Um, yeah, on, on one of them. Um, so I, I think the state has a lot of things going on with that. Um, you know, I some of what comes up I agree with, some I don't, because resiliency means a lot of things. Are we having sea level, sea level rise? Yes, we are. Are we already working on that? Yes, we are. Manatee County is. Um, so anyway, there's a lot to be said there. So it's great to go to a summit, but you really need to know what the county, and, and maybe we could get an update, um, Jan, on that, because I know that the county uh, has, has really done a lot in that regard. Um, in the past already. I want to thank Carlos Bagaris for calling. I know he called me um, about the fire. I didn't know about it. I was out of the area. So he's always on top of it, and he's great. So I just wanted to say thank you to him. Um, and, and really, the only other thing, uh, this is for Commissioner Serbia. Naming of the park, When are you, do you plan on bringing that up anytime soon? Or I haven't heard anything about it, and I'm kind of excited about it. So. Yes, I, I know that um, you've been very involved with someone on that. And what we're doing is we have a list of the names received, and we're getting more input from the neighborhoods, and it will be before this board soon. Oh, so I it's not just the survey that you had done or, or the, that the county did about naming the park? It's more than that now? Is there more to it? The, we'll always invite all public comment that we can get, that's correct. Okay, when do you think it might be coming up? I don't, I don't And by the way, I wasn't really involved with anybody, but I mean, I heard about it and I voted and so did my husband. So right. I, don't, I can't take credit for something I really didn't do, but thank Mr. you. Mr. Baugh, we all know how you were involved politically on this issue. No, ma'am, I was not. That is not true, but okay. 
It's coming Ma'am, to this it board. True. It's coming to this board soon. I'm sorry, I don't have a date right now. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, Commissioner Baugh. Um, if Cruz is not on the line, Amy TV. No callers. Okay, no callers. Okay. <laughs> uh, if th is there anything else? Uh, any new business? All right. Seeing none, we are adjourned.